the parents of a child who committed a mass shooting have been criminally convicted and sentenced for their roles in the crime, a legal decision not everyone's comfortable with. If we're going to charge the parents criminally, why aren't they charging the school criminally? When the school is the one that wasn't in denial, the school is the one that said something's wrong here. I'm Dave Anthony. House Republicans have delayed sending impeachment articles to the Senate where Democrats could dismiss the case against the head of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, accused of not securing the border. 11 million illegal crossings under Joe Biden's watch, under Secretary Mayorkas' watch, 2 million known Godaways, 250,000 young adults have been poisoned and murdered with fentanyl. We speak with GOP Senator Roger Marshall. And I'm Joe Concha. I've got the final word on the Fox News rundown. The parents of Ethan Crumbly were sentenced in Oakland County, Michigan Tuesday. Jennifer and James had already been found guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter after Ethan murdered four classmates at Oxford High in November of 2021. 17-year-old Madison Baldwin was among the victims. Her mother, Nicole Bosolel, read her victim impact statement before sentencing. The passion that she had for everything and everyone was remarkable. I would catch myself watching her and thinking to myself, how lucky am I? I'm the one that gets to be her mom. Reina St. Juliana's little sister, Hannah, was 14 when she was killed. I can't convey what losing Hannah has done to me. I miss her with every breath I take. I believe the word sad is inappropriate to use because it does nothing to capture the hurt or the way my soul shattered. During trial, it came out that Ethan Crumbly had texted someone revealing that he'd asked his father for help to take him to a doctor. He said his dad gave him some pills and told him to suck it up. That was months before the shooting. The day of the shooting, school officials called his parents in after teachers had viewed a picture Ethan had drawn of guns, a person shot with the words, the thoughts won't stop, help me. His parents left him there at school that day. And while Jennifer said she was remorseful and lives in her own internal prison. We felt confident and trust in the professional's advice to let him stay in school that day. Quote, he did not, he does not pose a threat to himself or others. Ethan's father, James, said he was so sorry for what his son had done, but that the full truth had not come out. You know that what my son did, I was not aware of or that he was planning it, or that he obtained access to the firearms in my house. The judge in the case, Cheryl Matthews, said while parents aren't expected to be psychic, these convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train, about repeatedly ignoring things that would make a reasonable person feel the hair on the back of their neck stand up. She then sentenced them both to 10 to 15 years in prison. It's likely one or both will appeal. To be completely honest, I am surprised at the sentence. Jonas Bilbour is a criminal defense attorney and legal analyst. However, I was listening to the sentencing hearing as it was going on, and I said to myself, these two people are going to prison. And before the sentencing hearing began, I really thought there was a possibility that this judge was going to either give them sentences on the low end or even give them time served. And the reason I thought that was, you know, for, for everything that we all know, this is a case of first impression. This is a case where two people were charged and ultimately uh, convicted of a crime they did not commit, right? They were convicted of something that they failed to do. They failed to prevent a crime. And because it was so unusual, I thought, all right, this judge will see that for what it is. And even though these victims, oh my God, your heart has to go out to them. This was a horrific crime. But the person who shot the gun is behind bars that a 15 year old kid has gone to prison he'll be there for the rest of his life with no chance of parole that is justice but to then take these parents and give them the top end of a sentence on a case that is so unusual just seems really it's a little it's hard to swallow right now John, how impactful were those impact statements? You know, they certainly seemed emotional. And virtually everyone noted that when Jennifer Crumbly took the stand in her own defense a couple months ago, she'd said, 
I wouldn't have done anything differently. And all these family members remarked uh, on that. They, uh, they were appalled at that, that sentence. How much do the victim's words matter to the judge? The victim impact statements, as they often are, are just completely heart-wrenching. And, uh, and no matter what, whether you agree or disagree with the verdict, your heart has to go out to all of these families. The, the families of the children who died, the families of everyone who was injured. And every victim has a right by law, probably in every state, to make such a statement. That's why that's why we see them. And, and I think it's good for, for families, for victims to, to do that. Where I think part of the problem lies is that a little inside baseball, I am confident that when Jennifer Crumbly was having conversations with her attorney, which we're never going to be privy to, in order to present her defense, I mean, remember, she took the stand, her husband didn't. There are certain, uh, I don't want to say coach, preparation. And so either her attorney advised her to say, I wouldn't do anything different because if she admitted otherwise, now she's admitting guilt. And her attorney could, or her attorney could have kept her off the stand altogether. And then we would not be hearing that portion of her testimony coming from the victim impact statement. So that's a failure, in my opinion, of uh, lawyering and representation more than anything else. You know, James said he was sorry for what his son did. And Jennifer and James both said they wish they'd known more, that they, they couldn't have really known that this would happen. And they asked for, I think it was time served and probation. But mm -hmm. the judge said before sentencing, as you heard, that, you know, this this crossed the line, right? That these parents repeatedly ignored things that would make a reasonable person feel the hair on the back of her neck stand up. Was the Was the judge essentially saying, guys, you're in denial. Like, y you did play a bigger role here than, than you're grappling with. That's interesting, because you just used a word that's come out of my mouth in analyzing this case. And the reason it comes out of my mouth is, can you be a little bit more forgiving of a parent who is in denial uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff, as opposed to what I think this judge was saying is, you weren't so much in denial, you completely ignored your child and, and all his pleas or cries for help or all the warning signs, I would say, that came out during the trial. I think a lot of parents and a lot of people, it doesn't even have to be a parent, you can be, we're not, if you're not a professional psychiatrist, you might be in denial when you have a teenager who's exhibiting some signs of uh, the trials and tribulations of growing up. That could be considered denial. But did they turn a blind eye and specifically just ignore? I think that's where the judge was going with this. And that may be the, the fine point that she was trying to make. I mean, the, the obvious thing here, John, right, is the novelty of this case. Does, does, this, does this remain a unique case or has something, has something shifted here that people should be concerned about, that the legal system is... is going down a, a, a different road here now with some of these mass shooting cases? So the answer to that is is both. It mm. is still a unique case. It will always be a unique case. What will it change going forward for, you know, the country, so to speak? And I think that it still is a big leap for me, and maybe because it's hard to take my criminal defense hat off. It's a big leap for me to charge someone killing another human being that's what involuntary manslaughter is right it's killing of another human being it's just that you you didn't intend for it to happen i have a hard time with charging anybody with that when they didn't actively take a life where does that stop are we just gonna compartmentalize it and say if you are a parent and your kid is doing something strange and you don't do anything about it you're going to be on the hook for whatever that kid does. To, to that point, is it because it's a minor? It's your child. It's not just you knowing. It's not you living with a friend and your friend did something. That's that's not your responsibility. Is this case, does this case set a new precedent for saying you are responsible for your child? This case will probably do that. And to that end, right, because it's a minor, because you are legally responsible for your children until they reach the age of 18, right? 
and Ethan was 15. Well, okay, let's look at the other side of that slippery slope. And the facts in this case were that the school that has control over your kids for six hours a day contacted the parents and said, we think something's up. Called the parents. The parents went to the school. They had a conversation with the school officials. School officials said, man, you should probably take them home. Parents said, we're not going to do that. And the school did not say, well, he can't stay here. He doesn't have to go home, but he can stay here. Right. So, but they're not being charged criminally. And I don't think, I, I do not think for a second that the school should be charged criminally. I'm just making the slippery slope argument that if we're going to charge the parents criminally, why aren't they charging the school criminally? When the school is the one that wasn't in denial, the school is the one that said something's wrong here. Look, I'm just talking because we have never seen this before. But I guess in part of your question might be, are we going to see it again? I mean, let's hope that we never have any other mass shootings, but you know, the world is gonna keep going and we might, we might see this scenario again. Andy McCarthy said on the on the channel after the sentencing, you know, similar to you, he's skeptical in a way that it, it sounds like you are as well. He he made the point that this should have been, this is what the civil process is for, that these parents, if you're going to go after them, go after them civilly. Is Are you, does that, as a defense attorney yourself, does that sound right? A hundred percent agree. And, and they will, right? The parents will be sued civilly, except there's nothing to get because they're going right. to prison. They're not, you know, maybe they have a house or something, but it's not going to cover the damages. The school will 100% be sued civilly and they will be on the hook. I promise you, the school's not going to escape civil liability in this. And we have, we do, we blur the lines, or at least we certainly did in this case, between civil and, and civil and criminal responsibility and the prosecution tested it and the prosecution won. John, before I let you go, one more thing. You know, mm -hmm. I think at least Jennifer's attorney has said they're going to appeal. Um, perhaps both will. What's their best argument on appeal? Is it this? Isn't, is it? Is it sort of what you've been saying that th this is a civil matter? This isn't. You know, this isn't a criminal. This th these charges shouldn't have been filed criminally against us. Yes, I think that you can't, I think their best argument is going to be this is a case of first impression and you cannot assign criminal liability once removed, meaning, you know, yes, our, our, our son is the one who committed the heinous offenses. He's been punished. You can't continue to go down the line and punish people who did not commit that crime with a crime. The state of Michigan charged these parents with killing four people. Okay, killing, they charge them with killing four people, involuntary manslaughter. But I don't believe they charge them with what they actually did. And what they actually did was they recklessly endangered their own son. If you have a child under the age of 18, or if, and actually this could happen if you live in a house with anybody over 18, and they are exhibiting signs of any sort of psychosis or mental instability, and you allow them access to a gun without him shooting anybody, that is reckless endangerment. Nobody has to mm. die, and they could have been charged with reckless endangerment. But they skipped right over that and charged them with killing four human beings. So I, I do think they have a good shot on appeal, and I'll tell you what, if they lose the appeal on that ground, then we're, I think we're really in for it. It's going to be sort of the new thing that, that other states will also charge people and try them for, and that's just doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. Mm. Donna Spilbor, criminal defense attorney and legal analyst, thank you so much for your thoughts and for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jessica. Always a pleasure. Wake up with Kiki and Company. Mornings, 6 till 10. Talk Radio 1210. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. 
For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navage Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navage helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navage gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navage is available online at navage.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Fellow Americans, former CIA officer Jason Hansen here. Market instability and soaring debt have put your retirement at risk. For protection, I recommend diversifying into physical gold from Advantage Gold, a five-star rated gold company I've used for years. Their customer service is unmatched. Call 800-741-GOLD now and say Jason Hansen sent you and get a free 2024 gold investing kit. Again, call 800-741-GOLD. I'm Bill, and I'm living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that causes scarring of the lungs and makes it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose, so if you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. My wife, Bev, and I have walked every step of this journey together. I couldn't have traveled this road alone, and neither should you. Get help. Find hope. Go to lungsandyou.com. Get two hot dogs for the price of one on Hatfield Philly Franks BOGO Night on Tuesday, April 16th at 640 when the Phils host the Rockies. Secure your seats now at phillies.com. Join us for April baseball that's sure to rock when the Rockies visit CBP on Monday, April 15th and Tuesday, April 16th, both at 640 and Wednesday, April 17th at 605. Secure your seats at phillies.com. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things for our planet. This spring, Fairmount Park Conservancy invites you to connect with your Philadelphia neighborhood parks. Join your local park friends group during Love Your Park Week in May. Or join us for weekly volunteer events all year long throughout the city. Fairmount Park Conservancy works with the city of Philadelphia and its communities to bring parks to life. For information and to sign up, visit myphillypark.com. Dot org. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life. Life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-700-6898. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds too. Call 800-700-6898. 800-700-6898 or Big BigLou.com. Using meth taught me everything about freedom, only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom. If you think meth is taking control of you, ask for help. You have the power to be truly free. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. If you or someone you know is struggling with meth, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential treatment referral. Learn more at samhsa.gov slash meth. Keep free speech alive. Follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Free speech Download it now. Yeah. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT.
Hi, this is Dom Giordano. We told you about it. It's here, our first ever Politics in Pints. It kicks off April 11th, the Zlock Performing Arts Center on the campus of Bucks County Community College with who else? Dr. Rand Paul, the book, The Great COVID Cover-Up. This is speaker series with a bar. That's right, beer, wine, cocktails. Do not be shut out. What a night this will be. Tickets, 1210WPHT.com. Go to 1210WPHT.com. For over a decade, NJ Diet has helped thousands of people lose a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days. That's nearly twice as fast as weight loss injections and without any of those nasty side effects. NJ Diet uses your hair and saliva along with scans to personalize natural solutions and supplements to get you to shed that fat quickly. Then, NJ Diet uses your DNA info to help you keep the weight off. Call 855-5-NJ-DIET or go to njdiet.com. Get slimmer before the summer with NJ Diet. Recently, a new client called me and started by saying, Mr. Morgan, I really need your help, but I'm just a nobody. Those words stunned me, and I immediately called him back, and we're now helping him and his family after a terrible accident. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Everybody who comes to our firm at their time of need is a somebody. I grew up poor, but my grandmother was like a queen to us. At Morgan & Morgan, our goal is to level the playing field for you and your family at your time of need. The insurance company has unlimited money and resources. You need a firm who can fight them toe-to-toe. -to -toe. For right at 30 years, we have fought them in courtrooms throughout America. Our results speak for themselves. And always remember this, everybody is a somebody and nobody is a nobody. Visit ForThePeople.com to learn about our firm. Morgan & Morgan, For The People injured visit for the people.com for an office near you diabetes high blood pressure anxiety meds everyone's on them if you're a 50 year old male maybe a bit porky and you may even have type 2 diabetes a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month call term provider speak with big lou at 800-700-6898 big lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure term provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance to buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you all you need to do is call big lou at 800-700-6898 lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor call 800-700-6898 6898. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds too. Call 800 700 6898. 800 700 6898 or biglou.com. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face to face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H I M S dot com slash J O Y. Click this link now to review my bank transfer. I didn't make a bank transfer. Ugh, another phishing message. Are you frustrated by these two? So much of our lives are online today. To make sure my information is protected, I checked out CISA's Secure Our World resources. They've got four simple ways we can stay safe online. First, learn to recognize and report phishing. Next, create a strong, unique password for each online account and use a password manager if you can. Then turn on multi-factor authentication for extra security and you'll receive a code when logging in. And finally, turn on automatic software updates for convenience and safety. Click here to track my delivery. Another phishing message. But now I know how to protect myself from scammers and you can learn too. Go to CISA at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world for more quick, easy tips to be safer online. Hey, 
Clementon. Yeah! We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. WPHT. This is the Fox News Rundown. Now, the latest from Fox Business. I'm Maria Bartiromo, and this is the Fox Business Report. Investors are anticipating the Consumer Price Index for March being released today, the latest reading on inflation. Economists believe the CPI came in at a 3.4% annual pace last month, slightly higher than February. The Federal Reserve needs to confirm that inflation is moderating before it will consider cutting interest rates. Bitcoin prices have been holding at high levels. John Wu, president of Ava Labs, says Bitcoin's how event is coming when the rate of new tokens issued is cut in half. The incremental demand of two or 3,000 per day versus the supply of 900 from mining, and that's only going to be cut in half in about 10 days or so. The minutes from the Federal Reserve's March meeting are released today, and Delta Airlines reports earnings. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Jenny Coselda, invested in you. This is the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. It's only happened once before, 148 years ago. And we'll have to wait a little longer for the second impeachment case ever against a cabinet secretary. House Republicans have delayed sending articles to the Senate. Instead of today, they'll do it next week. Blaming Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas for record illegal immigration. We're witnessing a profound threat to our nation at the southern border. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and this entire administration has deliberately and willfully facilitated the criminal invasion of this country. GOP Senator Ted Cruz, House Republicans approved two impeachment articles against Mayorkas, breach of public trust, and willfully and systematically refusing to enforce laws. Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis told the Fox News Rundown podcast the other day. Here's somebody who sent a memo directing CBP agents to not deport individuals, even if they've been convicted of crime. They also blame Mayorkas and President Biden for crimes migrants committed after coming here illegally, like the one charged with murdering Georgia student Lakin Riley. But Democrats, like Senator Richard Blumenthal, say Mayorkas has not committed any high crimes or misdemeanors. We are spending time on a farce that we know the outcome, and it is simply a stunt. And since Republicans don't have anywhere near the two-thirds vote required to convict and remove Mayorkas at any Senate trial, the Senate's Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer, may move to dismiss the case. Though House Speaker Mike Johnson, in a statement delaying delivering the articles, said there is no reason for the Senate to abdicate its responsibility to put Mayorkas on trial. As far as I'm concerned, if Chuck Schumer does not allow there to be an impeachment trial, that is a nuclear option. We talked to Senator Roger Marshall, a Republican from Kansas, just before the delivery was delayed till next week. Much like Harry Reid back in 2013 dropped cloture from a 60 vote threshold to a simple majority when it came to dealing with judges. And so, remember how that came back and bit him in the behind yeah. several years later with Gorsuch. Yeah, yeah, with Supreme Court nominee that President Obama did not get, that then President Trump got, and then he, you know, obviously the former President Trump got three overall to the Supreme Court in his four years in office. But I want to, on the impeachment issue here, yes. what is the process? Now, the articles go to the Senate. Yes. there it, It's not something that has to be in a trial, right? You don't have to have a trial. So this would break precedent. And as far as I'm concerned, it would break Senate rules as well. And I don't think it honors the Constitution. And that's why I say this is a, the nuclear option that Chuck Schumer is about ready to drop, that this issue is so toxic to Joe Biden, it's so toxic to uh, for Schumer to keep the Senate majority, that he does not want this to be the story for the next week or three, that the evidence is so damning to the Democrat Party, they were willing to change 200 years of Senate precedent and not have a trial. 
Uh, so that's why we're, I'm calling it the nuclear option. But that's what, what's supposed to happen is we get the articles um, brought over by the House. We're supposed to be sworn in as jurors and then have the trial. But what Chuck Schumer is going to do is jump right to tabling the procedure, tabling the impeachment, and you'll never hear the, the light of day again again regarding the issue from from the Senate. Can you have points of order? Can you do things to extend that motion to table? There's a lot of procedural moves you can make typically right in the Senate. There should be, but here's the problem is that Chuck Schumer, as the leader, will be recognized first by the Senate pro tem, uh, Patty Murray. So Patty Murray will, will recognize him. He'll say, let's table it. We will yell on screen. We'll try to bring up points of order. And I don't want to give away all of our cards, but, but between uh, whenever we do have the option, we, we're trying to figure out if we can do those points of order beforehand, but we will try to do points of order. But regardless, at the end of the day, Americans are smarter than this. They understand that there should be an impeachment trial. 11 million illegal crossings under Joe Biden's watch, under Secretary Mayorkas's watch, 2 million known Godaways, 250,000 young adults have been poisoned and murdered with fentanyl. And we could go on and on on these statistics. The final vote, the final trial will be in November, 200 days, but there should be an impeachment trial if any two of those Democrats would stand up and say, we want a trial, then we would have it. So by them supporting Chuck Schumer's tabling, they really are saying, we don't care about this open border. We don't care about the loss of Lake and Riley. We don't care about all those families who've lost loved ones to fentanyl poison. So in these articles of impeachment, one of the articles claims that he's breached the public trust, Secretary Mayorkas, by lying to Congress that the border is not secure. Democrats have said, look, this is a policy dispute. There are no crimes and that House Republicans failed to produce any evidence of a crime or high crime or misdemeanor under the impeachment articles. And some have called it, like Senator Blumenthal, a farce and a waste of time. Well, again, let's go tell that to Lake and Riley's family. Let's go tell it to those people um, that are being human trafficked, uh, all those things. But here's the big crime to me is that the, the uh, Secure Fence Act of 2006 requires the secretary and, and, and the White House to maintain operational control of the border to not allow illegal aliens in, to not allow terrorists in. I think when they, when they don't enforce the law, that that's the crime. And, and even the bigger crime than that is the way Mayorkas has handled parole. Parole is supposed to be handled on an individual case-by-case -case situation, but they have literally paroled tens of thousands of people at a time, probably up to close to 2 million people have been paroled by Joe Biden. So those are the laws that I think that they've broken. And I do think it rises to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors. At the same time, as you're dealing with the impeachment articles coming over from the House, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas has said that he is not at all focused on these impeachment proceedings. And even if you had a trial, he wouldn't have to be there. Is that correct, Senator? It is correct that he would not have to be there. I do think uh, that anyone that's being impeached, it's, it's, it's like saying you're being sued and you don't pay attention to it. So I do think uh, he's paying attention. I think America is paying attention more importantly. And I, I had, think there's great questions. Americans right now want someone held accountable. This is the number one defining issue of this election for the president and for the Senate majority, for the House majority as well. This is the number one defining issue. This is what people are worried about, that every state is now a border state. So I expect fireworks to be going off on both sides of the House. Now, a couple of your Republican colleagues from the House, Ken Buck and also Mike Gallagher, they voted against impeachment. It still ultimately passed, but they voted against it. And the, and the concern that they have is that it sets a bad precedent. I mean, this is only the second time in history that a cabinet member has been impeached. The first one in 1876, he resigned before there was even the trial. So they fear that it sets a precedent that any administration's secretaries could just be impeached by the other party because they don't like their policies. Do you think that's true? Do you see what their logic is on that? I respect where they're coming from. But again, the people of Kansas drive 
what my priorities are. And the number one concern for the people of Kansas remains this open border, the safety and security of their families. They are demanding some type of accountability. I think that this impeachment process is the number one way to hold, hold Joe Biden accountable for this open border. He's had every chance to close it. He could shut it down the border yesterday if he desired to. Again, ultimately, the people will decide. We, the people, will decide in, in November. I respect where they're coming from, but I, I think that uh, Secretary Morcus should be impeached, and, th and that's why we have the trial. He's so going let's to have the trial. Senator, we'll he's going to say, the president's going to say, on the campaign trail already has, that it's Republicans who've blocked border security with a bill that was bipartisan when it was formed to try to slow the tide of illegal immigration. Why were you and most Republicans now against that measure? Well, look, Dave, I disagree with the premise. Um, the House passed H.R. 2, which actually would secure the border and actually make a difference. The final bill that was presented to us actually would have made the, the crisis even worse. It would have even opened up the gates even more so. It greased the skids. So the, the bill that was given to us as an option on the Senate side was a non-starter. But Chuck Schumer has been sitting on H.R. 2 that passed the House over a year ago and has never been debated in a Judiciary Committee. That's where it should have been debated. But again, this is a toxic issue to the Democrats. They want no part of it. Um, and again, Americans get this. This is why this is their number one concern is the open southern border, the safety and security of their families. There is another option other than a trial. There have been in the past in the Senate a way through federal judge impeachment cases to form a committee that would investigate the charges. Would you support that if that's another chance to extend this beyond tabling and dismissing the charges? Well, Dave, that would not be my first choice, nor Americans' first choice. I would say that that's not a nuclear option, at least. That it is, like you said, it has precedent. I think it should be something that we would consider. Uh, I would love to see a vote up or down on that. I would much prefer the, the public trial. Um, I think that's what's being called for right now. But I think you make a great point. I do think that that's an option and would love to debate that and look a little bit, what, what, what do the details of that look like? You know, the devil's always in the details, but it's, it's a great point. Now, the House is also investigating the impeachment of President Biden over overseas business dealings related to the Biden family and whether or not he was involved. He denies it. Republicans continue to investigate. If that were to lead to an impeachment, do you think that the same thing would happen? They would just try to dismiss the charges? Are we are we seeing how that would play out? And do you think we should go on that one? Do you think the Republicans in the House should do that? Well, I think that's exactly my point, Dave, on the consequences of the Democrats going nuclear. Um, you know, look, I would support the, the uh, welcome the impeachment articles on Joe Biden as well. Do I think that's a political reality? Probably not. Senator Roger Marshall, Republican from Kansas, on this day when the impeachment articles go to the Senate for Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, and you'll soon be a juror. Thanks very much, Senator. We appreciate it. You bet, Dave. Let's all pray for a nation and, and pray for wisdom over here. Thanks so much for having us. Dumb time. Dumb time. You're done on weekdays, noon till 3. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Buying a home warranty is one of the best investments you can make for your home. Are you worried about your air conditioning or your refrigerator breaking down? How about your heat, your plumbing, or any other major appliance? Fortunately, many people count on Select Home Warranty to provide them with a peace of mind, taking the hassle and cost out of home system and appliance repairs. Plans start at a dollar per day. Call now at 800-231-5953 or shwvalue.com and save $200. In the event your appliance breaks down, don't worry. Select Home Warranty offers same-day service for repairs or replacement. Select Home Warranty is peace of mind you can trust.
Repairs and replacements done by highly qualified service technicians. So I want you to call now. Don't wait for one of your major appliances to break down, for your systems to break down. Then it's panic time. 1-800-231-5953. Or do this. Get a free quote online at shwvalue.com and save $200 today. So that's 1-800-231-5953. Call now. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. There's nothing quite like local. Local is your weekly farmer's market or homemade strawberry ice cream. It's live music on the corner, yoga in the park, and a chance to try something new. That's why AARP is local, right here in our community, offering free events and enriching experiences that can help with finances, family, and fun. Join AARP Philadelphia and Longwood Gardens for a free virtual tour of the garden's history on April 23rd. Register at aarp.org local. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Do you know a veteran in need? Nation's Finest, through the VA's Supportive Services for Veteran Families program, helps veterans and their families struggling with rent, employment, and other housing-related costs. Today, Nation's Finest operates more than 30 locations in California, Arizona, and Nevada, helping thousands of veterans every year. Visit nationsfinest.org or call 1-833-468-9676. That's 1-833-468-9676. At Odyssey, we help protect this planet we all share through our One Thing Sustainability Initiatives. We donate $1 million of media every year to local environmental nonprofit organizations. And this month, our Odyssey teams will be out in our local communities cleaning up, planting trees, and more. When we each do one thing, it becomes a hundred, a thousand, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? For more, download the free Odyssey app or go to odyssey.com slash one thing. Fox News, I'm Sue Guzman. The sending of articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is being delayed. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer hasn't said much about how he would handle an impeachment trial for Alejandro Mayorkas, but he doesn't have to. That's because a spokesman for House Speaker Mike Johnson says the House will delay sending the articles to the Senate until next week. Fox's Chad Pergram, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says negotiators working on a deal with House Speaker Mike Johnson to take up the Senate passed foreign aid package. We believe it could be passed by an overwhelming bipartisan majority in the House actually onto the floor and voted upon. The $95 billion Senate bill providing money to Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Hard right House Republicans oppose it. They want it tied to border security. America's listening to Fox News. is the Fox News Rundown. Now a look at sports. Legendary college basketball coach John Calipari is stepping away from Kentucky. 
On Tuesday, Calipari posted a video to his social media saying that it was time for the program to have a different voice. His decision comes amid multiple reports that Coach Cal is in talks to become the next head coach at Arkansas, with ESPN reporting Tuesday that the two sides are in the final stages of making a deal. In his 15 seasons at Kentucky, Calipari took the Wildcats to four Final Fours and won the 2012 national title. But the last several years have been a bit rocky, as Kentucky has failed to make it past the first weekend of the NCAA tournament in the last three seasons. That's sports on the Fox News Rundown. I'm Joe Morgan, Fox News. Now an update from Outkick's Hot Mike. I'm shocked to see some of these very early, way too early top 25 rankings once the one season ends. And I saw one that had UConn at 7th or 8th. How on earth could anyone claim they're going to be 7th or 8th? I'm going by history and what I know about Danny Hurley. I don't know anything about the other rosters right now. And by the way, no one does. There are names entering the portal every day, and you don't know who the, these teams are going to grab either. So it's a useless exercise to me to put this out there today because we don't know. But if you just ask me, hey, who should the odds on favorite to be to win the national championship in 2025? It's a no-brainer. It's the UConn Huskies. It's the team that just won by an average of 20 points per game in one year and then up that the next year. They haven't won by less than double digits in consecutive NCAA tournaments. They're the most dominant NCAA tournament team in the history of the game based on this last year. I'm Chad Withrow with Hot Mike with Hutton and Withrow on the Fox News Rundown. Pastor Brad Lacey here, First Baptist Church, Conshohocken. Join us Saturdays for the great message and be blessed. 5 a.m. right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. I'm Philomena, founder of Ken Apparel here in Philly. I love my natural hair, but not what hoodies and hats were doing to it. So I made my own satin line hoodies and created a business in the process. I've got big dreams and Chase for Business in Philly was like, all right, how do we get you there? Get financial guidance from bankers in your community and convenient digital tools all in one place. Learn more at chaseforbusiness.com. Make more of what's yours. Real customers compensated. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member of DIC. Don't miss the Education Show with Dom Giordano every Sunday morning at 5.30. Find out how you can help your child or grandchild succeed. Sponsored by New Hope Academy. Don't let a cold, sinus infection, or allergies ruin your day. Breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier with Navage. Visit Navage.com, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, or a store near you. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Is Miami the new Silicon Valley? It might be, as Apple is the latest tech name looking to expand in South Florida. Sources tell Bloomberg the iPhone maker is taking 45,000 square feet in a new building in Coral Gables just south of Miami. Apple makes its move as Amazon is looking for 50,000 square feet of office space around Miami now that founder Jeff Bezos has moved there. Microsoft is already leasing new office space in Miami. Boeing's image is taking another hit after a longtime engineer at the plane maker claimed the company took manufacturing shortcuts on its 787 Dreamliner jet in an effort to ease production bottlenecks. The allegation is workers wrongly measured and filled gaps that can occur when airframe segments are joined together, impairing structural integrity. Ahead of a look at the cost of living later this morning, stock futures so far are edging higher. Steve Potisk, Bloomberg Radio. You know, today, 20 bucks barely gets you a burger and fries, and maybe it'll get you a quarter tank of gas. But you know what it'll get you, though? For just 20 bucks a month, you get unlimited talk and text and plenty of 5G data from my friends, my cell phone company, a veteran-owned company, Pure Talk. Now, you'll get the same quality of service that you get from the big carriers, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, but you get it for half the cost. Average family saving close to $1,000 a year, the same cell towers, same 5G network, no contracts, no active fees. Now you can bring your phone or get great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids, but make the switch today and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Now choose a wireless company that shares your values, that supports our military, our vets, and who creates American jobs, and they refuse to advertise on fake news network. Just dial pound 250, say the keyword, save now, make the switch today, so you can actually afford a burger and fries. Pound 250, keyword, save now from Pure Talk. Don't miss the on-field debut of the Philly City Connect uniforms on Friday, April 12th when the Phils host the Pirates at 640 with a post-game performance with DJ Jazzy Jeff at Pass and Stow. Order tickets now at phillies.com. 
spend a weekend with the White Sox when Chicago comes to Philly on Friday, April 19th at 6.40, Saturday, April 20th at 6.05, and Sunday, April 21st at 1.35. Order tickets now at phillies.com. Do you have three ex-wives and your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes? If so, you need to call Big Lou at Term Provider, 800-700-6898. Big Lou is intimately familiar with your problems, and if you're 50 or 60 years old and in reasonably good health, a $1 million policy should only cost about $100 to $200 per month. Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your new $1 million policy. Remember, call Big Lou. He's like you, except he's only on number two. Call Term Provider at 800-700-6898. That's 800-700-6898. For a million dollars in term life insurance that you can live with, call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. 800-700-6898. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Hey, Philly. Jason Kelsey here. Even though I won't be playing on Sundays anymore, you can still find me at Lincoln Financial Field on Saturday, May 18th for the Eagles Autism Challenge presented by Lincoln Financial Group. This event raises millions of dollars to support autism research and care and gives you the chance to walk, run, or ride your bike beside your favorite Eagles players. Together, we can transform the lives of individuals affected by autism. Register today at EaglesAutismChallenge.org, and I'll see you there. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a health care provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey, guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. WPHT, WPHT, HD, W-O-G-L, HD3, Philadelphia. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From the Sherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Live and local from Philadelphia. Free speech lives here. 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 It's Kale and Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. And away we go, live on this Wednesday, April 10th. It is indeed Kale and Company, right here on Talk Radio 1210. WPHT, we are always live on the free Odyssey app. And of course, streaming live on YouTube for your video viewing pleasure. As we head until 10 o'clock this morning, 855-839-1210, the phone number at 1210 WPHT on social media. I am at Nick Kale, K-A-Y-A-L. Greg Stocker is the chairman of the board. Phil Omquist, Anthony Dorenzo, our associate producers. Normally on a Wednesday morning, we head on down to the great state of Florida eh, right around 8.30 to chat with Tony Bruno. But since Dawn is in Italy, 
Bruno said, Greg said, I said, hell, we all said. Why don't we go for a full four hours? Four hours. How many hours, How many Tony hours? Bruno? How many hours did you say? Uh, four. You looking for your Gene Hackman Hoosiers trouble? <laughs> I know what you're doing. Gene Hackman, by the way, 94 years old. 94. And by the way, did you see the story yesterday in the New York Post? There was a picture of him yeah. supposedly wearing the same outfit, but it was on the same day. Oh. So now even the New York Post has to be ripped. Oh, boy. Being fake news. It's an outrage. <laughs> Everybody's wrong these days. <laughs> Fact checkers everywhere, Tony. Keep your head on a swivel. You never know when you could get blindsided. How you doing, buddy? Beautiful. Good morning. And I did tweet that we start at 6. 6 a.m. And we yeah. did. Yeah. I we start at 6 a.m. Drinking coffee, going through these, the, the sports scores, and everybody lost. And then I'm saying, well, the Sixers won. But anyway, enough about sports. Let's exactly get it right. Back to whatever we're doing here, the big take, <laughs> I think, right? Let's get, let's get it. Uh, let's, maybe we could do a few more hours. Maybe we could spend two more hours talking about Trump v. DeSantis. There's so many drops about on me. I it hate is. It. I hate it. Everything is shaded purple on the sound drop board. For Greg well, let me just uh, let me just start off with this, guys, because I think we have to get into the right mood now that we've survived the the, the eclipse. Yeah, I did have my double vax card. I found my vaccination card from a couple years ago. Wow. Remember when we used to have these things? Look at that! I found this. In, I found this in a in a shirt. Yep, the shirt pocket, <laughs> and there it is. So I am double vax for all you people Whew. who think that I'm anti-science. Yeah. Double vax. Of course, it was in uh, 2021. Yep. In August when I had the shots two weeks apart. So I was protected from the solar eclipse, <laughs> unlike uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, who got uh. burned by the gases of the moon. <laughs> is she the dumbest? The is she the dumbest human you've ever? I mean, my God. She could be. I have to do my updated. Elected officials, stupid power rankings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do that later today after the nap, and we'll see where she falls. Like it. She could be top three, Tone. Top She's three. on the Mount Rushmore. No doubt <laughs> She's about on it. the Mount Rushmore. 610. <laughs> Mount Rushmore of dip S's. Yes. We got a lot of good stuff lined up on today's show. Tony's going to be with us for four hours. We got a big take on crime, law and order, and disinformation. Also, one individual that is still currently employed by NPR decides to nuke NPR for going super, super left. We'll get to that story. Also, a story on how we are not as divided as you would think. Shocking. The media, the politicians, they like to say one person is at A, the other person is at Z. We're actually a lot closer to the middle of the alphabet than you would think. We'll get to that. The Eclipse stops the internet and did you know the legendary game scrabble has officially gone woke what scrabble because today's yep. youths tony bruno the gen zers out there they don't like competition but they do value inclusivity and that's what we have to do with board games as well now can you play with can you play to a tie on scrabble i mean if you don't know the answer and you do know the answer, you just fake it. Nobody loses. So it's, do they have participation trophies now, little trophies? If yes. you play Scrabble as a Gen Zer. That's correct. And you really don't know if you lost or won because you can't add up. And listen, I suck at math, but even I can figure out Scrabble at points. You know, I think exactly. how it works is you don't have to spell anymore. Oh. As long as you get close enough oh. to what you're thinking of. Yeah, you can just spell it any way you want. Right. You don't, we don't we don't value excellence anymore. Just yeah. be above average. Let everybody into the club. So we'll get to that wow. this morning. What is Gen Z, by the way? I still can't keep track of the uh, it's age. the generation the that is younger than me. It's the younger millennials. <laughs> no, but how old? What's the age range there? The, that I want to say, like uh, late teens, the mid to late, mid to maybe the mid twenties. Gen Alpha is what my daughters are. They are nine years old. So you've got Gen, Gen Alpha. Alpha. I didn't even know there was a Gen Alpha. She's kind of yeah, hot. The, that's the new one. Oh yeah, Gen Z. So you're what, eighteen to twenty-five? I, what is Gen Z? Seriously, it's rough. It's rough. It's, 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 it's roughly in that ballpark. Ninety-seven to twenty-twelve. So okay. like, if you were born between nineteen ninety-seven and twenty-twelve. So from twenty-seven years old down to twelve years old. Millennials are eighty-one to ninety-six. Gen X sixty-five to eighty, and the Boomers are fifty-five to no. I'm a boomer. Boomers too, it says. No, yeah, bo right. boomers doing the morning show on WFAM. <laughs> I see what you did there. Even Miss Robbins up this morning. Now, am I? Repl I'm replacing uh, 
I'm replacing Dawn, right? Yes, because technically you are a journalist, much like Dawn Stensland. Exactly. Well, I'm a semi-journalist. I mean, I can... If, if journalism needs to be performed, I'm ready to do it and fully <laughs> equipped. With I my will. background in journalism. Yep. But right now, we're not doing journalism. We're doing talk radio. You're damn and right. We started at 6 a.m., and we're going to 10. Exactly. You know, you know, I haven't done a show now in almost two and a half weeks. Yep. So this is like a, this is like a new uh, epiphany for me. Did you forget how like to do it? low for the last, uh, what, 5, 10, uh, 15 days. I've been pretty much on the down low, so to speak. It's like riding a bike, Tone. You get back in front of the microphone and you just start pedaling again, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't want to be like Joe Biden, though, when I stop at the corner when the media's there and then I fall over. Yeah. <laughs> not a joke. No, exactly. it's not a joke. It isn't. Always be careful when you're getting up that to that point in your life when you're 81 years old. You fall, it could be it. You break a hip, fall down the steps, it could be a wrap. I think that's why they have Lifeline. Do they still do that commercial on television? I don't sure, know. Sure, absolutely. I haven't seen it too much I've lately. I've fallen and I yes, can't get exactly. up. Right. I am I'm... doing 10-minute weather updates. Yes, I am. I will be doing traffic and weather on the twos. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> All right. I'll make sure I wrap up the big take so we get to the traffic on the twos as we continue here this morning. All right, 6.07 on this Wednesday morning, this hump day. Let's get to another big take. The Big Take on Kale & Company. All right, the Big Take this morning brought to you by Best Work Industries for the Blind, the Big Take, crime, law and order, and disinformation. We know how the Joe Biden administration works. Facts are kicked to the curb for feelings. Narratives take precedence over numbers. And the White House will strong-arm social media companies and also the mainstream media into spinning their version of the story like a dictatorship in a third-world country. The economy is booming, they say. Well, Nick, just look at the stock market, they say. Except the cost of living is still super high. Just look at your energy bill, your rent, the cost of buying a home or buying a car, leasing a car, leasing an apartment, the price of gas, or your grocery bill. The border is safe and secure, they say. We don't have an open border, they say. But in reality, we've seen a stampede at the southern border over the last three years that has led the border to becoming the number one issue in America during this election cycle, according to almost every single poll that has been taken in 2024. And the same thing is trying to be spun with crime, another sore spot and blemish for the Biden administration. Surprise, surprise, they are back at it again. You might have noticed lately in passing when you look at the news that the usual suspects are trying to tell the masses that crime is not out of control, that crime is totally under control right now, and the defund the police movement has worked, and statistics are showing a dip in, in crime. It's just a figment of your imagination, and it's all a lie from Donald Trump, and it's a lie from Republicans and those in Congress. Here's Joe Scarborough from MSNBC. Listen and watch this. Uh, I know the facts don't matter to Donald Trump, but crime rates keep dropping. Crime, uh, in fact, the rate is lower now than when Donald Trump was in office. Lower than it was in 2020, even uh, slightly lower than it was in Trump's best year as it, as, as it pertains to crime in 2019. Um, uh, murder rates uh, over the past year in the big cities that he's constantly uh, harping on, down 20 percent. Uh, rapes down 16 percent. You can go down the list uh, on and on. The most serious crimes way down. And, and again, the overall crime rate uh, for 2022, the last year recorded, uh, crime rates lower, again, than uh, than. Donald Trump's best year in 2019, certainly a lot lower than 2020. Uh, so he'll say what he says. Republicans will keep lying. Other news outlets will keep lying about it. Uh, and people will whip themselves into a frenzy and say, what about? Morning, Joe, a.k.a. the Biden administration's top fanboy, along with his co-host and wife, must have been reading the fake news like Rolling Stone. Here is the headline from them last week. Quote, data from the FBI shows that crime decreased significantly in 2023, including a 13% decline in murder, a 6% decline in violent crime, and a 4% decrease in property crime. There's just a little catch to these figures. Many people have stopped reporting property crime since they know the police are short-staffed and they won't do anything other than filing a paperwork report. 
Cops are also not arresting people at the rate they did prior to the criminal justice reform movement that we are living through since George Floyd in 2020. And those who do get arrested are receiving no cash bail. And on top of that, we have prosecutors who are failing to file charges and dismissing cases and putting these criminals back on the streets instead of being put behind bars. But if you'd like the truth, here's a bit of a headline from the New York Post. Overall, NYC crime hit levels unseen in the last two decades last year, even as Mayor Eric Adams claims it's a perception problem. See, it's a total joke that Eric Adams, a former police officer himself, is now in total politician spin mode. But you know what? The New York City elites, especially those in the media, they aren't buying it. Here's Stephen A. Smith and Charles Barkley talking about the crime issue in America. Listen and watch. Listen, man, and this thing, this crime wave we got going around the country where people just running in stores, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. People just running in stores, robbing people, all this homeless stuff. It's, it's, it's good to the point, yo, man. We elected y'all to do y'all job. Y'all do your job. Stop this homelessness stuff. Get these people off the street. Find some other way to leave them in front of just out and taking advantage of the public. And, hey, if you come in these stores robbing people, number one, it's open season on your ass. But also, if we catch you, you're going to jail. They are correct. And here is the data from the New York Post story. Serious crime spiked again last year to levels unseen in nearly two decades, according to internal NYPD data obtained by the New York Post, even as Eric Adams has repeatedly claimed that, quote, crime is down in the Big Apple. For the second year in a row under Adams, overall crime was on the rise, driven by a historic surge in assaults, which neared 28,000 for the first time in the city's publicly recorded history that according to the rolling report of police department data. The report tracks the tally of seven major felony offenses after the time of arrest to when cases moved to district attorneys who decide whether to upgrade, downgrade, or stick with the charge. For instance, a perp who punches somebody in the face might be charged with a misdemeanor at first, but if the victim's condition later worsens, the prosecutor could boost it to a felony. The count of major felonies, which include murder, rape, robbery, assault, burglary, grand larceny, and car thefts, is generally used as a benchmark for success year after year. While Adams has been touting his success in his war against crime, citing a slight dip reported at the end of 2023, the rolling report shows that the early victory lap was premature. The number of seven major crimes in 2023 jumped to 127,111 once around 430 upgrades and elevated charges were accounted for, marking the highest totals since 2006 for the second year in a row, according to police data. By the way, that's 18 years ago if you're not doing the math. Police sources said it could get even worse, as historically, up to 800 crimes are upgraded in their rolling report annually before the final tally is set for the year. So what is the lesson here? Don't listen to the mainstream media. Don't listen to Eric Adams. But that's just New York. It's a local thing on a local level, just one city. How about nationally, nationwide? The other organization or agency not to trust, as we've learned in the last four years, the FBI. See, the Washington Examiner, which rivals the Washington Post, was actually able to do real digging due diligence, research, and reporting, and they've uncovered that the FBI has been supplying bad data nationwide to help the Biden administration appear better on the crime front. The headline reads in the Washington Examiner, Bad Data from the FBI Misleads About Crime. It's written by Mark Morgan and Sean Kennedy, if you would like to check it out. Here's a little excerpt. The fourth quarter 2023 crime report from the FBI, the federal government's keeper of crime data, is unreliable at best, and deceptive at worst. The FBI's preliminary 2023 data show murder declined by 13.2% across the country, and violent crime dropped 5.7% compared to 2022. Various news headlines have reported the FBI's numbers unquestioningly claiming murder is plummeting and violent crime declined significantly to pre-pandemic levels. But these latest figures warrant skepticism, as we outline in a new report. 
In fact, violent crime is up substantially from 2019 levels, and last year's apparent drop is less significant than it appears. They go on to say in the examiner, part of the problem is how police departments report offenses to the FBI. The FBI asked, then demanded that law enforcement agencies transition away from the system they used for decades to a new, more detailed, but onerous one. The 2021 mandate to use a certain data set point to submit crime data proved a disaster as overstretched departments, especially in large cities, failed to reach compliance and thus did not submit the data. You can read the full story at the Washington Examiner's website, but to say crime is down is like descending from a tall peak and standing on a high bluff and saying you are closer to the ground. A true but misleading statement. Worse, the FBI's crime data serve as a poor meter to judge how high or low crime in America actually is. So what's the solution to the real problem, right? End the criminal justice reparations? I think that's a start. No more get-out-of-jail-free cards? That would help. No more Soros-elected DAs? That would help. Fully staffed and trained police officers? For sure. And no more defunding demonizing and demoralizing police in our politics and also for you out there in the news media and of course this little thing we call law and order here was donald trump at jonathan diller's viewing last week after the nypd officer was killed by somebody with 21 priors listen and watch this sad event such a horrible thing and it's happening all too often and we're just not going to let it happen we just can't 21 times arrested this thug and uh, the person in the car with him was arrested many times and they don't learn because they don't respect they don't they're not given the respect the police are the greatest people we have there's nothing and there's nobody like them and this should never happen i just visited with a very beautiful wife that now doesn't have her husband stephanie was uh, just incredible their child brand new beautiful baby sitting there innocent as can be that uh, doesn't know how his life has been changed but uh the diller family will you'll never be the same you can never be the same and we have to stop it we have to stop it we have to get back to law and order we have to do a lot of things differently because this is not working this is happening too often uh, it's an honor to be here and again i want to just thank all of you folks for uh, allowing this and bruce thank you bruce has been a friend of mine for a long time he's done an incredible job out here but uh this is such a sad occasion uh, the only thing we can say is maybe something is going to be learned we've got to toughen it up we've got to strengthen it up this should never be allowed things like this shouldn't take place and to take place so often so thank you all for being here it's an honor and it's an honor for me to be here this is a great family the diller family i met the friends and i met every one of them inside and these are just incredible people that are just devastated they're devastated they've got a tough road it's going to be a very tough road so thank you very much everybody appreciate it no more dead cops no more police assaults no more innocent victims in society on buses trains and subways no more empowered emboldened criminals do the crime do the time it's cheesy i know but it's true and it's effective. Or we can continue to run the risk of turning reality into a movie where the bad guys are running society. And that's the big take. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully, and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Just visit kitchenmagic.com. Com. Tell them Dawn sent you. If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800 
800-254-4574. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-254-4574 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your Social Security check. Call 800-254-4574 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800-254-4574. Hi, this is Dom Giordano at Martin Water Conditioning's Customer Appreciation Sale. Everything flows smoothly. Martin Water Conditioning has the latest in water purifying technology for your home. Until April 22nd, receive up to $500 off when purchasing a Connecticut water system. 18 and 48 month special financing or 10% off spot free car rent system and more. Call Martin Water Conditioning at 1-800-853-1093. Offers cannot be combined or applied to prior sales. Hi, it's Dawn. Want an environmentally friendly approach to lawn care? Call my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. I've been a customer for years. Trust me, you're going to love the results. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs. This reduces the need for chemicals and creates a safer lawn for your entire family, including your pets. Natural Lawn is locally owned and family operated. They have offices in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They're competitively priced and have a satisfaction guarantee. I trust the leader in organic-based lawn care. You should too. Give them a call. New customers? Take advantage of Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full-service program and they'll seed your lawn every year free of charge. 800 free seed naturallawn.com 800 free seed and choose my lawn care company natural lawn of america greener grass fewer weeds guaranteed tell them dawn sent you get slimmer for the summer by losing a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days with nj diet call 855-5nj diet or go to njdiet.com Get ready for spring with NJDiet.com. I'm Philomena, founder of Kin Apparel here in Philly. I love my natural hair, but not what hoodies and hats were doing to it. So I made my own satin line hoodies and created a business in the process. I've got big dreams, and Chase for Business in Philly was like, all right, how do we get you there? Get financial guidance from bankers in your community and convenient digital tools all in one place. Learn more at chaseforbusiness.com. Make more of what's yours. Real customers compensated. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Do you have a life insurance policy of $100,000 or more that you don't need? Well, don't lapse or surrender your policy. You might be sitting on a gold mine. That's right. You may be able to sell all or part of your life insurance policy to Coventry for cash or a combination of cash and coverage with no future premiums, even a term policy. Call Coventry Direct at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. For over 25 years, we've helped thousands of people sell their policies and we can probably help you too. Call us today at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. Call now. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. Pass it on. You've heard it said, he's a diamond in the rough. Or maybe, diamonds are forever. Here's something else I've learned about diamonds. They're just pieces of coal put under pressure for a long, long, long time. So when I start feeling like I want to give up, I think about that little piece of coal. And if that piece of coal can make something of itself by not giving up, so can I. Persistence is in you. Pass it on. From PassItOn.com. Hey, Paoli. We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Always live on the free Odyssey app. It's been a while since 
It's Kale and Company, 626, as we continue on this beautiful Wednesday. This segment brought to you by Best Work Industries for the Blind, a nonprofit organization located in Cherry Hill. Best Work Industries for the Blind provides training and employment for people who are blind or visually impaired. For employment opportunities or to donate, go to bestworkindustries.org. Tony Bruno is with us here on this Wednesday. All right, Bruno, so let's get into this a little bit. You have, as we talked about in the big take with all this crime and media manipulation, you have Biden, the Democrats, the FBI, all in the back pocket, all in cahoots, and they just hand the talking points to the media, and the media runs with it, and they read whatever they're given, and they put spin on it, and then they tell you, no, that's not reality. It's just the perception. You're actually more safe than you've ever been, Tony. Well, the ridiculous part is all you could do is look at the crime. I mean, I, you know, I keep track of Philadelphia, even though I live here in Florida. I mean, I follow Steve Keeley and all these people who cover crimes. Last night, there was an ATV incident in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And every day you can look at the crime numbers just because these people aren't convicted. And a lot of these crimes aren't even reported. Doesn't mean they're not happening. Look at the subway systems going on in Philly with the crime. And so people who pay attention can see what's going on. But you have different people who want, don't want the crime to be happening. I don't want the crime to be happening. Of course. But these are facts. Mm-hmm. These are facts. And the fact that because of politics that we have to differentiate, well, that's not what's really happening. And you mentioned the media. To me, I don't, you know, get, getting involved with people on social media and having different viewpoints, that's not solving everything. It's holding the people in power accountable for their lies. The media is corrupt. It's the most corrupt it's ever been in my lifetime. And it pains me to say that. But when you have a corrupt media and then you have people who are refusing to look at facts and just want the facts to to suit whatever their particular narrative is, Mm -hmm. that's not the way you fix things. And that's the biggest problem we have. And now politics matters more than anything else, sadly, in this day and age. I remember 20 years ago. Did you know what Paul, you know who you voted for? You, you ask your neighbors, did you get involved in elections? No. You just went out and you voted. You voted one day. You had the election results that night. Now fast forward. Now it takes months. In California, it took them a month to count votes. Mm-hmm. Where's the progress? Right. Where's the pro- That's why people are all messed up when it comes to trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. Before you had the facts, you made the determination you saw what they were presented to you. Now there are no facts. You have a corrupt media. You have people on the air, like The View, I mean, who are on there every day spouting <laughs> nonsense. And they have a lot of viewers. That's the thing. I know. And you've got Sonny Hostin and these people talking about climate change is the reason why the, uh, the eclipse happened. <laughs> I mean, who's that stupid? I know. Listen, I don't want to insult women because we have a lot of women listeners. And we have a woman here, Robin. I mean, these people are insulting the intelligence and just label a comedy show. Don't call it a morning view show. Right, the right. The view has no view. They, they may as well be in an <laughs> underground tavern somewhere. That's how stupid these chicks are. And again, I'm not trying to be a misogynist here, but who's dumber? We, we should do a who's dumber show. Right. The woman on the view, uh, which politician? Because these people have powerful positions. Mm-hmm. That's, That's the problem. Is that Sun- Sunny Hostin is supposed to? Be, she's a lawyer, right? No, right. Which makes me, which makes me really uh, look back on my life and say, how the hell did I tap out of law school after ninety days? <laughs> if she got through in three years, but that's a different mystery for a different day. But no, you're right. That you look at the media and some of these shows, whether it's The View or these these you know talking head shows on on sports media. I mean, so many times these people they're not even in the ballpark of the truth of reality and the facts and I, I i quoted and cited all of those facts from the washington examiner that's data that is out there available for reporters and journalists to dig up and share with the masses but people like the washington post they don't do that they just run with the left-wing narrative and you just spout it and then people with the attention span of salad dressing that consume four minutes of news a day are like ah These Republicans are just overreacting. It's not a real issue. Okay, well, then you try going through public transportation in these big cities. Philly, New York. Tony, yesterday we talked about a story that Greg had on the cut sheet where there's this new trend of random people just walking around New York City punching women in the face. 
I don't know if it's like a TikTok challenge or what it is, but that's the 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 lack of law abiding citizens we have over the last four years. It's open season on crime, if you think about it. And all this all this stuff is caught on camera, so it's not made up. Right. You know, back in the day, you used to say, "Well, this reportedly happened." Now there's video everywhere of people committing crimes, walking up and cold cocking people on the subway, on the streets. Yep. So I don't know where people are getting their information from. And again, I'm not saying my information is right and yours is wrong. Just get the facts. But you're not getting the facts on media. You're getting a spin. And I get, you know, the shows like The View, they're not really journalism shows. They're, they're basically comedy shows without a laugh track because even the audience doesn't laugh because they believe everything they say. The audience is trained seals. Right. It's like Colbert putting on AOC oh. to discuss important developments in the world. Remember when the late night, they, that's supposed to be a comedy show. Yep. Yep. And they put AOC and these people on because they're not a comedy show. They're basically just talking. They're, they're basically Political pawns pumping misinformation every night under the guise of being late night comedy. Right. There is no late night comedy anymore. Uh oh. That is what? correct. Oh no, Tony's video feed keeps cutting out. Uh oh. Not sure if that's what a, happened? a Phil thing no, or if you're thing. It's, okay. I'm, I'm worried that my. Uh, we'll blame Robin for this one. Uh oh. Uh oh. I know. That's not going to be good at Am all. Am I not on? No, you're no, good. You got you now. On me? You were cutting me. out for a few uh, a few choppy seconds. I, but... I, haven't, uh, I haven't even moved my hands that much. I know, which is hard to do as an Italian, right? I know. I, I'm going to tape my I'm going to get duct tape and put my hands, t tape my hands down <laughs> uh, to see if I can talk without no, moving my hands. In this instance, Tony, it has nothing to do with you. It's it's the machine. The machine is... The machine? Oh. Damn the machines! All right, Robin, get on it. Get on it right now. Pronto. <laughs> really quick, Stat though, I don't know if any of you um, read the book, How to Lie with Statistics. It's an old book. I remember reading it in college by Daryl Huff. It was, I think it came out in like 1950 somewhere. How to but Lie with Statistics? Yes, wow. and it is. It is a um, book that really uh, is relevant now. When you see all these people spouting statistics and mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, this is the reality," statistics can be manipulated so sure. easily. Um, and if you don't realize how much it is done by journalists in this day and age, mm -hmm. go to. It's cheap. Uh, it's an old book. How to lie with statistics. It's a fun little read. Daryl Huff. All right. Highly recommend it. Beautiful. We'll look that up. Speaking of lying with statistics and putting spin, this is the first story of the day I want to get to, and I thought this was fascinating. And I've long suspected this, but now you get it really point blank, period, right in your face. Uh, NPR, I'm going to totally butcher this name. Is it Yuri Berliner? Or, or, yes, Yuri uh, Berliner. Yuri Berliner. Yuri Berliner. Yeah. Yeah. So Berliner. Yuri Berliner comes out and hammers uh, public radio's liberal bias. Now, Uri Berliner has worked at NPR for 25 years. He graduated from Columbia School of Journalism, very esteemed uh, journalism program. Also went to Harvard University. Uh, he's won a Peabody Award, an Edward R. Murrow Award, all of these journalistic accolades. But none of these accolades, however, according to Mediate.com, will earn him the attention for his latest foray. Taking a sledgehammer to his own employer in a scathing piece written for the Free Press, uh, Free Press. Uh, Berliner currently, yes, currently, serves as senior business editor for NPR, which he criticized in blunt terms for its movement towards what he describes as an illiberal position of progressive dogma. He did so in a piece published by the Free Press, which is a site founded by another critic of the liberal leanings of America and their major news institutions, the great Barry Weiss. As you know, Barry right. Weiss, Matt Taibbi, Michael Schellenberger, the Twitter files fame. Those are like the last standing true journalist out there. And he accuses NPR of having lost America's trust. He writes this following excerpt. An open-minded spirit no longer exists within NPR. And now, predictably, we don't have an audience that reflects America. That wouldn't be a problem for an openly uh, polemical news outlet serving a niche audience. But for NPR, which purports to consider all things, it's devastating both for journalism and the business model. And Tony, this this just confirms here for me what I have thought for at least close to a decade. We no longer really have journalists. We just have activists that pick a side and regurgitate the talking points. 
Because if you do real journalism, you might find out that whether it's far left or far right, maybe the answer and the truth is closer to the middle. But we don't like living in an area with in a world where the gray area is maybe where the real truth lies. And we've seen this especially so, I believe, on the left in news and in sports where they just come out and they regurgitate what the, what the establishment wants you to think. There's no more diversity of thought, and there's no challenging somebody else's thought. It's just fall in line or be dealt with pretty much. Yeah, I watched the interview. There's a, actually, he wrote a column about it, and then Barry Weiss did the interview on her podcast, which is called Honesty with Barry Weiss, and they, they break it down. And he admits that, you know, uh, the problem with NPR and most of the media, the mainstream media, the one that people consume the most, they, they, they ran with not the lies, but they ran with the stories that they were told that was the, the case in the, in the progressive world. Right. Like the, the Hunter Biden laptop top. Yep. They hid that because they were told that there wasn't a laptop by all the supposed people you know, in, in, in our criminal justice system, the, all the experts, the 51 high ranking officials who said that it was Russian disinformation. So they hid the stories that turned out to be true to protect a narrative, which is all of these things were to get Trump. And he even acknowledged in the interview that I was watching yesterday that in 2016, the whole mission was to stop Trump from becoming president because Hillary Clinton was supposed to win. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew it. She knew it. We all knew it. We thought she was going to win because Trump had no shot. Right. And then Hillary, to her surprise and outrage, lost because she didn't pay attention to a couple of the states. And ever since that election, the, the whole thing has been now, we can't let Trump get back into office. We got to get him out of there. And, the, and the, the admissions were startling because he said they would not listen and and then he later went on to say that there were like 35 or 85 people. I don't know what the total number was. Mm -hmm. Not one single Republican, everybody who worked at NPR was a Democrat. And again, I don't have a problem with that. But when you're in a group think, group think tank like they have at NPR and everybody is of same narrative or same opinion, mm -hmm. you're not getting the other side. No, you're and, not. I listen, I used to love listening to NPR on Saturday mornings. They had that, that show where the guy would take an audience call and they did it live. You know, the car guys, NPR was great. But all of a sudden now, if you listen to them, you can tell, first of all, they're tedious and boring. I don't know Amen. how anybody listens to them without yeah. falling asleep in their cars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so that's the thing that, you know, they have no energy. Yeah. And it's obviously all, it's not, I wouldn't call it propaganda. It's groupthink. Yep. yep. And it's groupthink only tailored to their particular beliefs. And now he's admitting, and here's the best part, guys, is that he still works there and went back into the office after exposing his entire operation. He'll be, he'll, be, he'll be canceled by Friday. We have a, No, we have... he won't. I guarantee you he won't because if they fire him, then it'll look like NPR is punishing a guy for telling the truth about what's going on True. at National Public Radio. We have audio of him. He was on with the uh, Chris Cuomo last night that we'll get to at 745. What, what, what really uh, pains me about this whole thing is not just like, organizations can have whatever view they want to, I don't care. Mm -hmm. but, but with NPR, especially here in Philly with WHYY, like that's taxpayer funded. You and I are paying for that crap. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I see them in the rankers, you know, for the ratings, and I see them in like the top ten. I'm just like, this is this is. First of all, they have no commercials, so they have no sponsors. It's all taxpayer funded or yep. donations, right. right? And 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 to see that people listen to that crap and just regurgitate it, and mm -hmm. and 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 it just it it just annoys me to no end. That's what your tax money is going for. That's yep. what I have a problem with. Right? You're, no, you're my exactly right. Is one of those. I mean, my uh -oh. mom is a huge NPR. I think that that's the only radio station other than classical music that she has on. I sent her the article that was written by Yuri, and she wrote back, I agree that NPR leaned to the left around 2016, but this man's report has its own biases. Thanks for sending. Oh, oh biases. I mean, the guy wow. works there. He's been there for 25 years. This isn't, I mean, it, you know, the, the people that listen to it, hook, line, and sinker, yeah. they... They cannot see anything no. other than that reality. You're exactly right, Robin. They're, they just. They, I'm going to burn my NPR gift bag. Yeah. <laughs> I want my $25 back. Tote, tote and I'm bag. Go out today tote and bag. burn it yep. right here in downtown South Cape Coral. Yeah. And then have it go into the Caloosahatchee River. Oh, the hard the remains, the tattered remains, the burned out NPR tote bag. He see goes, if I order that. 
the, I see if I stay up and watch one of those concerts that they interrupt 15 times yep. to come in and pimp for your money. <laughs> it's an outrage. He, he goes on to say in this column, <laughs> a little more than a decade ago, I noticed a significant shift in the tone and the story cover, coverage on public radio. At first, it felt like self-parody, as if story selections were being made as part of an SNL skit written and designed to mock NPR. And then the short stories trended from absurd to partisan with an identity-based narrative where everybody is a victim. And he is saying that this shift started with Donald Trump, which a lot of people say is true. I think it started slightly earlier than that. I started noticing it, especially from a sports talk radio standpoint, in 2012 when I was producing with Tony Bruno and producing the Tony Bruno and Harry May show. You started to see this little interjection of politics and things like that right in the beginning of Obama's second term and then I think right around 2014 about a year before Trump came down you know the golden escalator that's when it started to really take off it exploded during Trump's first campaign and his first term and then in 2020 it just went into complete overdrive and I I really do believe this and I know a lot of people say this and I hate regurgitating what a lot of people are saying but I think truly Tony Trump broke the brains of many in the mainstream media and the establishment. And then 2020 and everything from 2020 with COVID, George Floyd, and that year from hell, that was just the icing on the cake. No, I agree with you. I think it started when Barack Obama was elected for the first term in 2008. Okay. Okay. There's no doubt. I mean, everybody was enthralled by Barack Obama. I mean, the guy was smooth. He was sharp. He was hard to dislike. He said all the right things. And I think that's when the whole adoration thing, we talk about cults. There was, you know, and, and by the way, if Barack Obama was elected again, and for the people who said, you know, the black vote elected him, no, the white vote elected Barack Obama, not once, but twice. Mm-hmm. So he was obviously revered, and he was special. You know, I mean, this guy had that whole look about him. He was smooth. He did everything that everybody was expecting him to do. And then all of a sudden, that's when, to me, the media basically became – you know, tingling up the legs, as what's his face used to say on MSNBC. <laughs> he got the tingle in his in his loins. Chris yeah. Matthews. So yeah. the Barack Obama era uh-huh. was was supposed to be the the special thing because it was the first black president. And I'm not, but oh, Bill Clinton's not the first black president just because he played <laughs> saxophone on late night TV. Uh, didn't didn't make him the first black. Pa- you know. Anyway, Barack Obama is the guy that everybody in the media fell in love with, and you could not criticize him or you could not question Mm -hmm. anything that happened in his administration. Right. And that's when I believe this all started. And then when Trump, the outsider, somehow got involved and then won the White House, they went full on after him. And again, you don't have to like Trump. You know, anybody who likes Trump is not in a cult, by the way. And that's another one of those interesting sidebars. Are you in a cult? <laughs> You're not in a cult. You can vote for whoever you want. Yep. But the media is in a cult. The media is in a cult of making sure Trump doesn't get back in again because they're afraid that he's not going to become a dictator. He's afraid. They're afraid that he's going to keep them from doing what they do without any kind of blowback. The yep. Mayorkas thing. You know, here's 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 a Chuck Schumer saying. Oh, you know, dude, we shouldn't be doing impeachments like this for no reason. Oh, okay. He doesn't want any a vote on on Mayorkas, who's been the biggest crook in this administration with the borders. Yep. He can't face impeachment, but Chuck Schumer's putting up imp- articles of impeachment every week. Yeah, that's right. During the Trump years. That's why people don't buy any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why people can't trust politicians because they're liars. They're all liars. Yep. And they're the people in charge. They're the people that should be condemned by the media, not. Uh, uh, put on a platform and give them a platform yep. to do this stuff. I agree. Uh, what are you pointing at? 855-839-1210, the number if you want to jump in. Coming up next, the media divides and politicians divide, but we're not as divided as people think. We'll get to that story and the facts to back it up as we continue. But first, a word from my friends at the Piazza Auto Group. We uh, recently dropped the debut episode of Kale Pool Karaoke just about 10 weeks ago. You can go back and watch it on all of our social media channels. And we filmed the premiere episode in the 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. It's Honda's big full-size luxury SUV, and the Trail Sport model has a lot of cool features, off-road 
rugged durability, but also a seven-mode drive system, trail watch, multi-camera view, so you've got safety and security from every conceivable angle, 18-inch alloy wheels, wireless Apple CarPlay for the kids, for their devices, their tablets, so they can always be connected at all times to the internet. And also, if it's for your wife, third row seating. If it's for your husband, an extra row for golf clubs, groceries, mulch for landscaping projects the 2024 honda pilot trail sport this thing is a beauty you can explore it and all the variations of it at one of the five piazza honda locations in philadelphia pottstown Reading, springfield and langhorn or shop their inventory right now online at piazzaautogroup.com crash proof retirement records all financial meetings all promises made in recorded financial meetings become legally binding between Crash Proof Retirement and the investing client. Crash Proof Retirement provides all of their clients with a certificate of authenticity, further documenting that recording financial meetings brings fiduciary responsibility to the highest level. I'm Jack Gunning from Bluebell, Pennsylvania. I don't know whether anybody can offer you the security that Crash Proof Retirement does. I have this certificate that tells me they're a fiduciary. Everything is recorded and they have your best interest at heart. That certificate is 100% documentation that you know what they're saying is 100% correct. Correct. Other companies don't have this guarantee. This certificate it means an awful lot for me, and it should mean an awful lot for you. Certify your retirement future and register for our next educational event at Springfield Country Club on April 16th, 800-722-9728 or crashproofretirement.com. Do you have shoeboxes full of photos? Today only, radio listeners get VIP access to the new Photo Legacy Box. Get your family's photos professionally scanned for as low as seven cents, which is 76% less than what other brands charge. As the world's largest digitizer, you know you can trust Legacy Box to digitize your entire collection of four by six photos. Everything from the embarrassing haircut you had in the 90s to photos of your great grandma's wedding. Visit LegacyBox.com value to get 200 photos scanned starting at just $19.95. Oh, and don't forget, Legacy Box also digitizes over 15 other types of analog media, so you can get your favorite memories on VHS or grandpa's film reels from the 40s digitized too. Take advantage of this exclusive offer on the new Photo Legacy Box today and preserve your past for as low as 7 cents. Go to LegacyBox.com value. That's LegacyBox.com value. Hey, I got a question for you. You hate bending over to put on your shoes, wish you could just put them on standing or sitting without ever having to touch them? If so, then I have the shoe for you. Introducing new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins. With new Skechers Slip-Ins, you just step in and off you go. You don't even need to lace up. So how do Skechers Slip-Ins work? Well, there's a special smooth comfort pillow in the heel that helps your foot slide right into place. So just step in them and go. Find new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins for the whole family at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Doors take us to summers away, or winter adventures, and afternoon getaways. Your dedicated Fidelity Advisor can help you open those doors by working with you on a comprehensive plan to help you reach your wealth's full potential, because doors were meant to be opened. Visit fidelity.com slash wealth. Investment minimum supply. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSE SIPC. For more than 50 years, Delaware Valley homeowners have called Oliver for their heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical needs. Leaky faucet, clogged drain, Oliver's expert plumbers can handle that. No power, outdated electrical panel, Oliver's licensed electricians can help. No AC, Oliver has same-day service, flexible financing, and the industry's best warranties. For fast service you can trust, call Oliver today or visit online at oliverheatcool.com. See Joe Conklin's comedy show at St. Luke's Church off Easton Road in Glenside, Saturday, April 27th. It was fun, 100% every time. It's spectacular. It was hysterical. I saw Conklin last time he was in Glenside. Can't wait to see him again. Hysterical. It was terrific. We had a ball. Oh, I thought it was great. My cheeks are still hurting from laughing so hard. That's Joe Conklin's comedy show at St. Luke's Church off Easton Road in Glenside, Saturday, April 27th. For tickets, go to JoeConklin.com. Some people like him, but I'm not one of them. JoeConklin.com! <laughs> Free speech lives here. With Don Giordano, weekdays noon till 3. Talk Radio 1210. WPHD.
Mustard. It is Kale and Company, 651. Tony Bruno in for dawn this morning. Greg Stocker, Phil Omquist, Anthony Dorenzo here as well. Miss Robin as well. 855-839-1210. That's how you jump in. Get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us live on YouTube. YouTube.com slash at 1210WPHT. Jump in the Kale and Company comment community. You can also hit us up on Twitter, where I think they call it X these days. At 1210WPHT, Michael Newbaum says, Show sounds awesome. So fun to have your voice heard back in Philly, Tony Bruno. Yeah, buddy. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm awake. I'm alert. Uh, and I'm, uh, I don't know what I am. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm having fun again. It's about, the, you know, we, we talk about a lot of things that are divisive. Yep. But we, for the most part, we want to have fun. Right? We don't want to deal with all this nonsense every day, but it's reality. You deal with reality, and then you try to enjoy life. That's what I'm doing here. Exactly. That's all I try to do every single day. Well, Just try to enjoy life because mm-hmm. it's a gift. Yeah. Well, and, and even with Robin, it's a gift to have her around. Yes, yeah, baby, until she screws up the, until she screws up the video <laughs> feed, and then you got to take her to task <laughs> and give her a bump, bump, a bump. During the break, I just saw on Twitter, I know, I know you're a big guy. And the Masters, I know you're a big Masters guy. Oh, this, this is the, a great week, Tony. It's the granddaddy of them all, right? It is, Did man. Did you see it? There's a clip. I, I, you got to have to pull this. We got to get it's – a, it's a dad and his daughter at, their, at the daughter's wedding. So the dad, after they had the dance, mm-hmm. they go out to this green – to this, like, range. It's basically an island mm-hmm. over a lake, yep. and then they tee up a golf ball each, and they drive it into the water while the Masters theme is playing. Oh, we wow. Gotta, we got to oh. find that clip. Yes. I, I've been known to drive golf balls into the water, too, but the Masters theme is never playing in the background for me. <laughs> it's just some guy behind me saying, hey, pick up your ball and move it, jerk. <laughs> That's usually the way it works for me. When you play golf, this should be a co- this should be on speakers, just on every golf course, yes. playing in the background. Absolutely. Oh, you right. got the That's Masters the- theme? Is that what yeah. I hear? There it is. Yeah. You hear it? Yes. Let's go to uh, Nick Kale, Amen Corner. And can we say Amen Corner? Is that too religious? It's quite. I mean, let's be honest. Amen it, Corner. That has religious. Do we have has... to separate golf from religion? Golf, or is golf church, a religion? the state. Well, golf is a religion, Tony Bruno. <laughs> but here we are at the par three seventh, 158. Tony Bruno's pulling nine iron. Now the wind is picked up, and Robin's handing him an eight iron. Choke down, Tone. Choke down, she said. Damn right. There you go. Wow. And spit in the divot. Yeah, yes. Can they still say that when they play golf? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I just didn't know that. Beautiful. By the way, your the audio is a little choppy. Having trouble hearing that. I hear it really, very, Robin? very faintly. Yeah. Crank it up, Robin. I don't know if cranking up will help. Is that, is that any better? A little distorted. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. We're going to have to All give right. Robin a mulligan for the first hour here. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's clear in our headset. It must be just the transfer on Zoom. It is. It is. Don't cross the streams, Venkman. Don't cross the streams. All right, exactly. we'll come back, kick off hour number two. I want to get to this story from Axios on why America isn't as divided as we think. And we've got some numbers and some figures that will prove that. We'll get to that. Uh, and then also, Charles Barkley says, if you uh, made a whole day out of watching the eclipse, you're a loser. And for oh, the first time Charles. in weeks, yeah, for the first time in weeks, I'm on board with Chuck. No, I agree no. with Sir Charles. We'll get to that as we continue. Bruno's in for Dawn. Hour 2 is next here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Although you try not to, most of us have used an ATM out of network. And at the end, you get that notice that it's going to cost you $4 extra. Are you kidding me? So you're paying money to get your own money. It makes you crazy. In retirement, you're going to want to use that 401k, but every time you dip into it, you have to pay taxes. Here we go again. You have to pay money to get your own money. Oh, come on! Jim Cipriotti and the Retire Ready Financial Group believes that every retirement plan needs a tax plan. Without it, you're using Uncle Sam's plan. And do you really think that's going to work in your favor? Call Retire Ready Financial Group today at 610-894-7415. That's 610-894-7415 and schedule a complimentary retirement consultation. Or you can find them online at retirereadyfg.com. Investment advisory services offered through Retire Ready Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through James V. Cipriati, Retire Ready Financial Group, LLC, NPN number 208-3768. 
For more expert appliance shopping advice, here's National Appliance Warehouse's own appliance guru. Hello, let's talk premium. These are top-of-the-line appliances that dream kitchens are made of. If you're planning an investment like this in your home, where you buy is as important as what you buy. At National Appliance Warehouse, we're committed to delivering the superior buying experience you deserve. Our showroom features beautifully displayed premium appliances of every major brand, including highly sought-after Sub-Zero, Wolf & Co. Our team of gurus is well-versed at guiding you as you navigate the same appliances you'd find in the most magnificent homes and kitchens of cooking enthusiasts and the national appliance warehouse team has the expertise to properly deliver and install your stunning new appliances spring into savings at national appliance warehouse purchase a qualifying sub-zero wolf and cove appliance package and choose three years of additional warranty or a rebate up to twenty five hundred dollars click national appliance warehouse.com or visit their showroom in tax-free wilmington today the irs finally caught up with louie i hadn't paid my taxes in eight years i owed the irs a lot of money louie was in deep trouble we're gonna take your house put a lien on your bank account uh garnish your pay they don't care. They're going to take your paycheck. Louie found out about Optima Tax Relief, the leading tax resolution firm. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, they've resolved over $1 billion for their clients. Optima Tax, they helped me. They calmed me down. They made me feel comfortable, and I trust them. Louie has a lot to be thankful for. I don't owe the IRS anymore, and I'm able to live a comfortable life, <laughs> a lot better life. It was because of Optima Tax. For tax help you can trust, call Optima now for a free consultation. Take it from Louie. If you owe the IRS, don't go on alone. Give Optima Tax a call. They can help you. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Testimonial from an actual client. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. I'm Bev. My husband, Bill, is living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that can scar your lungs and make it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose. If you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. Bill and I have been married for over 60 years, and we're looking forward to more. If you or someone you love may have ILD, find support, hope, and help at lungsandyou.com. At Cherry Hofava, we have absolutely incredible offers, incredible offers, and a plethora of both new and certified Volvos from which to choose. We are eager to offer amazingly competitive prices because we need the room for all of our construction vehicles. When leasing or purchasing a new or certified Cherry Hofava, you become part of our team. Join Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. I am Judith Krepnick, president of Cherry Hill Volvo. Do you feel like you're going through life clouded by doubt? Talk to California Psychics. Our trusted and accurate psychics are available 24-7, and we guarantee if it's not life-changing, it's free. Download the app or connect with us at CaliforniaPsychics.com. Right now, new customers get 80% off their first reading. Experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. Space may be the final frontier, but it's also what a lot of us lack in our basement or garage. By switching to a Navian tankless water heater, not only will you have all the hot water you need whenever you need it, but you'll gain storage area as well. Maybe a place to display your space collectibles. Highly logical. Learn about Navian's series of high-efficiency tankless water heaters and how they don't just save space, but save dollars on your utility bills, too. For more, go to tanklessmadesimple.com. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Today, everyone is trying to eat healthier and eat more fresh foods. Well, that also goes for your four-legged friends. Hi, I'm George Parenti, the lead dog at the Dogs and Cats Rule Stores. If you are not aware of the new generation of fresh food diets available for your four-legged friends, then you are missing out. At Dogs and Cats Rule, we carry a wide-ranging selection of of fresh foods that includes raw, gently cooked, freeze dried, air dried, and baked. To learn more, visit any of our seven locations. Dogs and Cats Rule. Shop small, shop local, shop family. Hey, Clementon. Yeah! We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. WPHT. Okay, we'll do it live! Seven o'clock.
o'clock hour underway here on a Wednesday morning. Kale and Company, Nick Kale, Tony Bruno, Greg Stocker. Dawn is in Italy. She'll be back next week. 7 o'clock hour brought to you by the Piazza Auto Group. Power meets innovative design in the 2024 Acura model lineup. Get special financing, 1.9% APR for 36 months on the new MDX, RDX, and Integra. Visit Piazza Acura of Ardmore, Reading, and Westchester or PiazzaAcura.com. Today, cut sheet coming up 745 this morning. Absolutely loaded with great gems, both audio and video, so we're looking forward uh, to that one. But I do want to get to this story. I thought this was very interesting. And if you missed the first hour, go back and get us on the Odyssey app or on YouTube. Uh, the big take on the distorted reality of crime. The media telling you one thing. The numbers, uh, according to the data, showing a completely different story. As well as the conversation we were just having as a current uh, employee for a quarter century at NPR has come out and nuked NPR as becoming a major, major left-wing outlet. Uh, so that was some good stuff. But this is also a very interesting story, and I think it kind of plays into what we were talking about, Tony Bruno, in the first hour. Uh, Axios with a story saying how America is not nearly as divided as we think, according to some of the data. And they say the following. They say there's compelling evidence that we have been trapped in a reality distortion bubble between social media, cable TV, and tribal political wars. They say, here's a wild thought experiment. What if we've been deceived into thinking we're more divided, dysfunctional, and defeated than we really are? And this, I think, kind of goes back to what Greg talks about a lot of the times where people stay in their little silos and their little bubbles uh, on social media and they only see like-minded thoughts and it reaffirms their beliefs, whether they're right or wrong, but we get kind of comfortable thinking there's only one way to view things. And they say in this story in Axios, and I got to give them credit for pointing out a lot of the misnomers, they say, no, most Christians aren't white Christian nationalists who see Donald Trump as a godlike figure. No, most kids don't hate Israel. I would say some of the Gen Zers that are adults are of that belief, but you know, it's not like young kids are running around chanting from the river to the sea. They say, no, most Republicans don't want to ban all abortions starting at conception. No, most people aren't fighting on X. It turns out the vast majority of Americans never tweet at all, despite having a Twitter account. They just kind of log on and observe. And they say, no, most people aren't cheering insults on Fox News and MSNBC in the evening because it turns out less than 2% of Americans are actually watching Fox News and MSNBC and CNN. So uh, I thought it's very fascinating, and I think it's kind of where we are at politically today. And you mentioned in the first hour how divisive it is, and it is. But I also think now more than ever, politics has kind of bled into every other category of life. Like we hear the political nature of sports, the social issues that bleed into sports, and it seems like even though still to this day, only one side can voice all of their opinions without fear of cancellation, and that being the left. It does seem like politics has become maybe more mainstream than it used to be. Like, it used to be taboo to bring up, or it would be, well, we had a nice conversation, and we got along, and we, we shook hands at the end of the night, and we had a, a couple of beers, and we were talking politics, but we never hated each other. It's kind of interesting how you think about the, where, where politics is in the social media era and ever since Obama and Trump became presidents, compared to how it used to be done back in the day, don't you think? Absolutely. I think the social media thing is, is dead on. That's why that's where people can get on anonymously and just spout whatever they want. Yep. And again, that's the greatness of, of being in America, where you have free speech for the most part. Right. To me, it's about the people in charge and the people in power. Those are the ones who fashion this. And the pandemic, I think, really got us into a situation where we're all sitting at home, nothing to do, worrying about going out, worrying about who to believe, you know, where you're going to die. And I said, I had my, I, I was twice vaccinated, so I still have this card. And I don't know, I'm going to get this laminated because this card's going to go in a museum one day <laughs> when you bring up your COVID-19 vaccination report card. The museum. Uh, if you've been, had more than two vaccinations, do you continue to add it to this papal, car papal card? I want to know. I don't know. After late 2021, early 2022, I I because uh -huh. I only got the first two shots. I threw that Me sucker. Too. I threw that sucker into the fireplace and watched it incinerate. 
But no, see, I have mine and it's documented. See, and it's signed by the doctor. Yeah, Pfizer, yeah. Well, uh, that's FC what I. Yeah, I had that. If I had that as well, I just don't want to keep I think the memory we be alive. Required to, I'm getting a new. Uh, I need a new uh, uh, passport because mine is expiring this year. Ah. I think you got to have one of these and your ID, except to vote. <laughs> but you have to have your vaccine anyway. No, you're right. The pandemic shut everybody down. What did they do? They turned on their TVs when they're sitting at home and they bought whatever was presented to them as information Mm -hmm. when most of it was just opinion. And that's the problem I think we have in this world is that we now do not know. It's a blurred line between opinion and fact. And now it's mostly opinion because most people who are now supposedly journalists don't want to just do the journalism part anymore. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to have an opinion on a story. And that's not the way it used to be. When I started out being a reporter, I reported the facts. I didn't give an opinion on the story I was covering. But nowadays, and especially with people who have been around a long time, you know, like Dan Rather was the godfather of fake news, and now he's back out there on social media like nothing ever happened. And, you know, he's one of the get Trump crowd. Uh, And this is the guy that the younger people, oh, Dan Rather, oh, Dan Rather basically torched his entire career you know, reporting fake news. Mm -hmm. And now because time has passed and he was once a great journalist, people are now jumping on his bandwagon again, and he's grifting people for money to to subscribe to his show. Mm -hmm. So that's the great thing about America. We move on. But some people can't move on, like Hillary Clinton and and other things. Because once these people, they're never the people who are denying facts. They're Mm -hmm. never the people who are denying the results of an election. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's almost like, it's almost like back in the day when there was Superman magazines and then you had Bizarro Superman. Oh, yeah. We're like in the Bizarro Superman era <laughs> of trying to figure out who the good guy is and who the bad guy is. Yep. And everything that we do, everything that we think about has to resolve in some – has to be part of some political belief. Mm-hmm. Not everything is politics. Right. It's right and wrong. Yep. That's what I use to co- guide my conscience. I don't say, gee, what are the stupid Republicans saying today that I have to agree with? <laughs> I don't agree with anything Republicans say. <laughs> but, that, but you have to be, you have to take sides now. Right. You know, you have to I, I get th- on the side here. You got to be on this side or mm-hmm. that side. Right. It, it's it's all about catering to the fringes on both sides. And I I, th- I thought it was fascinating because Axios surveyed about thirteen hundred people at the end of March, and the the options were: is this extremely important to you? very important or somewhat important or not important at all and almost unanimously down the list of the questions and the categories uh the right of everyone to equal protection under the law 91 percent of people said it's extremely important the right yes. to vote 91 percent extremely important 90 percent on freedom of speech 88 percent on right to privacy 84 percent on freedom of religion uh 83 percent right of people to assemble peacefully 77 percent freedom of the press very important and then you get down to like right to keep and bear arms that's where it's more of a coin flip 54 percent said it's very important so we know guns are a very divisive issue left versus right mental health versus you know the the amendments and in the constitution so to me it's it's one of these things where i think by and large and you know what's the perfect example of this is sports you and I did yep. sports for many years. When we go to a Philadelphia Eagles game on a Sunday at the link and it's 65,000 strong, we are almost all in unison and harmony of we just want to see the Eagles beat the stinking Dallas Cowboys. Except for exactly. like the, the 8% of fans in that stadium that are cockroach Cowboy fans from the Delaware Valley. We, all want it, we, all, we, we don't care who's Republican, who's Democrat, who's white, who's black, who's gay, who's straight. For, for 60 minutes and three hours on that Sunday afternoon, we're all just Eagle fans. And I, exactly. I think this is the perfect illustration of that. No, you're absolutely right. And then that's the problem. You know, and then, and then because, because sports have gotten into politics by putting the end zones and racism, you know, I mean, when end, end racism is in the end zones. Most people are like, yeah, we want, we want racism to end. Of course. But why do we need to have that on end zones? Mm-hmm. Because it's the, it's the corporate world that has this guilt of thinking that, you know, racism is still s- such a big problem in this country that people can't walk down the streets anymore. They can't get the right to vote. This whole thing about we have to open satellite voting facilities in Philadelphia because people have been pre- prevented from having the ability to vote or get an ID. I mean, what what generation? What, what year is this? Mm-hmm. Who doesn't have an ID? And they have to have that argument every election about, you know, we, we're disenfranchising people. They have no way to get to vote. 
Seriously? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, who believes that anymore? Oh, I, I who don't believe. I, I think most people don't. I, I remember reading this during the pandemic. This was probably 2021 or maybe 2022. Uh, it was before I moved back up here. And there was a couple of polls out. And I remember one specifically, the Gallup poll. And I think they said the, the, the framing of the question was prior to 2020 with COVID and George Floyd. How would you say race relations were in the United States of America? And 70, I think it was 72 or 78 percent of Americans said race relations were pretty darn good. And then, of course, George Floyd happens in late May of 2020. Democrats seize the opportunity to say we've got this race of di- racist, divisive America. Uh, cops are the devil. Uh, and they, they, they run on that. They get elected. And I think we have seen now what the experiment results in. The defund the police movement has been an epic failure. And a lot of these cities, you know, Portland, Oregon, they just did a 180 and a complete pivot now. And they're like, you know what? After further thought and further review, decriminalizing drugs was a bad idea. It's so bad that the junkies on the street are saying in interviews, yeah, the politicians probably shouldn't have done that. It didn't age well, Tony Bruno. No, you're absolutely right. And that's the thing. If you just just use common sense and look at a story, each individual story, if it bothers you, just look at it and say, okay, does this make sense? There was just a vote in California on, on on a proposal, on a law to actually punish people who are bringing fentanyl into the country, who are part of a cartel, and to have those people deported. And that vote, they, it was voted down in California. It's insanity. Voted down a proposal to keep, to, to, for all of these, and, and the bottom line is, on all of this fentanyl coming into the country, it's coming in primarily from Honduras gangs yep. who are making their way into San Francisco because they know once they get into San Francisco, they can sell fentanyl openly on the streets of San Francisco. And so if you're going to vote against the law to capture these people and then deport them, how, how, do, you, how do you stand for justice? I know. You don't, these, this, these drugs are killing people every day. There's people walking on the streets of every city in this country like zombies, mm-hmm. and now we have legislators who are afraid to have these people arrested for selling fentanyl on the streets. Yeah. It's just incomprehensible. It is. We've uh, speaking of zombies, we we experience it here in Philadelphia in Kensington, yeah. right in the open air drug markets with Trank. I mean, you got people not even walking because they've got these massive open wounds. They're just laying on the sidewalk and on the curb like 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 they're ready to be, you know, move on to the next lifetime. And what do we And that's the thing that's so frustrating is if they wanted to clean up Kensington and get all the drugs off the street, get these people the help they need and try to rehabilitate them, they could do it. They could do it. We've seen how quickly Democrats can sanitize a scene. LA yep. 3 years ago for the Super Bowl, they shipped out the homeless. SoFi Stadium looked gorgeous. And then at the southern border earlier this year, they cleaned up all the homeless camps and the tent camps in El Paso and uh, also um there was another, uh, I forget what, uh, what the other border city in Texas was, because there was uh, Eagle politicians. Pass was one of the Eagle Pass Eagle was Pass. the biggest one. Well, yeah. they cl- and they cleaned up San Francisco for yeah. Xi when he met with Gavin Newsom a couple of months ago. No, you're right. And then the, the, the one story that's a recent story, which well, was hit close to home for me, because when I lived in South Philly, when I had the home there, and I still have a home there, my mother's house on the same street where I lived, that they were trying to put this lethal uh, legal injection site at Broad and Mifflin there, the site of the old St. Agnes Hospital at Broad and, Broad and, uh, Broad and Mifflin, exactly. And uh, Lisa Lasloff, that South Philly mom, she was one of the people that went. I was in New York during that period, and they protested right at Broad and Mifflin, not wanting a legal injection site in their neighborhood. And Ed Rendell and a bunch of the local politicos decided to go in there and just say, we're going to bring this illegal, lethal injection site here to South Philly. And luckily, the, the neighborhood rose up, and now and they stopped it right away. And by the way, just recently, there was a court decision saying that that cannot happen at that location in South Philly. Mm-hmm. So they took it to court. The city took it to court after the neighborhood rose up and said, we don't want that in our in our neighborhood because it will encourage people to come to South Philly, sit outside of the center, get their legal illegal drugs, and then do them inside and then come from all over the place to sit there and shoot up right on the right at the corner of the street right. where there's a lot of children going to school. So that had to go to court and now the judges have ruled against the people who are promoting this 
to be in different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Now, you could say, well, not in my neighborhood. But guess what? People don't want that in their neighborhoods. Right. And people who pay taxes in these neighborhoods should have the right to speak out peacefully, which they did. And that's what that's what that's what evokes change. Mm -hmm. You know, going into the uh, congressional going into the congressional cafeteria. That's not an insurrection, right? <laughs> Yesterday, did you see all those people walking in there? You don't eat if they don't eat in Gaza. Well, it depends. That's a peaceful Tony. protest. It's that's only, a peaceful protest too. Yeah, it's that only didn't it, solve anything. It's only an insurrection if Republicans do that. If Democrats do it, they're allowed to get away with murder, and then eventually the cops will come in and arrest you after you've worn off your energy for an hour. Eight five five eight three nine twelve ten. If you want to jump in, cut sheet in about thirty minutes. That's coming up at seven forty five. I love we, the cut sheet. I haven't been involved in a cut oh, sheet in a long, long time. Wait, do you see this? Stalker's like Beethoven. He's like the maestro of the symphony. He's just up there conducting, baby, for like an hour Even straight. Kevin Poles is tweeting in now. Kevin Poles saying, you mentioned Nick Hale. Did you mention Stalker? Yeah. Did you mention Phil? Yeah. Did you mention Sorry. Dorenzo in the yeah. back? Yeah. We yeah. only mention them in the back when they screw up. <laughs> That's the way this works. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin Poles. 855-839-1210 if you want to jump in. Coming up next, we know America's got an Internet addiction. But two days ago, the Internet slowed down. We now know where the threshold is to get you off of your stinking social media and your devices. And, oh, by the way, I agree with Sir Charles. We'll get to that when we continue. On the other side, Nick Kale, Tony Bruno, Greg Stocker, Dawn is in Italy. She'll be back next week. It's Kale and Company, Wednesday morning, and we're back after this. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family-owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full-service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully, and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Just visit kitchenmagic.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. Now, your Live Nation lineup. Don't miss these upcoming shows. See Willie Nelson's 4th of July picnic with Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, and Alison Krauss, and many more at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion July 4th. Plus, see Neil Young on May 12th at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. And Santana and Counting Crows on June 21st at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. Don't forget Willie Nelson's 4th of July picnic, Neil Young, and Santana and Counting Crows. For tickets and info, go to LiveNation.com. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. But I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols, and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Scheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 215-999-3000. That's 215-999-3000. 215-999-3000. There's breaking news all day long from around the world, and sometimes all that noise makes it hard to hear about what's happening right here at home. With the free Odyssey app, getting your local news plus breaking news is easy. And even when you're not near a radio, stay connected with what's going on right here by listening live and push alerts. Just download the free Odyssey app and search and follow your local news station and you're good to go. The local breaking news to get you through your day at your fingertips on the free Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. 
Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. No place I'd rather be on a Wednesday morning at 721 than chopping it up here with Tony Bruno. It's what we do. Chop it up. We break it down. Question the answers and answer the questions, as one famous sports radio host once said many years ago. I think that was you, Tony Bruno. I think I just pilfered that from you. Now we question answers more than ever before. That's right. And the politicians like it because misinformation and disinformation are political people's friends. 855-839-1210, the phone number. All right, so Charles Barkley, it's not often I agree with him. Uh, He rips people for getting too excited for the eclipse, saying they are losers. Uh, Let's play this clip, and I want to get your thoughts on the – because one of the things that you were always great at, Tony Bruno, is when there were big things going on in the world, whether it's like an earthquake or a natural disaster, an eclipse, you would always break in and get away from sports and go through these – major uh, developments in the real world that matter far more than anything in sports or news. Uh, I'm going to get your thoughts on Monday, but first, uh, let's hear from Charles Barkley. I try to be fair and balanced, just like Fox News, and when I agree with the CNN host, we play it. Here's Charles Barkley ripping Eclipse lovers. Uh, I thought it was... I, th- I thought I was watching it, and I thought it was maybe the Chuck Blimp that got in the way. Hey, I... I... Well, y'all, some of them losers standing outside watching that today. They're not losers. Yes, they are. It, no, it doesn't just, happen often. Hey, time. we've all seen darkness before. Stop it. No, <laughs> not, not in the daylight. Yeah, it's, yeah. Come on, man. Come on, <laughs> Chuckster. I didn't hate on the eclipse. Come on, Yo, stop listen, it. I saw a loser standing watching your blimp. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> they were outside. Have you seen Chuck's blimp? That's what I've so you're, so you're not a fan. You're not a fan uh, of the Well, I'm not going to sit outside like an idiot and wait on the darkness. Did you not wait I on your wait blimp? Till, I could have waited. It's going to be dark when we go outside. Can, can I ask you a second? Did you ask your family to wait on your blimp outside? I was trying to get my grandson to watch. See, there it is. So what are you talking about? Hey, the eclipse going to happen again. I ain't going to ever have another blimp. <laughs> Boy, this was a That's very... That's a good thing. This was a very worthwhile segment. Uh, let's go over to... Uh, this Hi, was a very is. worthwhile segment. Thank you very much, Earth, Ernie. Earth. Guys get stealing money, but I love Ernie Johnson. No, Tony, I embrace the darkness every day during daylight time because I take a nap right around noon and I close my blinds, baby. Your thoughts on the eclipse that disappointed many people in Pennsylvania? Well, you know, I was way, I didn't know what time it was going to happen, so I went outside too. But I got my welding mask, I got three of my paper masks for my face. <laughs> then I had the welding helmet on. I had my uh, vax card, ID card out there that I was double vaxxed. So I was completely protected for the eclipse. But it wasn't really a big deal down here. You know, it was just the sun was out. I looked up and I said, okay, it didn't get dark here at all. So mm-hmm. it was a failure here in Southwest Florida. But then I went out and then went to the pool and took my shirt off and got a little tan and worked on my tan. That a boy. And that the sun would still be out there. There you go. It never really got, it didn't get dark at all. Robin was out there too. Did it I get did, dark? I tried, No, it didn't get dark at all. I, I think that the only places where you had a full on eclipse, where, the, where it was blacked out, mm-hmm. that might be interesting to see. But the hysteria. Mm hmm. Like, people were crying. Oh, I know. On, you know I mean, it's just insane. Like, we, really? We yeah. played, a, we played yep. a clip yesterday of the CNN uh, uh, news anchors dressed oh, up yeah, as I saw that. the sun. <laughs> and I, 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 like, it's just, it's ridiculous. It, it's it, absolutely ridiculous. It was, such, it was such a big deal because we know nobody can put down their phones these days and get off the exactly. internet. They can't get off social media or whatever favorite app they have. Now, they might have been on their phones taking pictures but it it takes a lot for people to get away from the internet and the You're new right. york the new york times has a story about how this media company called cloudflare is a cloud computing service and it's used by about 20% of websites globally 
and they reported a major dip in internet traffic along the path of totality Amen. to the point where there was 40 to 60 percent less users on the internet during the eclipse path of that four minute stretch and greg stalker as a man who despises social media wants everybody yep. off social media yep. it took an eclipse to get people to finally shut it down amen to that exactly. Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, it's a, to me, uh, the, the path of totality, I saw them opening up for these uh, sex-depraved uh, cicadas that are coming out, except on the view, they didn't know uh, that there were cicadas. They were calling him Cicada, the great John Cicada. Really. John Potato, Cicada, Potato, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember him? Yep, of Love course. John Cicada. Yep. Tomato, now, no tomato. No relation to the, to the sexual deranged uh, cicada, cicadas that are coming up next. Uh -huh. So get ready for that next are we going to have Cicada Watch 2024? Oh, CNN, they're all going to dress up as cicadas. <laughs> they're going to go wall-to-wall -wall cicada wall -to -wall coverage. Wall-to-wall cicada coverage. <laughs> Do not deviate from the cicadas. Yep. Let's get it back to the cicadas. 855-839-1210, the number. Uh, internet traffic in New York City dropped by 29% compared to the previous week. Also in Philadelphia, internet traffic was down 27% compared to the prior week. And Nashville, Tennessee, where my daughters and wife are, internet traffic dipped by 57% wow. for the wow. entire 2 p.m. Central hour because the eclipse was 3.23 p.m. Eastern, 2.23 p.m. Central time. And it was so bad, Tony, that because my in-laws are down there visiting my wife and, and uh, their granddaughters, my wife said, hey, are, are you okay if uh, Nana and Pop-Pop come and pick them up out of school at 1130 and get them out of school early so they can watch the eclipse? And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I'm not into it. But if you if, if you think it's worth it, go ahead. Knock yourself out. And, and Kristen went out and ordered the special glasses from Amazon. She bought like an eight pack of them for like 20 bucks. And then they were all disappointed. My daughters called me all ticked off on FaceTime saying that it was a total nothing burger. It was. I mean, yeah. that's anything to get you off the Internet, I agree with. Yeah. But I was out just washing the bilge in my boat uh, floating in the backyard <laughs> while I was out there. I said, let me go out there and put down the bilge and then see what happens. Check out and that bilge. Up and I, yeah, you got to check the bilge. I gotta it's a big the, bilge you know, you gotta there. You got to clean it up. Make sure there's no oil in the bilge. Yep. No, I was outside. And again, you know, uh, the thing about the, the world we live in now is – you know, how many how many eclipses have there been in our lifetime? They make everything out to be something that you'll never see in another hundred years. Mm -hmm. And then two years later, there'll be another one. Yep. I mean, so it's, 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 it's all about everybody has to be into this mindset of, I don't want to miss what I'm being told that I can't miss and I shouldn't look at because I'm going to be blind if I do. So I got to go out and buy these stupid glasses. By the way, did you see Sheila Jackson Lee trying to put the glasses on yesterday? <laughs> oh, no. it was amazing. Oh, I did not. Oh, yeah, it was God. amazing. It, it was fantastic. Oh, my God. Like, uh, she, I think she, it was the gases from that. She was too close to the sun, yep. but not close enough to the planet moon. It's true. Did you know the moon was a planet? Yeah, I did know that, yeah. Yep, <laughs> yep, I did know that. And the gases. Did you, there, there were so many people also that, that made vacation plans to oh, go yeah. to yep. the full eclipse location. Oh, jeez. Yes. Yeah, Bar Barkley's right. You're a loser. Why would you do that? You're going to waste all that money for four minutes, and there's a chance that it could totally disappoint you like it did for many? Oh my God! The worst part is in New York, where they were hoping to have more than four minutes of darkness so they can commit commit crimes on the subway and it's start true. knocking people out on the streets. Yeah, true. Exactly Those right. were the people that were really disappointed. Exactly. All right, cut sheets coming up at seven forty-five. When we come back, one of the most historic games of all time gets woke. It's Kale and Company, Nick, Tony, and Stalker live here on this Wednesday morning. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. You can bet the NBA with a no sweat. Same game parlay from FanDuel in partnership with Valley Forge Casino every Thursday with TNT Thursdays. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. You'll get bonus bets back if your same game parlay doesn't win on any NBA on TNT game. NBA same game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score an even bigger payday. You can combine all kinds of things. Spreads, money lines, over unders. You can do player prop parlays. Player prop parlays. Will Joel Embiid score over 20 points like he did last night? However, you want to play, just head to fanduel.com slash Greg, fanduel.com slash Greg to bet the NBA with a no sweat same game parlay with TNT Thursdays. 
Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, and is the official partner of 1210 WPHT, so you know you're in good hands. 21 and over, President PA. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms of sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Turnersville Jeep.com is your zero down Jeep and Ram headquarters. Come into Turnersville and get up to 20% off select Jeeps and Rams. That equates to over 18,000 in savings on select models. We have over 300 vehicles available for immediate delivery. Turnersville Jeep.com, located on Route 42 in Turnersville. Drive a little, save a lot at Turnersville Jeep.com. That's Turnersville Jeep.com. LS Solutions, Inc. in Princeton, New Jersey, seeks the following positions. Compliance business analysts. Gather business requirements and translate them into functional and non-functional specifications. Compliance and or validation analysts. FDA GMP. Validate laboratory manufacturing equipment and processes. Software validation engineers. Develop validation plans to ensure compliance with FDA regulations and company policies for IT systems. Validation engineers. Perform validation activities for pharmaceutical systems and equipment in various computing environments. Environments. No travel, no telecommuting, job duties are project-based and performed on long-term assignments at various unanticipated sites within U.S. May require relocation at the end of each project. Email resumes to hr at ls-sol.com and reference job title. Again, LS Solutions, Inc. in Princeton, New Jersey seeks the following positions. Compliance business analysts, software validation engineers, validation engineers. Email resumes to hr at ls-sol.com and reference job title. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. If you're dealing with inflammation or stiff joints, then Glyco Plus from Rescue Natural Supplements can be your ticket to a healthier spring. Glyco Plus features a unique blend of green-lipped muscle complex and UC2 collagen, specifically designed to support joint health. Collagen, a vital component of joint cartilage, plays a crucial role in maintaining strength and flexibility. And right now, Rescue Glyco Plus is buy one, get one free for anyone with our exclusive radio code. Just use the code RELIEF to double up your order for free. Again, that's R-E-L-I-E-F. Call them today at 800-26-LIVE, 800-262-5483. Speak to a knowledgeable rescue product consultant. You can also use the code online when you visit res-q.com, res-q.com. Get back into action with less pain and more comfort. Again, use the code RELIEF. Buy one, get one free on Rescue Glyco Plus. It's a Joe Conklin Comedy Show fundraiser at the Church of the Incarnation in Mantua, New Jersey. We're raising money to send altar server Christina McNasby to the shrine at Lourdes in France. She's such an inspiration to everyone in the parish. But when I hear her story and, and when I hear about all the surgeries that she went through, and my heart really goes out for her. This is why we're going to send her over to Lourdes, because we're hoping for a miracle. The Benefit Comedy Show for Christina McNasby, Saturday, April 20th. Get tickets at JoeConklin.com. JoeConklin.com! <laughs> I'm Philomena, founder of Kin Apparel here in Philly. I love my natural hair, but not what hoodies and hats were doing to it. So I made my own satin line hoodies and created a business in the process. I've got big dreams and Chase for Business in Philly was like, all right, how do we get you there? Get financial guidance from bankers in your community and convenient digital tools all in one place. Learn more at chaseforbusiness.com. Make more of what's yours. Real customers compensated. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member of FDIC. Hey, this is Norman Chaikin, also known as Norman the Floorman from Norman Carpet. Hey, it's my wife's birthday tomorrow. She's been leaving jewelry catalogs all over the house. So for her birthday, I'm going to buy her a magazine rack. Whether you need carpet, LVT, hardwood, tile, or area rugs for your residential or commercial project, we've got you covered. Savings up to 50%, and that ain't chop liver. Visit us in Bryn Mawr, Conchahokan, or call us at 800-220-RUGS for your home or business, and we'll bring the store to your door. Don't miss the Labor and Energy Show with J. Doc and Krause, brought to you by Advocacy United, this Saturday night at 6. Find out about the important issues that will affect you. The Labor and Energy Show, Saturday night at 6 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Are you still holding on to that winter weight? Time to shed that fat and get ready for the warmer weather of spring with NJ Diet. For over a decade, they've helped thousands of people lose a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days. That's nearly twice as fast as weight loss injections and without any of those nasty side effects. 
NJ Diet uses your hair and saliva along with scans to personalize natural solutions and supplements to get you to shed that fat quickly. Then NJ Diet uses your DNA info to help you keep the weight off. You are fully supervised the entire time to make sure you are burning fat and not just losing water. And you even get the doctor's personal email and phone number. Locations in King of Prussia, Cherry Hill and Newark, Delaware, or available from home with live online consultations. Call 855-5-NJ-DIET. 855-5-NJ-DIET. Or schedule your consult today at njdiet.com. Get slimmer before this summer with njdiet.com. Rich Zioli this afternoon, 3 till 7. Hailing Company now on Talk Radio 1210, WPHD, and the free Odyssey app. I am woke, and I love it. Kaling Company, 736. Tony Bruno in for Dawn this morning. Even Scrabble can't avoid the woke virus. We'll get to that in just a moment. Cut sheet coming up 745 this morning. Also after the cut sheet, TV networks urging the big guy, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, to debate. We'll get to that story. And also two very interesting stories in the world of politics and also females the arizona supreme court uh rules that a near total abortion ban from 1864 is still enforceable we'll get to that story coming up and also locally uh the atlantic with a story in bucks county about how women in bucks county the third largest county in the state of pennsylvania are not enamored with either option but they are intrigued by robert f kennedy jr ah I think it's mostly because he's pretty ripped for a 70-year-old. Are you saying that women are just going to vote for him? I do. I do. I do. You shallow women out there. Listen, my popularity is based on appearance as well. It's true. Yeah, not your great radio voice or 45, 50 years of legendary service. (laughs) But yeah, just your looks, By the way, Secret Squirrel on the chat says, our radio host today looked like the Odyssey Night Janitorial Crew. Well, I do. I do that from time to time. Yes. Yes, that's true. We are all wearing black today. Yes. That is a good observation. Yeah, you all got the memo. Yeah. Oh, are we mourning something? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Soccer's got the hoodie on. Bruno's got... What is that shirt you got on, by the way? That's a pretty good-looking shirt. This one right here? Yeah, man. This is uh, this is actually... Uh, this was given to me by Bert Kreischer, the machine. Oh, uh, nice. Remember, he was in China, He was in Russia. Yep. And you know the whole Burke Kreischer. So he gave this. This is the Burke Kreischer, the machine. Nice. Wow. I'm not a communist sympathizer because it does have the uh, the sickle and the uh, a- axe in there. <laughs> so that's what that is. Goes well with the purple eyeglasses, by the way, Bruno. Absolutely. Good Thank luck, you. man. It's really popping it's... on YouTube today. Thank you. I got to try job. to make it pop. You got to yeah. you got to have you know you got to be hip and that, trendy. That's right. That's what I am. Here. That's One right. Of the cool kids. You appeal to Gen Z. So let's get to this story. <laughs> Speaking of Gen Z, hey, this is I, I can't believe this. Yeah, I think we all grew up. Uh, you know, our parents or grandparents. You, you'd have like a little family board game night back in the day before the internet and before social media, uh, before satellite TV, when your entertainment options were a little more limited. And I remember vividly as a seven or an eight year old. It's 1991, 1992. And and I remember playing Scrabble with my grandmother, actually both of my grandmothers. And, you know, you grow up, you play Scrabble, you play Monopoly, uh, whatever it might be, Candyland, all these games. But now, in an effort to appeal to Gen Z, this story courtesy of the New York Post, Scrabble is making a historic change to the game where they are going to make it less competitive but more inclusive. And that will be the new version to appeal to Gen Z. For the first time in 75 years, Mattel, the maker of the game, is making a major change to the iconic board game Scrabble. And they are touting a no more scoring gameplay option. The new launch is a double-sided version of the famous board game. One side where you can play the original version, and for those that want to stick to the long-time traditional version, and then you can flip it around to the other side with a less competitive, more inclusive version that appeals to Gen Z gamers. And they're saying this, Tony. The flip side of the classic game called Scrabble Together will include helper cards, use a simpler scoring system, 
be quicker to play because we know Gen Z has the attention oh, yeah. span of a fruit fly and allow people to play in teams, Tony Bruno. I don't know about you, but I haven't played Scrabble probably in 25 years. I would like to go back to the glory days when Scrabble was not woke. But this is where we are in a society, Tony. We have to make everything easier and less competitive. I don't even care about the word inclusive. It's a board game. Well, how, how is a board game exclusive or inclusive? You're for playing God's against sense. people. You're right. trying to show people that you're smarter than them. Yes. So now if you're smarter than someone and you can figure out word values and win, the other people who don't figure out word values, what do they do? They say, oh, well, you know, we, we would have gotten that if we were able to pay attention for more than – I mean, how could you play Monopoly when you used to play all night right. until somebody had all the damn money? Yes. What are they going to do, change Monopoly now where you basically give up and squat on somebody's property? <laughs> if somebody gets like – somebody gets the expensive properties, you squat on it. Board so game they squatters. Get, they can't pass go and collect another $500. Hey, hey Tony, I am going to squat on Park Place, and you will not evict me. You will not file a lawsuit, <laughs> and I'm going to put up houses and hotels. The little greenhouses and the red railroads. Ones. I'm going to go on the Reading Railroad, and what's the other railroad? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to take over the railroads, and then we can build the Boulevard Subway, which <laughs> nobody has wanted for the last 100 years in Philadelphia. But now there's some guy called the Roosevelt Boulevard Subway who's pimping <laughs> a subway in the Northeast where nobody lives anymore. Oh, uh, dude! Speaking of Monopoly, there was nothing better than back in the day when you're playing that game and you would own like an entire street. Like I yeah. would try to get Boardwalk and Park Place. With which were the blues, and then the greens. I think it was Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and, and something else, Avenue. I'd own the whole street. When my mom would come around, like, you're coming around Death Corner, Mom. I'm going to tax the hell out of you. It's coming. And we would have exactly, all those right. battles back in the day. So I, I mean, every game, there should be no winners in any game. You, well, I mean, when you play Jenga, if you knock the thing over, Jenga. I think you should win. Jenga was a great game. I think the person that goes yeah. up there and just goes, bam, <laughs> smashes the whole thing down. They should be declared the winner. Tom Walsh on the YouTube uh, <laughs> chat room says that it's the new Squatopoly. Squatopoly. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking this over. I'm taking this building and go. I'm taking this building over. I own it now. They they say in this story, the makers of Scrabble found that younger people, Gen Z people, don't quite like the competitive nature oh, of Scrabble. Oh, see, yeah, I see, this is where this is where I, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Last week I gave Gen Z credit. There was this Wall Street Journal story about how Gen Z is becoming the tool belt generation. They're ditching college, they're going to trade school, they're in demand, they're making good money. Money. They're not in debt. I tip my cap to Gen Z. I said, it's a smart move by you. Why come out of school with a four-year degree, 80 grand in debt? You could be a welder in 18 months and make 100 grand. Smart move. But now Gen Z, they don't like competition. That That's this world we live in now, Tony, where we no longer elevate people based on merit. We just let you in because, well, you are above average, and we want to make sure that you feel like you're part of the team as well. I thought that ended when you were seven years old with participation trophies. I know. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, seriously, what games? You can't play Naked Twister anymore when you grow up? I mean, come Na on. Naked Twister? Yeah. 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 You, you never did that? You never on. played Naked Twister? If you play it right, both people win. <laughs> <laughs> do you like that? Yes, we do, yeah. Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Nice work out of Robin. We might have to put that one on the board. Jim, if you're listening, Jim, if, Jim, if, if our buddy Jim the floater is listening, we're going to need Jim to get that on the board stat today. All right. 745 right on the dot. Let's get to a Wednesday edition of What's on the Cut Sheet. What's on the Cut Sheet? What's on the cut sheet on this Wednesday is brought to you by Cherry Hill Volvo, where they have incredible offers for spring. Choose Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. Cherry Hill Volvo is where relationships really do matter. Judith Yosef and the entire team look forward to meeting you. Check them out on Route 70 in Cherry Hill, Cherry Hill Volvo, where relationships matter. Philip, I'm going to start with cut four here. Uh, we've been teasing this all morning. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. Oh, boy. Uh, speaking in, I believe this was some high school or something like that. He, she was on a track, <laughs> and uh, she was talking about uh, the eclipse, the sun, the moon, and I, I in my opinion, um, she's like that kid who gets up in front of the class 
and doesn't really know, hasn't studied, mm -hmm. doesn't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. So kind of just says the same words over and over again and makes things up. Just trying to wing it as if she read exactly. the book. Exactly. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee explaining to us about the sun and the moon and how the moon is more manageable. Because, you know, manageable. <laughs> What, what manageable? What's the moon? A radio talent? Cut four, Phil. Go. Provide unique light and energy so that you have the energy of the moon at night. And sometimes you've heard the word full moon. And sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle, mm. which is made up mostly of gases. Gases. Ah. And that's why the question, the question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon yeah are uh, the gas is such that we could do that yep <laughs> the sun is a mighty powerful heat mighty powerful it is almost impossible to go near the sun right. almost right the moon almost. is more manageable and right. you will see uh in a moment or not a moment not you'll a moment. see in a couple of years a couple of years that nasa <laughs> is going back to the moon yeah no. no. Wow. We landed on the moon. What is Wait, happening? How will we survive if it's all gases? And by the way, I did the other day as well, uh, before I went out to look at the eclipse, yeah. I realized that the sun is 93 million miles away, so I made sure I backed up a couple of more feet <laughs> so I wouldn't be as close to the sun true. as I would have been if I had not taken those social distancing uh, precautions yep. before I looked social up the eclipse. Distancing. Yeah. It's, it, it's almost impossible to yeah. go near the sun. Almost. So if you're taking notes and getting ready to prepare for the quiz at Ooh. the end of that lecture, the moon is a circle, it's round, and the, we, we're not, we, we can't get real close to the sun because it's hot. Yep. So think about that. You're 93 million miles away. You would think, yep. you know what, you probably shouldn't be sunburned and hot and sweaty, but that's why they created sunscreen. Boy, Sheila Jackson, what a doozy. I want to play. And then she walked yeah. it. Then yesterday she went off because everybody was trashing her. Oh, I misspoke. She misspoke. she misspoke. Her whole speech was wrong. Wait, hang on, hang on. Let me let me play it again. Phil, uh, rewind the tape, if you will, again, my friend. Yes. Let's play cut four one more time just to see if she misspoke or if she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Cut four, uh, Philip, go. Provide unique light and energy so that you have the energy of the moon at night. Yep. Right. And sometimes you've heard the word full moon. Yep. Sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle, <laughs> which is made up mostly of gases. Right. And that's why the question, the question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon? Yeah. Right. Uh, the gas is such that we could do that. No, oh, the gases are such that we can do that. The sun is a mighty powerful heat. Mighty powerful. Yeah. And it's Very almost powerful. impossible. Almost. To go near the sun. Yeah. The moon is more manageable. And you will see uh, in a moment, or not a moment, you'll see in a couple of years yep. that NASA is going back to the moon. Yep. You know, yes. Tony Bruno, after wow. further review, forget age restrictions on politicians. <laughs> you know, 35 to be president or putting an age cap maximum on our elected officials. There should be a basic IQ test. I think it was Vivek yes. Ramaswamy who said you should have to pass a basic civics test. Was it to run for office or to vote? I forget which one he said, but he was basically maybe saying. Maybe both. Yeah, both. maybe yeah. both. <laughs> both would be good. I can, I but can. I mean, yeah. she, she wait, can wait, 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 wait a minute now. Sid Weiss says, you know, you can go to the sun, you just have to land at night. So if you go to the sun and you land at night, you're totally safe. It's true. She never got into Uranus, but she oh, was trying oh, to put oh, the glasses oh, oh. on. Did you see where she was trying to put the glasses on to look up the yeah. video? Yeah. It gets better. And then she goes out afterwards and says, I misspoke. If you people were worried more about what's going on and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. He gets a run for the money with uh, Representative Hank Johnson. Oh, yes. That Guam was going to flip over. If too many people, people on, on one side, side of Guam. Flip, flip over. over. <laughs> <laughs> you think Sheila Jackson Lee knows that the moon is not technically a planet? Or does she actually think the moon is a planet? Well, it's made up of mostly gases. What exactly are mostly gases? Uh, I think that's mo the, the contents Swalwell. of Chris Christie. <laughs> mostly gases, Eric Swalwell? Chris Christie's stomach. Exactly. Oh, God. The view isn't that oh, mostly yes, gases. It yeah, is. It's a lot of hot air tone. Oh my god! <laughs> these these are the people that we elect to represent us. Mm -hmm. I know. 
bad man. And, you know, yeah. she just recently lost the bid to become the mayor of Houston. So even the people in Houston realized that she was too dumb to run that yeah. city. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Yep. Listen, you know, there's a lot of people in Congress and in powerful positions of government that are as dumb as her. So we, we, don't, like, we don't want to single her out, but she took, you know, she basically is the leader in the clubhouse. Oh, Tony, she it back to the masters. She makes right it. Now, <laughs> 2024, we're April, right? We're April 10th. Yep. She now is the leader in the clubhouse for the dumbest comment of the year. She makes AOC look like a Rhodes Scholar, Tony. True. She absolutely does. She absolutely does. <laughs> Uh, let's go over to the world of uh, sports media, shall we? Mm-hmm. I, I love sports media. I picked yeah. this just for. Uh, Are you implying that the two of us used Tony to do this Bruno, in a different walk yeah. of life? Uh, Jamel Hill was on the Dan Lebetard show mm-hmm. on what's this ESPN? Uh, Lebetard used to be on ESPN. No, I think no, it's he's just on you- his own company. Yeah, okay. it's just what well, like a YouTube show. Uh, Metal Lark Media. Yeah. yeah, we played the clip the other day of uh, The Rock uh, basically saying that he won't endorse Biden and he's going right. to keep his political leanings uh, between him and the ballot box. I believe is what he said. Mm-hmm. Jamel Hill says that The Rock uh, displayed cowardice on announcing that he won't endorse Joe Biden. Uh, This is cut one, Phil Go. Dwayne Johnson regrets endorsing Joe Biden for president in 2020 because, quote, what that caused was something that tears me up in my guts, which is division. It caused an incredible amount of division. I realize now going into this election, I will not do that. My goal is to bring this country together. I believe in that. There will be no endorsement at this level of influence. I will keep my politics to myself. It's between me and the ballot box. But I will tell you this, like a lot of us out there, not trusting of all politicians, I do trust the American people and whoever they vote for. That is my president and who I will support 100 percent. Your thoughts. That is the most statement, non-statement I've ever heard. And I, I love Dwayne Johnson. Like, you know, during my time at ESPN, if you ask people the number one person who they felt like when they did the car wash was like the best person that came through there in terms of like how they interacted with people, how nice they were, it was easily uh, the rock or number two would be Kevin Hart. And that's the kind of, frankly, political cowardice that's hard to respect. I don't understand how Joe Biden is the divisive one when what he's running against is pushing bigotry, uh, xenophobia, uh, every other phobia and ism you could possibly name. That is what they're literally campaigning on. Joe Biden is not campaigning on those same things. And so I don't even understand how Joe Biden got attacked for being the one who's dividing people. Um, If he wants to stop the division, then he shouldn't at all make it seem like he is aligned with the side that is pushing only division. That's their entire agenda. They have no policy on the entire thing that they have is to get you to hate somebody else that you perceive is lower on the totem pole than you. And so even though he said he was going to keep his his ballot to himself, he actually didn't because there's only one other person who will be the presidential nominee. So unless you plan to write in yourself um, or plan to vote for Donald Trump, You've made your decision that you are voting for xenophobia and, and uh-huh. bigotry mm-hmm. yeah. and uh-huh. all these other things that you claim to stand against. So I just thought that wasn't his best moment. And it was so unnecessary, too, because I don't know. I wasn't going around wondering who The Rock was voting for. So I don't know why he just decided he needed to share that. OK, so the, she's okay. she's so uninformed. Uh, a yeah. couple of things. First of all, I think she is the the modern day female Al Sharpton. She is carved out a niche as a race hustler and you know whatever if i I disagree with almost everything she says but if she's making money on it got you know god bless her uh but first of all she he was the rock was on fox news with will kane So, so he was asked about that and he's on a political news channel secondly just because he's not going to come out and publicly endorse joe biden doesn't mean he's voting for donald trump he could still exactly. vote for Biden and just not say it because he knows that Biden's a failure and he'll get ripped for saying it. He's damned if he do, it damned if he doesn't. But here's the thing. This is where I agree with Jamel Hill, and I try to be consistent. I have been saying for five days now, six days on this show, that I'm tired of people like The Rock, um, Michael Rappaport, uh, 50 Cent, or any of these other people that have voted Biden, and now they're saying, like Michael Rappaport every week, Trump voting for Trump's on the table. It's on the table. Okay, well then then go ahead and do it. Like same thing with The Rock. The Rock's the biggest draw in Hollywood. Is he going to is he going to get like shunned by Hollywood? He's above cancel culture. He could come exactly. out and vote for exactly. Trump and say it 
and he'll take pushback, but nobody's going to cancel The Rock. So I actually do agree with Jamel Hill in the in the context of it is a bit cowardly. Like, if you're off of the Biden train and you want to get back on the Trump train, don't pussyfoot around it. Don't beat around the bush. Come out and own it. This is the United States of America. You can vote for Trump and say it, and there's nothing wrong in doing so. Listen, listen, Jamel Hill has won. She has a deck of cards. All 52 are the race cards. That's correct. That's all she has. Yep. And now Dan Lebetard, God bless him, he's a friend. He puts her on every day because every day something else is racist. First, it was Caitlin Clark was too white. And then, of course, it's now uh, because the Yukon men and the Yukon women and the teams of Iowa, these teams have too many white people on them. So she is the absolute. She is the face of the race card right mm-hmm. now. Even yeah. though she works at the Atlantic and nobody knows where she is, Dan Lebetard gives her a platform, and that's his right. He gives her a platform to come on and denounce anybody that doesn't uh, tote. You talk about NPR. Yeah. She makes NPR look uh, for right wing. She could be the brand manager of NPR if they have a posting exactly. and a hiring. <laughs> I mean, the Rock was – Will Kane was at – it, it, at Lincoln Financial Field, yep. where The Rock was getting ready for the WrestleMania that you were all over all weekend, Nick. I mean, I was living vicariously through you and your Twitter feed. <laughs> I was living vicariously through The Rock. <laughs> stuff. And I told you last Wednesday on this show yep. that, that Jason Kelsey would absolutely positively make yep. an appearance you did, you did call at that. WrestleMania. Yep. Yeah, you did. That was the lock of the year. If you could bet on that, I would have been rich and I would have retired. <laughs> and you wouldn't be but, here today. <laughs> but putting – exactly – but putting putting her on any radio show at this juncture, it's for one reason and one reason alone. Mm-hmm. To play the race card yeah. and lie. Yep. That's all she does. She lies because she's so in she's so in bed. Right. And, and the Democratic I'm, Party. It's embarrassing. And she I'll, makes yep. the people at NPR grimace. All eighty seven of the Democrats who work at NPR even like saying, Really? Mm-hmm. Really, Jamel? I'm Get out of my face with that crazy stuff, as Ann Iverson once said. Exactly right. As Tawana would say, I ain't here for no games. You know, I, I, I thought you made a good point, too, especially with, uh, you know, the women's college basketball. Because it was such a shame. And I want to pull up these numbers. Uh, I, I posted this yesterday. Uh, ratings for the college basketball national championship. The men, UConn-Purdue, drew uh, 14.8 million viewers Monday night. The women's championship on Sunday afternoon, South Carolina, Iowa, Dawn Staley versus Caitlin Clark, drew four million more, eighteen point seven million, and it's it's a shame. And I think the draw was obviously the perfection of South Carolina versus Caitlin Clark and her legacy. Exactly. But it's it's a shame that there was such a political and social cloud over the women's tournament because Caitlin Clark is white and she's heterosexual. And then we get asked about Dawn Staley's thoughts on trans men competing in women's sports. And maybe that drew towards the viewership because it kind of brought sports, politics, and social issues into the, uh, the forefront in a big melting pot. But, like, I just want to sit down and watch greatness and, and, and appreciate the excellence of you know, once in a generation type people. And that's what Caitlin Clark is. But certain people made it out to be a race issue, a gender issue, and a sexual orientation issue. And it's nauseating, Tony, because we want to escape that with sports. Exactly. And then you got the, you know, then you got the Dawn Staley comments. And, you know, she, as soon as she said it, you could see she was thinking because she wanted to give the woke answer, mm-hmm. even though she knows that you can't have men uh, uh, playing against women's sports. Right. And so... But she has to answer it. She wants, she knows that in the grand scheme of things, if she were to say, listen, I don't think any uh, biological men should be playing against women, she would be ripped by Jamel Hill and all these other woke people. Mm-hmm. So she gave the end, and luckily her team went out there and showed that they're the best team in the country by finishing another perfect season. And that's all people want to see. Yep. But these kinds of angles are what bring people to it. It's like when Tiger Woods came into 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 being yep. you know everybody watched you didn't even have to be a golf fan right and the caitlin clark phenomenon you know people watched it because it became must watch tv and everybody was talking about it even though probably no one had heard of caitlin clark before this year right so that's what it's about it's about the hype it's about mm-hmm. you know the solar eclipse and a lot of people are on this twitch uh, on the uh, on the uh, youtube feed right talking about you know i have no problem with kids taking a trip and going to a place or adults going to a place where they could see it better. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with that if that's what you want to do. But now I'm seeing that there are a lot of people 
who didn't use the eye protection who are now calling eye doctors because yep. they're concerned about vision damage. So. Oh, boy. Can you imagine? All right. Uh, Secretary Miguel Cardona, Education mm -hmm. Secretary, was on CNN yesterday morning talking about the NAIA banning of biological males from competing in women's sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was that discussion from yesterday. This is cut to Phil Go. Um, yesterday, the NAIA, which is the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, basically for smaller colleges, banned transgender women from competing in women's sports. I wonder what position the administration has about this and how you feel about that move. You know, we're in rulemaking right now on uh, Title IX, um, so I can't really uh, speak to that nah. process until it's over. Mm. But what I will tell you is that it's our responsibility to make sure all students have access uh, to public education and uh, the offerings of public education. We need to protect all students and make them feel welcome and seen uh, and supported. So wh when it comes to s athletics, it's, it's premature for me to discuss something that's currently in the rulemaking process. We're taking feedback. We've gotten over 250,000 comments that we want to go through before we come out with a proposed rule. Right, oh. U.S. Secretary of Education. That's just coward. It is. That's just another another spineless coward mm -hmm. in this administration yep. afraid to make to take a stance on something that is common sense well and the what worst part tony is i would say it's probably 90 percent of americans that say men should not be in female sports exactly so, so it's the exactly. it's the overwhelming majority of americans with common sense that say no a dude should not be in a female locker room and competing on uh the, the same stage as women yet you come out and you say that and you're viewed as like the radical fringe opinion it's like no 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 I i'm saying what everybody basically agrees with and then you're going to label me and attack me and the worst part of all of this, Bruno, is there's uh, we had we, we looked at one of these reports about nine percent of America identifies as LGBTQ plus. And in within that nine percent, only one percent identify or two percent identify as trans. So it yep. is such a small sliver of the pie. Yet the trans lobbyist groups have such power and influence that they're force feeding this on people. Absolutely. And that's what's. That's what's going on now in the political world. The fringe minority groups are the ones that are getting the most representation. And if anybody disagrees with any of it, you're the bad person. Mm -hmm. And that's what's ridiculous. It's, again, it goes back to the bizarro Superman era yep. when you know you had real Superman who was a hero and the bizarro Superman who was the anti-hero. And, and that's what the Democrats are doing in this election. They're pandering to people in fringe minority groups because they're very vocal, even though they're the minority. Same thing, you know, with pandering to different races, you know, and pandering to pe and the abortion battle now that they're pandering again. And and you know, if you don't, well, if you if you don't speak, if you don't stand for abortion, then you're not you're not an American. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can spin things any way you want. Right. Just let people make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is, I I think what Trump said. Now they're mad at the, at Trump for saying it. That it's up to the states. That's who should divide. That's who should decide whether the laws are affecting the people in those communities. Not everybody in the, in the country is the same. So well, let the states decide. That's what the whole purpose of Roe v. Wade was. It was never law. It was never a law. We'll get so to that's the, the thing that's ridiculous. We'll get to the Arizona ruling uh, in just a moment. I okay. But I want one more from this. Uh, from this well, yeah, there's a lot more on the cut sheet. Oh, we got at least 40 uh, minutes to go, Tom. Jake Tapper. Oh, I love the cut sheet. Jake Tapper over on CNN brought on a non-binary ESPN writer <laughs> who uses... They have a non-binary writer at ESPN? Yeah, they have a whole department, Tone. Uses they, them pronouns. Okay. Uh, to denounce the NAIA's new policy per, oh, to, course, to protect yeah. women, uh, women's sports from biological men. The guest is Katie Barnes. And uh, no pushback from Jake Tapper about this. Of course not. Um, but uh, the guest claims that there, it's not scientifically scientifically proven that men would have any advantage over women and girls. Of course oh. not. No. Uh, this is cut nine, Phil. Go. Joining us now to discuss is journalist and author of Fair Play, How Sports Shape the Gender Debate, Katie Barnes. Katie, thank you for joining us. What do you make of the NAIA's new transgender participation policy? Well, I think it is reflective of the times that we are in, in terms of for the last 
you know, three or four years, we have seen most policy updates when it comes to transgender athletes be reflective of restriction and in favor of more restrictive policy. And this seems to fall right in line with that. There is a narrative um, that transgender female athletes have an advantage. A narrative. Uh, that they always win. Biology is um, a narrative. That the reason that men and women generally compete in separate gender categories is because... There's a difference? No, sorry. It's not particularly competitive for men to compete against women. Mm. Do studies support that? Well, I think it depends on what you mean by support that. Oh. You know, from my reporting and having you know, really reported this out for many years, the reality is is that from a scientific perspective, we know that there are differences in sexes, and we know that the differences um, do tend to lead to athletic performance differences as well. However, when we look at broad-based restriction um, at all levels of sport, it's very challenging to say that scientifically that is supported in all cases, uh, meaning that something that might be appropriate for swimming does not necessarily apply to basketball um, when it comes to individual sports versus team sports, as well as level of competition. And so the idea, I think, that transgender women have an advantage in all sports at all times, regardless of any kind of medical transition, I don't think that the scientific literature supports that at this time. All right, there wow. she is, Katie Barnes, who somehow morphed into Horatio Sands from Saturday Night Live overnight. Uh, yeah, no, it's just ridiculous. It's, but you, you know what's insane to me? It, it's we, we look around the globe, and there are nations that have banned biological men from competing against women exactly. in, thing, exactly. in things like chess, Tony. Chess, which is basically a competition of the mind. Forget Correct. the physical sports. And I love how we're talking about, like, team the versus... Katie, can Katie identify where the woman is? I have no idea. Uh, okay. We're identifying uh, team sports versus individual sports. There's a reason why they created Title IX, for God's exactly. sakes. It's, it's, this is not rocket science. It's, it, it's, and here's the worst part is, I think, because we always like to look at it from a media perspective... With all these sports outlets, nobody other than OutKick has been talking about this. I, I would argue coming out Monday morning, if you did a sports talk radio show, the number one issue, even if you're in a local market and you have to talk local teams, you should have done a segment on what Dawn Staley said. And then people will say, well, that's political, that's social. No, it's not. It's the basic eligibility requirement. We, there's a reason why we have groups of kids, 10 to 12-year-olds compete right. together. 13 to 15 year olds. There's a reason different why weight we have classes, different, weight, different classes. weight classes Correct. for kids who are wrestlers Correct. or do sports. Exactly. It's unreal. And, and, and most stations probably avoided it because they're scared of their own shadow. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And listen, I love Dawn Stanley, Staley from Temple Days. She's a great coach, Hall of Fame coach, but that was just a coward. Talk about cowardice. She took the cowardly way out when she was asked that question, and it was a very legitimate question, yep. and she took the easy way out. But luckily for her, you know, she's a champion again, so yep. that's going to that's gonna go away. But the fact that she was afraid to answer the question the way it should be answered because of the biology involved in mm -hmm. women versus men when it comes to sports like basketball, football, and things of that nature, right. she took the easy way out. Yep. Figuring that the woke crowd would not have any problem with what she said. By the way, the guy that asked that question was Dan Zakshesky from Outkick. He'll join us tomorrow at 9 o'clock. He was the one that put uh, Dawn Staley on the spot. And by the way, the Iowa basketball coach, uh, Kim Balder, uh, he, he asked that question to her as well. And she said, well, it's an important question, but at a different time and a different place. That's also kind of taking you know the easy way out. Although I don't think she felt compelled to to give the politically correct answer. I'd be willing to bet she's probably against it, which, by the way, Dawn Staley, I think she was forced into giving the politically correct answer. I think if you asked Dawn Staley off record, she would say, no, they should not be allowed. But how do you sell that to your, your, your team? You have biological females on your team. So Dawn Staley is saying that if a biological male comes along and he is good enough to take a, a scholarship spot of a girl on our roster, we'll do that. If I'm a girl on that team, I'm like, my coach doesn't have my back. She'd kick me to the curb for a dude. I don't think there's any way that Dawn Staley would be able to do that with the record 
and 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 the talent that she could get into South Carolina every year without having a male uh, participate. Yeah, she gets the best women to play for her. Yep. Same thing with Iowa. Same thing with all these top notch women's programs. UConn. Yep. They all get great players because that's where the players want to go. Mm-hmm. Even with the transfer portal, Dawn Staley would never, never have a have a transgender woman playing on the South Carolina women's basketball team. I hope not. Guaranteed. The Arizona Supreme Court yesterday ruled that a near-total abortion ban from 1864 is enforceable. The ruling is on hold for 14 days, and voters will likely have a chance to weigh in on the ballot measure to enshrine abortion rights in the state's constitution this fall. Yesterday, Arizona's governor, um, Katie Hobbs, uh, took to the microphone and blast the abortion ban, saying it it is a dark day in Arizona. Uh, This has cut eight. Phil, go. It is a dark day in Arizona. Just now, the Arizona Supreme Court issued its opinion in Planned Parenthood v. Mays, upholding one of the most extreme abortion bans in the country. And while it is currently stayed, we continue to live under an unacceptable ban, a law that still strips Arizonans of their personal autonomy and has no exceptions for women who are the victims of rape or incest or any regard for pregnancy complications. Let me be clear, Arizona's 2022 abortion ban is extreme and hurts women. And the near total Civil War era ban that continues to hang over our heads only serves to create more chaos for women and doctors in our state. As governor, I promised I would do everything in my power to protect our reproductive freedoms. Here's what I've done so far and how we can continue to work together to end this never ending assault on our basic rights. All right. There you, there you go. All right. So a yeah, couple basic of basic rights. Yeah. Uh, a couple of pieces of context. This is a uh, courtesy of NBC News with this uh, 1864 law. It's 160 years old. They have said it is enforceable. Uh, they view it to be a bombshell decision. The ruling allows the 1864 law in Arizona to stand that made abortion a felony punishable by two to five years in prison for anyone who performs one or helps a woman obtain one. The law was codified in 1901 and again in 1913. Um, I know everybody has an, a view or an opinion on abortion. The way I look at this, because I said la- uh, two weeks ago, I think that Trump is going to win Georgia and Arizona as swing states based on the Lake and Riley murder and also Arizona being a border state. That said, after that Supreme Court ruling yesterday, uh, Arizona, if you are Carrie Lake, if you are yeah, Donald she's, Trump, she's done. You're, 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 you're not happy about that today. If, if you're looking at it objectively with how rulings have gone, how elections have gone post Roe v. Wade, if you're a Republican... That what happened yesterday is not good news for you in the future uh, of elections in the fall. Arizona is in the Biden column right now, in my opinion. If I, that I don't think if that's wrong. on the ballot in Arizona, Arizona is in the Biden column right now. I'm and telling you. We know three states have abortion on the ballot this fall right now. New York, Maryland, and actually Florida was the latest one to join last week. Eleven other or eight other states have uh, petitioned for it. I, I, I'm not sure if Arizona was one of them. I read the eight states for you yesterday, um, but I, I would say that that's, that's a rough look for Republicans yesterday. Tony Bruno, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole 18th, I mean, Planned Parent, uh, Margaret Sanger hadn't even thought up of the idea of, of killing uh, black babies back in the day before Planned Parenthood was even established. So I don't even know why they're going back to 1864. I mean, there wasn't even a Planned Parenthood back then. And it was one of those laws, based on what I've read, that would ban uh, that would ban abortions with very certain circumstances. Mm-hmm. You know, like reproductive rights and and women who have been raped and those things. Those were with the original purpose to me of abortion law. But there is no abortion law. That's the thing. Roe versus Wade was not an abortion law. Even the, even the woman who brought it up later acknowledged that it, it's wrong. So again, whether, however you feel feel about it, if the, if abortion is one of your top three things in your life, then you're going to do whatever you. Th- that's the most important thing. Right. You ask the average woman, give me your top five most important issues affecting you as a woman. Mm-hmm. Are you going to put abortion abortion above everything else in the top five? And if you are, then there's a lot of women that do though because they 
take into consideration the fight it took to get to not have that 18 whatever law in yeah. place mm -hmm. you know that they, 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 they i get it it's not 1864 it's I not know, 1964 but there is a it's 2024 there is a mindset amongst women who said all these women before me fought for this and now it's going to be taken away i don't understand i don't though. think there should be a total ban most logical people don't think there should be a total ban which but is, you have one side wanting the extreme to go all the way up to birth, and the other side with these stupid six weeks and 12 weeks. It should be 15 weeks. I think if, you're, if you can agree that 15 weeks by then, you should know what's going on, whether you're a victim of rape, whether you have a problem uh, to keep the mom alive and try to get the baby alive. There should be a compromise, a common sense one, but there isn't. The extremes on both sides want to make it so ridiculously restrictive or so easy that that's why no one can agree, in well, my opinion. Yeah, I don't it, understand the Republican stance, though, that, that these extreme right viewpoints are somehow the narrative for everybody in the conservative movement, mm -hmm. that, they, that they're that they saying that, that you have to have a complete ban, even in cases of rape or incest. It doesn't make sense when the majority of the people don't want that. Well, uh, I don't to, understand to your point, why they're fighting for it. To, to your point, Robin, yesterday we, we um, gave some survey and polling results that showed, I think, 53 or 54 percent of Republicans are okay being pro-choice. Uh, and then we got into Trump's uh, speech and his official position and statement on abortion. And we're, we're seeing within, within the, the Trump support section, which is obviously a majority of Republicans, that some of them, like, you have some of these pro-life advocates that are disappointed in Trump's position, but they are still rallying behind him as their guy. And then you have others, like Lindsey Graham, who comes out and ridicules Trump, and then Trump's firing shots back on Truth Social. So I, I think when people say the Republican Party is now more united than ever, I think you just look at the abortion issue itself within the GOP, and it shows that it's not a united front. We're, we're, we're divided within our own party on the level of abortion or 16 weeks or this restriction or these exceptions. And it, it, it remains, I think, a very, very divisive issue, not, not just nationally, but within the Republican Party itself. But don't you think like if yes, it is a divisive issue. But if you look at it, take a step back for a second, conservatives and Republicans that are in power take a step back and say, what can we win? What can we win with? Yep. And that's not what they're not doing that. Yep. And it's just, it's so infuriating that they're going to go to the extreme just to make a point, but they're going to lose out. In, yep. in well, the yeah. long run. What can you win with? It's because you, you say that you ask that rhetorical question because Republican messaging is so terrible. And I, I don't think Trump's message was bad by any stretch. I made the point yesterday that you can't put the genie back in the bottle. You know, you look at the election results since Roe v. Wade was overturned and yep. sent back to a state issue mm -hmm. two summers ago. Republicans have just come up empty Nine in and elections. Yep. Nine and out. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I love this. Adam Schiff, of course, chimes in. And, and going back to the NPR story, the, the gentleman who was the, the, the guy who came out and talked to Barry Weiss and wrote a column about it yep. blamed Adam Schiff that they were basically – under the control of Adam Schiff and bought every one of his Russian collusion lies and everything else, and now he's out there again leading the car charge mm -hmm. about the Donald Trump are pushing to expand a nationwide abortion ban. So mm -hmm. that's what you're going to get. You're going to get misinformation on both sides. And listen, I think that I, I'm, I'm pro-life, but I also think that there are situations, but I think a lot of people on the far left side think that there should be abortion up until birth. And that's wrong too. You you can't you can't say let's have abortion up until birth and think that that's a logical a logical explanation on why it happens. Uh, I'm talking just the political uh, size of this. Uh, David Axelrod was on with uh, with Wolf Blitzer yesterday after this and uh, after this ruling was announced, and basically said that this this abortion ban is a is an earthquake uh, that could tip this election. I agree with him. Uh, this is cut uh, 10, Phil, go. But as a political matter, uh, this uh, could not be more of a disaster for the Republican Party. Yesterday, Donald Trump said, well, it's up to the people in the states to decide. Let the states decide. Well, here mm -hmm. you find what happens when you let the states decide. In Florida, 
uh, a six-week ban is in place. I guarantee you in both those states, if you put that on the ballot, and they will be on the ballot in the form of initiatives, uh, that a majority of voters in those states do not agree uh, with those policies. So uh, uh, I think what this does is it puts a battleground state more in the leaning D column than the leaning R column, because I think there's going to be a massive turnout mm -hmm. in, uh, in November uh, for a constitutional amendment in the state of Arizona, because the voters of Arizona now have a demonstration of the fragility of uh, abortion rights in the post-Dobbs era. I think is a, this is an earthquake. Those uh, electoral votes in Arizona could be the ones that tip this election. I, I don't know if it will matter, but I said this yesterday to a few people in, in some text messages. This is where if I'm Trump, I come out, I announce my VP, I make sure I select a female vice president, and I make sure she gets out there and is the front point man or point woman, so to speak, for the abortion message from the Republican side of things. If I, if I could give Nikki Haley credit for one thing during the primaries is I thought Nikki Haley's message and her tone and her delivery on female rights and pro-life, pro-choice and abortion was, was pretty good. Um, I don't know if it's Tulsi Gabbard, but when we were thinking about VPs, we've looked at there's been Latino candidates, there's been black male candidates, and there are female names that are floated out there. I think it will go a long way for Trump to select a female don't know if the abortion issue can be mitigated based on a female uh, as the VP, but that's what I would do right now. I agree. I totally agree. I think that, and then this is something that I think men do not take into consideration. Mm. Every single woman um, at some point in their early life has been affected by a friend or themselves yep. having had to think about getting a, an abortion or not. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, what, they accidentally got pregnant or their period was late. Men have not had to deal with that until maybe they were married and they didn't want to have any more children and somebody got pregnant. But every single woman, when they became sexually active, has had that thought in their brain at some point. And it affects the way they think later on in life. But you know what also, too, and I know this is always positioned as a, as a female thing, and this is me criticizing other men, like, men, it, just to be real for a moment, like, dudes have to start taking responsibility for themselves as well. Like, there's a lot of measures out there that guys can do to ensure that they don't get somebody pregnant that they don't want to end up being married to or having a child with. So, like, this is not just all on the shoulders of females. Like, of there's got to be some responsibility. To baby, That's correct. Some dudes have got to start taking responsibility for their actions. Uh, no lib says, have you ever heard of splitting your vote? Like, where people go in and just vote on this amendment and don't vote for president. I'm Yes, that can happen. Mm -hmm. But the people who are voting for this hold Donald Trump directly responsible for this. He killed Roe v. Wade. Like, that that was his, like, that's what he's running on. Or, he or killed it. Or they'll also blame the conservative but, justices that went but along. you can't take one thing and not have the other. They blame Donald Trump for that. Right. So you're not splitting a vote with this. You're just not. Like, Edward Sachs says, uh, foreign policy is on the ballot and, and, and fentanyl. It's all irrelevant when it comes to this one issue. I'm telling you. Well, that's the thing that's so infuriating is you look at things like the border, immigration, economy, energy, uh, on down the list, inflation, and, and those are the, 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 the most prevalent issues. And if you're doing like the tail of the tape for a boxing fight, who's got the bigger size, the bigger reach, the strength, the record, the experience, you're saying, okay, check mark Trump, check mark Republicans, advantage R, advantage GOP, and then here comes, boom, here comes abortion. And it just totally swings things back to the point where we're seeing razor thin margins in these polling numbers. Everything's within the margin of error. It's just going to be a very tough pill to swallow uh, if just, Republicans lose because of abortion. We are the only. By the way, I'm not I'm saying sorry. that people are saying that I, I'm out of touch thinking abortion is. I didn't say it wasn't a big issue. I'm saying if you sat down and looked at five, the, take the top three things that are going to going to you know going to influence you when you go into the yeah. voting booth in November. What are the top three things that affect your life more than anything else? And if abortion is one of them, then I don't know what, what you're thinking. Yep. Again, I, don't, I think there should be a reasonable compromise. Six weeks is stupid, but up to birth, you can't have that either. That's murder. 
All... If you wait till up till birth and you kill a baby, you're you should be charged with murder. Yeah, I, I, that's my opinion. I'm, I, I, I don't have any power to change that. I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm I'm saying that like if you take the if you take I get it. These these issues are are you're not changing people's minds on this. You're you're just not. But for exactly. on the same aspect, you're also not changing the other side's mind on how they vote. And if you guys, like, I, I understand there are radio shows that lie to you, that tell you, oh, no, 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 abortion is not going to be all about it. It's not going to matter. Yes, it is. Look at I the, agree it is. Look Absolutely at, it is. It, it's with the Democrats. It's their number one card. Yes. And anybody. the race card, they have the race card, uh, and then they have yep. the abortion card. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Anybody who tells you different is lying to you. That's well, all I'm saying. I mean, here's exactly. what here's what the Biden administration has used for the first four years. They've used climate change identity politics, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and all the phobias, racism, transphobia, homophobia. Yeah. And now, and this is kind of really what happened two summers ago in June of 2022, we're halfway through the Biden administration. They're struggling. They're failing. They, the economy's off track. Inflation's 9%. And what, what either Trump or the, the conservative justices did, they threw the Democrats a lifeline. Is what they yep. did. They said, here, here, we're going to give you this lifeline. And now they could legitimately. And when you say it's not an issue or it's a top issue, it's a top three. It's all it's all it's all subjective. It's on each and every other person. Right. Like for for one guy, abortion might not be a top five issue. But like what Robin was just saying, for some females, it might be the number one issue. It might be a top three issue. I think that's what Robin was trying to say earlier. Well, I think, and, and, I, and I think it depends on age brackets as well. I think the older a woman gets, if they've had children already, they're thinking about how their kids are going to survive in this world. And so other things become more important to them. But for a younger generation, when they have, they don't have that outlook on life yet, um, and they have recently been affected by you know maybe their period was late or one of their girlfriends had to have an abortion they, it is top of mind yeah yeah and, and here's the here's the thing i would say uh two part one for those that are mad um in the youtube chat or challenging what we're saying that's fine you can challenge anything you want that's the beauty of this format we can go back and forth all day yeah so i would ask the question to most people that are ticked off right now would you agree that single career oriented liberal females are the GOP's worst nightmare? I think almost everybody Absolute. would agree. Absolutely. So if you Absolute. if you agree with that, then the second part I think you should be in agreement with as well. So now, now that we know that females that are 28 years old don't have children, go to Starbucks and spend 925 on a cup of coffee, those women right there, those are the ones who despise Donald Trump. Then you factor in Trump gets Roe v. Wade overturned, and that clip is going to be played by the Democrats on a loop of yep. Trump saying, I take pride in it, blah, blah, yep. blah. Yep. That's like exactly. adding gasoline and matches on top of yep. the fire that's of why, women that already hate Trump. That's why there's no splitting the vote, because they hold him directly responsible. For right. That. That's that's all I'm saying. Okay, we're not going to solve this today. So let's... Let me just get a okay. quick Let's comment solve it tomorrow. Here, huh? Yes. Let me, let, me, let me lighten the mood here. Please. Eric the Red checks in and yes. says, get it back nice to, to the see Eagles. Miss Robin picking up for Dawn with a sexual innuendo. <laughs> Naked twister benefits everyone. <laughs> and I agree. And I think we can Thank all you. agree with that. Thank right. you, Miss Robin. Way too much, way, way too much testosterone on the show. We need I'm gonna ask Ms. Robin my, to lighten, I'm gonna lighten ask, it up. I'm going to ask my apartment complex. They do all kinds of community things down in the yeah. lobby, uh, wine tasting and uh, uh, Cinco de Mayo things. I'm like, can we do a, <laughs> an, an apartment naked twister night? Oh, that might, yeah. There you go. Yeah, bring your own booze. You don't keep score, though, a naked twister, do you? I don't know. Is it inclusive? <laughs> It depends on where you know what neighborhood you live in. Exactly right. Uh, or if you're down here in Florida and you're down near the villages, you know everything goes there. Apparently, what from what I hear. <laughs> uh, going to cut six here, Phil. Um, yesterday it was announced uh, that Ethan Crumbly from, uh, from oh yeah from Michigan. His, we did a big take on this. His parents uh, uh, were sentenced to ten to fifteen years in prison. Yep. Yes. Um, which is the first of its kind, really, because they, you know, they bought him the gun, and uh, when he had clearly uh, uh, 
had clear mental illness. He was issues. shooting pellet guns yeah. and other things in his room on a shooting yeah. board. Uh, and, and he kept a diary of all of yeah. these really dangerous things that he was thinking about. Yep. And the parents did nothing about it. Yep. I think that this is a very bad precedent to set. I'm uh, to set. I'm sure a lot of you might disagree with me, but uh, this is um, Andy McCarthy was on Fox News yesterday breaking this case down, um, and this is just a little bit of what he said uh, yesterday. This is cut six, Phil. Go. All right, Andy McCarthy joining us now, former assistant U.S. attorney and a Fox News contributor fresh off that judge's sentencing. Heartbreaking listening to some of the parents um, in that courtroom this morning, Andy. Just how unprecedented is this to hold parents of their child accountable for his crimes? Yeah, it's completely unprecedented, uh, Sandra, and it's it's actually, you know, your heart breaks for the parents of the the children who were killed here. But you have to remember that the person who actually did the shooting got treated as an adult and was sentenced to life in prison. So it's not like the system didn't, yeah. uh, you know, carry out law enforcement against the person who actually did this. It's unprecedented to hold the parents accountable to something that they obviously didn't, um, you know, plan, agree to, participate in. I, I frankly just don't think that this is what the criminal justice system is for. I think the criminal justice system mainly is re should be reserved for uh, intentional wrongs. And I think it's more troubling here because Michigan actually attempted to or proposed passing um, child access prevention laws, which would prevent, uh, which would make it a crime for parents to negligently allow their children uh, to have access to firearms, and the legislature wouldn't pass that. So what happened here is the prosecutor made up a crime on the fly that the legislature had not opted to pass. So they're obviously setting a precedent, and I think you could certainly argue and be in the camp of what Andy McCarthy said that this is perhaps a bad precedent i'm largely of the belief that this is a bad precedent it's you have an adult he, if you're charged as an adult why are the parents also going to be punished that said it is clearly obvious that this kid ethan crumbly had mental issues and yeah. if the parents didn't do enough in the mind of a prosecutor or maybe more importantly a judge or a jury I, I, I'm not a thousand percent against punishing the parents, but this feels like kind of overstepping the rule of law here, Tony. No, I, I agree. And it's, the thing about it is, in this particular situation, this is a kid that had both parents in the house. You know, and in a lot of these cases, these kids are lost. There may not be a parent. You know, there may be a one-parent household. And a lot of these recent mass shootings where they were non-binary people who were out there doing the shooting – you know, who knows what upbringing they had? Who knows whether they got the guns from their parents or they got it somewhere else? So that's where it's a slippery slope. This kid had two parents in the house that knew everything that was going on with the kid. So as far as sending them to jail, too, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but he was sent to prison yeah. for his actions. So. Would you yeah. consider the fact that the parents in this particular case were an accessory? Yeah, they knew. It, but know, the government they... knows about a lot of well, these and they people. also oh, that's a that's a the that's government a really knows slippery about a lot slope, of people. Though. That's a slippery well, but slope. But here's though. the thing, guys: the government knows about a lot of these mass murderers, and there's warning signs yeah. that should allow them to go and get this person before he commits the crime. We wait till after the crime right. is committed. Or the, or the very least, take away the weapon, from right? These people who yeah. are mentally disturbed. Mm -hmm. The parents yeah. received credit for 858 days served, and they were sentenced to 10 to 15 years, uh, found guilty yeah. of involuntary manslaughter. I just think that this is a bad precedent to set. Yes, they were terrible parents, and there are a lot of terrible parents that I believe should be uh, held responsible for what their kids do. But to serve jail time over this, like where, like where does it end? Can we then hold the gun manufacturers responsible? And is can this, we then, you know, the is, the bullet manufacturers? Can we this, hold the psychiatrist? Is this going to happen I mean, everywhere now? Is this going to be a trickle a bad, down effect? Exactly, it's a very bad precedent. Well, well, I think that there should be some sort of punishment for the parents. I I don't know, ten to fifteen years. Holy. So I, I I gave you the number. Time served already was eight hundred and fifty eight days. I mean that's you know over two two and a third years. I think if my math is correct, it would is that adequate enough punishment in your opinion? 
858 days, or should they serve more beyond that? Because 10 to 15 I, seems extreme. I don't know. I, it does I don't seem know. Extreme. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I just I feel like this is this is just we're going down the wrong well, path with this. And, and what's going to happen? Not now holding the forward. Re- not not holding the person right. responsible. Well, I I'm so sick and tired of hearing about guns. I'm sick and tired of hearing about video games, music, right. it's movies. It's always about shifting. It's blame. always about shifting blame, yeah, not to the individual. Right. Yes. And now, is this going to happen in single-family households? Is this going to happen in households where maybe somebody doesn't have a mom or a dad and they're raised by their aunt or their grandmother or a grandfather? Is this going to be something that gets picked up throughout the country, throughout prosecutors and district attorney's offices? Because that's whether you like it or not, it's like the same thing I said with January 6th. They're setting a precedent. They're saying, if you do this, this is what the crime and the punishment will be. So if future cases come up where the facts are very similar, if not identical, is the same approach going to happen? I don't know if we will see that, but clearly this is the first one. This is, uh, De- what, Detroit or suburbs of Michigan, I it's think? It's the suburbs yeah. of Michigan. Okay. By the way, so then are we holding the uh, the the parents of uh, Philadelphia gang members that's what, well, that's accountable. Great, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? Or are we going to play identity politics? Yeah. So, all right. That's what I got. All right. There it is, Tony Bruno. One hour of what's on the cut sheet from the maestro. I Greg think we Stalker. covered it all. I think there's not one stone left unturned on this show today. I agree. And as the, the current president of the United States would say, if I were smart, I'd say thank you and leave. I would leave, but we got an hour and 20 minutes left Woo-hoo! to go. We can't leave. <laughs> Wait a if, minute, I think the president has just checked in and has called the lid for oh, this a What Up Wednesday. Oh, no. A lid at 836? I'm going to go to bed. He's going to go to bed, he just announced. I oh, am, too, gotta... around noon. It's called my daily nap. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 855-839-1210. Exactly right. We'll come back and put a bow on the 8 o'clock hour. I want to get to uh, this story when it comes to debates. The New York Times with an interesting story on how the television networks, all five of the big networks, are pushing hard for Joe Biden and Donald Trump to get in the debate ring. We'll get to that as we continue. Kale and Company, Bruno's in for dawn. Miss Robbins got the sexual innuendos, <laughs> and Stalker has everything else. And we're back after this on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel, in partnership with Valley Forge Casino, is making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. You can use to bet on anything you want to. Major League Baseball, NBA, the NHL, so much more. It's a great sports time. There's a lot happening right now. You can get in on all the action. You can do parlays. You can bet straight up, spreads, money lines, whatever you want to. It's all right there, FanDuel. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Greg, FanDuel.com slash Greg, and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel Sportsbook is the official partner of 1210 WPHD, and it's America's number one sportsbook. 21 and over, President PA, first online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required, bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem 1 800 Gambler. He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger's a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right. That's real important. The golf game. Right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body, to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics Regenerative Medicine is regenerating me all natural and that's what i'm about i'm gonna tell everybody why i'm better oh and by the way it looks like the competitive satch is back we're all in the same boat and i'm getting better and i'm watching them stay old go to qckinetics.com get relief and your game back call for your complimentary consultation call qc kinetics 215-999-3000 that's 215-999-3000 215-999-3000 this is a special alert to all americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all due to a decline in the economy car shield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto 
auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-403-5569 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-403-5569. That's 800-403-5569. What do you have to lose? Call 800-403-5569. Again, 800-403-5569. Tune in to Crash Proof Retirement Show, Saturdays at 11 a.m. to hear Phil Canella and Joanne Small. The Crash Proof Retirement Show, Saturday mornings at 11 on Talk Radio 1210. Calling on Percocy to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Kale and Company rolling on live here on a Wednesday morning. Nick Hale, Tony Bruno in for Don Stensland. Miss Robin's here. Greg Stocker's here. If it wasn't for Robin, it would be a lot of toxic masculinity on today's it. program. Yep. It's a little too much for me personally. I might decide to cancel the show myself. I may uh, declare myself non-binary, so ah! the balance is equal here. Non- Don't put me in a box, Tony. <laughs> you will not box me. Speaking of criminals, uh, how about the woman that's sentenced to a month in prison and three months home confinement for stealing and selling Ashley, uh, Ashley Biden's diary four years ago, uh, the diary that Af- Ashley ba- ba- Biden left in an apartment that she abandoned Oh wow! this chick picked up, and now she's going to jail over there. Yeah, what happened to finders keepers? Losers <laughs> weepers. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, uh, speaking of finders keepers, <laughs> yes. how would you like to find yourself tomorrow night at the Zlock Performing Arts Center in Bucks County at Bucks County Community College around 7 yeah. o'clock. Can I just say this real fast? Yeah. I'm sorry, Nick yes. Hale. We have a, there was so much demand for this mm-hmm. that we actually found 20 more tickets. No. No. So, yes, we have found 20 more tickets. So if you have not done so, we just opened up 20 more tickets. If you, but you have to do it right now because it's tomorrow night. Yes. So tomorrow tw- night. 1210WPHT.com, 1210WPHT.com, Pints of Politics with Dom Giordano and Rand Paul. Nick Kale will be there giving a toast to the crowd, bringing Dom and Rand up on the stage. Yep. Uh, it'll be a good time, but we have 20 more tickets. There's And when they're gone, they're gone. That so, is correct. So 20 more, uh, 1210WPHT.com. You also get a signed copy of Rand Paul's book with the tickets. Yes, the book called Deception, the Great COVID Cover-Up, and uh, there will be a nice toast, and then we will get right to grilling and roasting Dr. Anthony Fauci. But caller 10 right now. Wow. We'll get a pair of tickets. 855-839-1210. Caller 10, 855-839-1210. Pints and Politics, Dom Giordano, uh, and of course, the great Senator Rand Paul, who I think has done a a great job of really uh, holding Fauci and his feet to the fire, so to speak. Of course, we know nothing will ever happen to Fauci. I think he perjured himself multiple times. uh, Lock him up. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is a guy who I mean, you think about his wealth how his net worth just accelerated and skyrocketed over the last couple of years and you know not to drudge up all the past of Fauci we did that for multiple years but yes uh, tomorrow night will be a good time for sure and and uh Stocker's bringing uh Woodford Reserve Woodford Reserve and there's there's another one that I forget what it is somebody can remind me on the YouTube chat or on Twitter another um, high-end bourbon but another high-end bourbon by the way Michael Pelka texted me and told me that he has a bourbon that he's bringing Dom and Dan this afternoon is that right to give to Rand Paul so Rand Paul is going to be wow l- lit by the time guys from Kentucky stage. there's plenty of bourbon in Kentucky you have bourbon in your blood if you're born yeah. in Kentucky for God's sake exactly sense. exactly I love they how start an actual IV drip when you're uh yeah born in Kentucky I've never seen a guy 
with more golf game and more more bourbon in his system yep. than Mike Opelka. I've golfed with that guy four times last summer, and every time really? he, he pulls out the little thing, he goes, you want a little swing oil? I'm like, swing oil? He goes, yeah, we call it brown liquor. I go, oh, you got bourbon with you? And he's like, yeah, he pulls out bourbon on the golf course. It's unbelievable. I I'm stay just... away from guys like that, especially since his name is Stunt Brain. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if you have a Stunt Brain, I don't know. I, I don't think I can hang. <laughs> exactly. 855 <laughs> Let's grab a call as we wrap up the 8 o'clock hour here. Ray in Warminster has some thoughts on abortion and framing it for the GOP. Ray, good morning. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. I hope I framed my comment right, so please bear with me. Yep, go This ahead. is how I would do it. Tell me if you think I'm an idiot or not. Look, most people that are pro-life like me are religious, right? Um, and I would say, look, I'm pro-life, but we're put on this earth to be a free people, which means we can make our own decisions, whether they're good or bad. Ultimately, we pay, we pay the price for our path in life. So because of that, while I'm pro-life, I am not going to get in your way if you would, if you want to get an abortion. It's your decision. Do I not want you to get one? Of course I don't. But because I'm religious and I follow Christ and we're free, who am I to interject my beliefs into you if you don't believe in what I believe in? Now, saying that, man, you got the variables like uh, up to the time of birth and all that. That's you know, there's some things you got to deal with. But that's how I would frame it. I'm like, look. I'd rather not you. I'd rather you not get it. But we're a free people, ultimately. Yeah. No, I, Ray, you're making a good point, and you're also pointing out the, you know, the the not being hypocritical of hey, you don't like when the left strong arms and forces people on the right to do what they say to do, and you're saying the same thing. You know, you would prefer you don't do that, but it's a free world. If you have the chance to do it, you want to do it. It's your body. Go ahead and do it. Now, I think that's a totally sensible stance from somebody that's pro life, and that's why I brought up you know Trump and vice president and female because I think it. And look again, it might not make a difference based on what happened two years ago at the highest court of the of the land with the Supreme Court and those justices. But if you can find a, the right female veep that is clearly more qualified and uh, a better speaker than, a, than the Kamala Harris's of the world, probably the worst vice president in the history of American politics or at least modern day politics, maybe it would help soften the edges, smooth things over a little bit. In a razor-thin election, Tony Bruno, where Georgia was decided by 10,000 votes last time around, Arizona was 11,000 votes, every poll is showing Trump up two, three, four, Biden up one or two. You, you, you can't, you have to value every single moment here over these next, next six or seven months because legitimately every vote you think this time around really could make the difference. Absolutely, and there's no doubt abortion is going to be you got Kamala Harris out there every day making this the most important story in the history of humanity. And so, and the media is going to be all over it and they're going to be pushing and pushing and pushing this. And you see, they already have the surrogates out there telling everybody how horrible Trump is on abortion. So there's no doubt this will be the number one issue and it really shouldn't be. It should be a major issue, well, the but not the number one issue. The conspiracy theorist in me is convinced that the statements like what that the Arizona Supreme Court has made was done on purpose. Hmm. It was done on purpose to make this a forefront issue again. Well, the one thing, the one thing when we're talking, you, Tony, you mentioned Kamala Harris out there. I, I think this is not only their last ditch effort for Kamala, but they finally put Kamala Harris, I think, in a spot where she will be, quote, successful. Think about how much of a disaster she has been. She was the border czar. She's never been to the border. The border's a joke. And then, oh, by the way, think about this. She was next up, she was tabbed to be the, the czar of artificial intelligence, except mm -hmm. she's just not really that intelligent. Where they've really missed, I think, if I was advising the Biden administration, is, hey, Kamala Harris, prior to becoming a vice president and getting into politics, she was kind of a kick-ass district attorney in the Bay Area. She locked up everybody. So if there's yep. one area where she should excel in, it's crime. Yet crime has gone up under the Biden administration. So they really missed there. So now in year four, they're like, hey, Kamala, we're going to roll her out for the abortion tour. And this is where if the Biden administration gets reelected and the goal might be, hey, Joe might not make it another four years. Kamala will be next up second in charge. They're going to say, 
She did great in 2024, bringing home the vote with the abortion and the female rights issues. And that's how they're going to lift and elevate her. Say what you want about Democrats, failed policies, you know, left wing ideology, all of it. They know what they're doing. Like they don't they, they Dawn always says this. They rally together and mm-hmm. they are diabolical. They just don't go out there and shoot into the wind. They know exactly what they're doing. I think this is they they believe they've put Kamala in a no fail situation. And I, I actually agree with that. I think you could trot out any female right now that is pro-choice as the vice president, and I don't think a female would screw up the issue or the message. They will rally females, and they will get females in their feelings, and they'll show up on November 5th this fall. I, I truly believe that. Absolutely. No, 100% correct. 855-839-1210. All right, we've got Dennis. He is on the line from Elkins Park. I believe he's our winner this morning. Dennis, congratulations. You are caller 10, Woo-hoo. and you are going to Pints and Politics tomorrow night with Dom and Rand Paul. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much for the gift. You are welcome. Are you a bourbon connoisseur, Dennis, or what's your uh, cocktail of choice? I drink Tangeray martinis nice. straight up. Uh, ice mm-hmm. on the side with like the it. olives on the ice. There you <laughs> go. All right. I'm not sure what cocktails will be on hand tomorrow night. If it's just no, liquor, it's, or... no, it's not. It's it's not just pints. It's whatever. Okay. Like they have a full bar there. I saw they have to do the, a, oh, the full bar. It's a Lock Performing Arts oh, Center. In, beautiful uh, in uh, Newtown Wonderful. Bucks County. Yep. All right. Congratulations, Dennis. It, we'll see you tomorrow it night. Is a, it is. A, it is a work night, so I, you know, I can't uh, imbibe too much. That's Maybe right. One. Yep, I'm going to have one myself because it is a school night, It is folks. a school night for you, yes. Yes, it yes, is. Absolutely. Yes. You have to be responsible. Yes. Always drink responsibly. And in case you missed it, we have just released 20 more tickets, 20 more tickets, but you have to get them now because when they're gone, they're gone. 1210WPHT.com, 1210WPHT.com to get your tickets for Rand Paul and Dom Giordano tomorrow night. There you go. 855-839-1210 to jump in. Uh, we'll come back in the 9 o'clock hour uh, in just about 10 minutes a couple of stories i want to get to uh tv networks urging biden and trump to debate and then also uh, a very interesting story this was a good find in uh the atlantic the rfk curious women of bucks county i i don't think i've ever seen the atlantic or politico go super deep where they are singling out one demo in a county in our listening area that could certainly swing Pennsylvania one way or the other as the most prominent swing state. Uh, But we'll get to that story as well. Uh, But as we wrap up the 8 o'clock hour, I was just thinking about this. So tomorrow night, Pints and Politics, you're going to have Dom, you're going to have Rand, a bunch of our Mm -hmm. listeners, Bourbon. And and think about this, folks. We're getting Stalker to come out in public tonight. Think about in the last 18 months, all all, all these events I've showed up for to be a team player with uh, Zioli at parks and this and that, and Stalker has failed to show up. Folks, he is coming out tomorrow night. No. Is is he a bourbon guy, or is he going to have the olives on top of the uh, ice? uh, I don't know. I have to rep- I have to represent the station, Tony. So I have to be responsible. Right. So I will. I probably will not be imbibing tomorrow night. Maybe I'll have one. Well, you can drink responsibly. Uh, well, of course. That doesn't mean you don't have to drink at all. Of course. Right. I, yeah. Maybe I'll have one. You know, shot with. I've already with GPS. Nick Hale. I've already GPS this. Uh, so it's going to be a one drink for me because it's a thirty. Shouldn't there 32 be like a station drive. like van or a station? Well, uh, Luxury bus. I, yeah, I would where, like where, where's to, the Odyssey helicopter? Can I would I like get to. It? I would like to ask Tony Bruno the next time he is in Philadelphia. I don't know when that's going to be, but the next time you're in Philadelphia, I would like to do some sort of an event with you, since our listeners Absolutely. love you yes. so much. Yeah, you Absolutely. and Miss Robin. I love, and, I love pressing the flush. You yeah. know, a lot of people in radio don't like to go out and do public appearances. I love yeah. meeting the, the folks out there that listen. So yeah, you've been kissing backs and slapping babies for four decades, right? Exactly right. Yeah, right, exactly man. right. That's the kind of man I am. A man of the people. Now, Tony uh, and guys, the Pacer 2017 on YouTube is talking about how he agrees with Tony on the uh, abortion, uh, his stance, but he does not like his tax dollars paying for abortions because someone had fun one night. Oh. But here's the important part. He yeah. says, especially since I didn't and I live in the villages. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. Well, in the villages, so we have... they have, like, cases of condoms sitting at every, like, picnic table. They're safe. Plus, they're all 75-plus. They're not banging out babies. Exactly no. right. Well, but, but, but they maybe might because be. because we have villages listening, people in the villages listening, we yeah. should have you guys fly down here and we do a remote in the oh. villages. Oh, I see what she's doing there. Yeah. She, she's oh. trying to get us down in Florida. What is this? A home and home series? I, I like that actually. I like that better. I do too. I like get everything down about here Florida better. June, though, then it's going to get too yeah, hot. I, I, Everybody's going to say, "Get out of this damn humidity." Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> That's a great point. All uh, right, final hour is on the way. Will Trump and Biden debate? The networks are clamoring for it and turning up the heat. We'll get to that as we continue. And also for all the ladies out there in Bucks County. Why are you so interested in RFK Jr.? We're back after this. Stay right there. This is the time of year to enjoy life. Dawn Stansland here. Stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you want to do this spring. Just call my friends at QC Kinetics. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. I'm talking lasting joint pain relief. No surgery, no drugs, no downtime. It's a fact. QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Their advanced treatments harness your own body's ability to restore and repair damaged joints tissue. Now, this life-changing treatment is available for you. So you can walk, run, climb stairs, play golf, move again, pain-free. No pain pills, no risky surgery. It's an all-natural solution. QC Kinetics has tens of thousands of satisfied patients who've reclaimed their mobility. Take action now. Do this. Live your best life this spring and summer. Great use of your tax refund check, by the way. Call QC Kinetics for a free consultation. 215-999-3000. 215 215-999- 993000. Tell Dawn set you. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. La, 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 Ever had your singing lessons cut short by icy water? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Say goodbye to those cold notes with Navian tankless water heaters. With Navian, you'll hit all the right notes without the surprise chill. So keep singing and let Navian keep the hot water flowing. And get ready for the encore when you get your utility bill. La, 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 la. Navian tankless water heaters. Visit tanklessmadesimple.com. At California Psychics, we know that nagging doubts like, how much will a psychic cost? And how will I find the right one? Can stop you from getting the guidance you need. That's why we offer the best psychics at the best value. California Psychics have a wide range of psychics available 24-7. So you can find the one that meets your needs and your budget. If you can't decide, our dedicated customer service team are always available to guide you. Right now, new customers receive 20 minutes for just $20. And what do you know? Most of our customers get everything they need from a reading within that time. Our psychics may surprise you with their ability to offer unique insight on your life situation. In fact, we guarantee if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. So, there's never been a better time to take the next step. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. 
WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Hi, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about my friends from Piazza Premium Automobiles. They continue to grow their luxury collection of brands. And now Piazza is excited to welcome Infinity Ardmore and Maserati of the main line. Both located right there on Lancaster Avenue. And you're going to receive the very same first class customer experience that you've come to expect. Find your new or certified pre-owned Infinity, Maserati, or other Piazza luxury brands like Jaguar, Land Rover, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and more at Piazza Premium Auto. Com. Spring is here. Get ahead of summer pricing and availability. Call CNC Heating and Air Conditioning, your local Lennox dealers. Family owned and operated, serving Montgomery and Bucks counties for over 50 years. With 24 7 service and trained technicians, CNC will make sure your system is running efficiently before you get stuck without cooling on blistering hot days coming up. 0% financing options are available. Schedule an estimate today at cc hvac.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Don't let a cold, sinus infection, or allergies ruin your day. Breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier with Navage. Visit Navage.com, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, or a store near you. Keep free speech alive. Follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. I left alone. My mind was blank. I needed time to think to get the memories from my mind. What did I see? Can I believe that what I saw that night was real and not just fantasy? Just what I saw. It is Kelly Company, 901, Wednesday morning, fourth and final hour underway. Nick Kale, Tony Bruno, Greg Stocker, Miss Robin, as we head till 10 o'clock this morning. Free speech lives here on Kale & Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Yesterday, I was donning the apparel, no pun intended. Today, Greg Stocker's got the new Kale & Company hoodie on. Look at it. Look at it. It fits beautifully. Look at that. Tony, we got to say I don't get any of the swag. Tony. I don't have any Kale & Company, any WPHT swag. Whatsoever, Tony. You, you don't have a Zioli yeah. Army T-shirt? No, I don't have All anything. Right. Send me. Anything. I will. I will. I will send it to you. I apologize for that. That's a bad job out of me. <laughs> but you can get yours at twelve ten wpht dot com. Twelve ten wpht dot com. All the merch is there. The black hoodie is like it's so comfortable. It is. I love the white drawstrings. Yep. L- l- the white drawstrings a little racist. I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, right, maybe right. we should have went with black drawstrings. But other than that, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, 1210WPHD.com, the merch store. It's all there. All right, morning mystery movie clip in about 17 minutes. Cut sheet part due at the bottom of the hour. And uh, today in music history, who won Twitter today? All the goodies in the 9 o'clock hour still ahead. But I did think this was a pretty interesting story. The New York Times with a headline that reads, TV networks to urge Biden and Trump to debate. You know, this is fascinating because I love... This format, I love debate. I love arguments. Heck, I love heated arguments. So anything under a debate, whether you want to call it dialogue or discussion or discourse, I am all for. That's why I I love social media, mixing it up with people, even though I don't do it as much anymore. 
certainly this format. But there's this this new theme and this new trend, and I don't know when it started. And initially, I didn't like it. I've come to accept it a little bit. And I think if you have a massive lead, like when Trump, and I'm trying not to be partisan here, but when Trump had such a big lead in the polls, there was no reason for him to show up and debate Chris Christie or Tim Scott. I mean, everybody knew, you know, there was, it, before the primaries even started, it was, well, can DeSantis challenge Trump? And once we realized DeSantis couldn't, you knew that it wouldn't be Haley, it wouldn't be Ramaswamy on down the list. And we've seen this nationally, Tony. We've seen it locally. Uh, locally in New Jersey, you had Ed Durr and Beth Sawyer, uh, and there was the refusal to debate. Nationally, we saw in Arizona, Katie Hobbs, the governor of the Democrat, she didn't want to mix it up and spar and get into the ring with Carrie Lake. And and we know where the two um, candidates stand right now. You know, Trump is saying anytime, any place, let's get it on. Joe Biden has repeatedly declined to commit to it, and then he's made comments like, well, if Trump's a good boy and he's on his behavior, maybe we'll do one. I think the American people deserve it. Uh, I don't know that it will sway anybody, to be completely honest. I think you're either in the Trump camp, you're in the Biden camp, or you're just sick of both and you wish there were different options. But I, I truly believe that if you're Trump, you're dying for this moment because I think he will pick Biden apart. Uh, I don't think there's any amount of alleged substances that Joe can take to get hyped mm -hmm. up to survive the debate. I think if Trump interrupts, he will derail Biden. Um, that being said, it's just the way we do it in America. We let people debate and then let the people decide the issues. And I don't blame ABC, CBS, CNN, NBC, or Fox for pushing for this because I do think as bad as as much as people have decided – I actually think the debates will draw monster ratings in the fall if they get together in October. Totally agree. Absolutely. People want to see this because, you know, we talk, everybody talks about cognizant, you know, who's cognitive and both sides are saying the other guy is, is dead, mentally brain dead and all this other stuff. Yep. It's the only way you do it. Mm -hmm. But Biden will never agree to it. I guarantee you he will. Ne and if he does, I'll be the first guy to say, good job. <laughs> but there's no way they're going to allow Joe Biden. To, to debate yeah it, and it's funny yeah. you bring up the cognitive state because like we that was the main talking point for trump versus biden but specifically biden for for many weeks if not months and that that kind of that narrative has been kind of shoved to the back burner we, we've been talking so much about the border and immigration and now obviously with abortion being back in the news it feels like it's been at least six to eight weeks, if not longer, since we were talking about the Robert Hur investigation with Joe Biden. Of course, mainstream media, they want to bury that. They want to forget that story because hers basically uh, her basically arrived at the conclusion that I can't really can't come forth with charges against the big guy because he's basically you know, he's pop pop. He's got a poor memory and it won't go over well with him being on trial. They'll realize that he's not with it. Now, CNN has come out. CNN is trying to sue for the tapes. And also the DOJ is pushing back against House Republicans saying, you, you've got the transcript. We're not going to give you the audio tapes, right. which, which goes to show you how damning those tapes must be. This is like back in the 90s. Remember when Mark Furman was labeled a racist and yep. Johnny Cochran was leading the charge, release the tapes, release the tapes in the OJ trial. That's what the Republicans are doing, and I think they have a right to do it because I think those tapes will really show how out of it Joe Biden is when he's not hopped up allegedly on whatever he's on for State of the Union addresses. But by the way, the big story today was you want to wait for spin doctors to come on, not the group, the spin doctors, <laughs> but the inflation numbers are out uh -oh. and they are up. Inflation so is back to, up. It's up three to 3.5% 3 in March. Uh -huh. So that's the official number. Even CNN is reporting it. So yep. uh, inflation numbers up in March. And so we'll wait to see what the spin is on that one. Well, my my uh, my local gas station where I get my gas is at Wawa, and they've gone up. They went up four cents again uh, from three fifty six to three sixty. What are you paying for a gallon of gas down there these days? It's like three fifty nine here. It's almost three sixty a gallon oh in California. God. Gas prices have gone up every day for the last twenty one days. Mm -hmm. That gas is well over five dollars a gallon again. And so uh, you know. 
Again, everybody can see this. You drive out, you fill up your gas tank. Right. I filled up mine yesterday, and I had a quarter of a tank left, and it was $76.76. I made sure when I was squeezing, I wanted to get it perfect. Yeah. So it was at $76, and I stopped it at $76. You can't be any more patriotic than that. I deserve a Kale and Company sweatshirt. I agree. Shipping and handling not included. I'll get you one. $76 with with a quarter tank? So you're you're probably looking at close to a hundred bucks to fill. What are you driving these days? I got my my gigantic Ram twenty five hundred, oh, okay. the biggest Hemi known to mankind. So you, so you got the real big boy trucks. Yeah, my truck, my, right. the Ridgeline, it only cost me about sixty bucks to fill because it's a six cylinder. It's not an eight cylinder. But you got the monster down there. I got the big ass Hemi, so to speak. Can we call it a big ass Hemi? On yeah, the I think you, you can. Absolutely can. Okay. I think you can. You absolutely can. It's Although, not jacked all the way up though. I mean, you got. I have the running boards. You got to climb up into it. Okay, and that keeps me young. You know, when you got to get up on the running board and climb up in. <laughs> That big some bit, you know. That's a real nice truck right there, Clark. I got the four wheel. I got four wheel, all wheel. I got it all. Yeah, you oh, there's nothing. That. There's nothing like pulling up to an intersection and having somebody next to you roll down their window and go, "That's a nice truck." That's Tony, a real nice Tony, truck there. Yeah. Tony feels so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah Pardon yeah, yeah. me, Mr. Bruno. Do you have Granny Gray Poupon? <laughs> All right, morning mystery movie clip in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Let me wrap up with this story. Last story of the day. I thought this was definitely worth mentioning. So uh, The Atlantic has a column written by Elaine Godfrey. The title is The RFK Curious Women of Bucks County. What I heard... Sounds from- like a movie I saw back in the days on prison late <laughs> night. Ah, okay. Late night prison flick, yeah. When I it was remember. scrambled. Remember I remember that. that. Oh, yeah. Scrambled movies. Yes, until my dad got me a hot box. That's how I used to watch all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she uh, has this column says what I heard from some crucial voters who were far from happy about their choice for presidential candidates. And it basically to paraphrase, because it's a long story, talking about and quoting many women that are not enamored with Donald Trump nor Joe Biden. And there's this intrigue factor to RFK Jr. And I tease this and I mentioned this earlier. I don't know what it is, because I would argue RFK Jr. to women is a lot like AOC to men visually they're attractive it's when they open their mouth that you get the turn off right yeah because aoc is just a space cadet and rfk every time he talks it's a painful experiment and experience to sit through with you know the the voice issue yeah, god bless him it's not it's not like he's elon musk and he's just painful to listen to he had a real issue i forget what they call it but something to do with the with the vocal cords. So this is going to be very interesting because we know that RFK Jr. is polling anywhere from 12 to 18, 19%. And I, I think when you look at Bucks County, we're going to give a shout out to Scott Pressler, who's done a great job uh, growing the Repo- uh, Republican voting base in Pennsylvania. And Bucks County specifically is now down to only an advantage for Democrats of 1,700 registered voters. So Scott's done a great job in Bucks County, but you have a lot of women out there, whether it's Trump with abortion or whether it's just Biden with, you know, the border, crime, economy, kitchen table issues. They're interested in RFK. And I got to be honest, I'm not shocked in the least. I'm not a big RFK fan other than his thoughts on free speech and censorship Mm -hmm. and his willingness to fight with Big Pharma. Other than that, I view him to be a lefty, but there are many women out there I, that I think if they, if they had the choice, a lot like in Bucks County, they would be on board with RFK. I don't know what that says about our two options, but I do think he's a factor. I agree. Now, those creepy people that put that video out the other night, the Pennsylvania people in that house, you saw that one, right? Did you guys no, play that yesterday? I didn't see it. I, I have no you idea. You didn't see that one? It's like these people, it's a bunch of older people, okay. and they're like creepy. And they're doing the whole dance and dancing. dancing yes. Oh, well, yes. it's, it's all the liberals voting for Biden. Yes, I, yeah, yeah, I okay. should have brought I've that, that to them. I, I've seen like they, that. Yeah. They had some edibles before. Oh, and... edibles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did see are that. Those Bucks County, where are, those, where are those people from? I don't know. They're like I... in a living room somewhere, in somebody's living room, and there's a freaky woman Hulk holding a radio. Yeah. And just yeah. dancing around. And she's she's like, had a glass yeah, of wine. Yeah. 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 Reminds me of my yeah. mother-in-law on New Year's Eve. <laughs> That's not right. It's not right. She knows I love I her. Have a, I have a theory about RFK, though. Okay. I think, I think that it's not so much his looks 
is what he represents because the last time in our history that we had political royalty was the Kennedy family. When when JFK was in was president, the whole Camelot thing, yep. and he is yep. a representative of that era. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's there's a lot of women who they're the ones that are all hopped up on any new information about uh, Harry and Meghan. And this is our the only royalty that we can sort of claim in the United States was that JFK era. And they're hoping somehow or another that by electing him, it's going to continue. Yeah. But you know what though? It, it's it, there's, I think some people feel a little sorry for him because if there's one family that could use a presidential candidate getting secret service protection, it's yeah. that guy. And exactly. the fact, like it, it would be the ultimate irony if Biden rejecting secret service protection, rejecting debates, rejecting a primary challenger and basically shunning him and forcing him to run third party. It would be the ultimate justice if Biden loses because RFK took away votes from him this fall but yeah i agree there is there's definitely an intrigue factor uh but it, one of these things i've been saying i think he's a net positive for trump for every vote he takes away from trump i think he takes more votes away from joe biden do but you i i do I, I, but i don't I just, know how to quantify it is it two yeah. to one is it five to one yeah i think there's a there's a he does take some away from him but i i think he takes the majority away from trump yeah, I think you and I are on different, uh, and I think a lot of people think he takes more from Biden. But, yeah. I mean, if you look out, outside of censorship, speech, um, big pharma, and really the healthcare industry, he's he's pretty much as as liberal a, as you could possibly be mm -hmm. without being like a squad dem progressive. I think that's the, the interesting best thing, the dynamic here in Florida, guys, is one that's really interesting yeah. based on online. There are so many DeSantis people here. Obviously, and I, I love Ron DeSantis. He's a great governor. I think he's the best governor in the country. Yep, and here. I didn't move to Florida because Ron DeSantis was here. He happened to be here when I moved here. And so the bottom line is there are a lot of people here who are pro-DeSantis and will not vote for Trump because DeSantis is not the nominee. Well, that's a so bad. So that's going to come uh, into play. That's awful. That's going to come into play because they're not going to. They won't support Trump, uh, but they want Ron DeSantis. But Ron DeSantis got into the race, bailed out quickly because he had no shot at winning. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's the dynamic that's fascinating to me when you look at the Florida votes. Mustard and mustard you and mustard, of course. Yes. Exactly. And by the way, I would say that because uh, I said this last week on this show. Yeah, I, just, I would say the same thing to Floridians. So you're really not going to vote for Trump, which basically then you're basically doing your part to ensure that Biden has a better chance. I think that's the wrong mindset. I think that's the wrong mentality. I think if you're a Haley supporter, a DeSantis supporter, I think you should get on board and vote Trump. The only people I don't expect to within the Republican Party, so to speak, are the, the sliver of the supporters out there that are Chris Christie fans, because I know for a fact they will never will. But I mean, I would argue there's nothing. There's nothing that Sliver and Christie uh, Christy do not belong. <laughs> that, that, in the you same know, that's sentence. a great point. Yeah. That's a I bad job. Sloppy man. Chris Christie. On, I agree. <laughs> Terrible work out of me. Well, I mean, big you chunk. Could, you could also make the argument. <laughs> you could also make the argument that Nikki Haley's voters, I don't think, are going to come to Trump either. <sighs> it's it's the last thing Trump needs. I mean, with abortion and other things out there, and the machine against him. He can't afford to have Nikki Haley voters or DeSantis voters stay home and sit this one out. I don't think so anyway. 855-839-1210 will come back. Morning Mystery Movie Clip is on the way. It is Kale and Company. Tony Bruno in for Dawn. Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Hi, it's Dawn. Want an environmentally friendly approach to lawn care? Call my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. I've been a customer for years. Trust me, you're going to love the results. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs. This reduces the need for chemicals and creates a safer lawn for your entire family, including your pets. Natural Lawn is 
is locally owned and family operated. They have offices in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They're competitively priced and have a satisfaction guarantee. I trust the leader in organic-based lawn care. You should too. Give them a call. New customers? Take advantage of Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full-service program and they'll seed your lawn every year free of charge. 800-FREE-SEED. NaturalLawn.com. 800-FREE-SEED. And choose my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. Tell them Dawn sent you. See Joe Conklin's benefit comedy show at the Church of the Incarnation in Metro, New Jersey for parishioner Christina McNasby, Saturday, April 20th. Get tickets at JoeConklin.com. JoeConklin.com! Chronic pain, cancer, fatigue? Find out about the benefits of medical hydration therapy on Health Watch with Dr. Molly Fantasia every Sunday morning at 8 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. With so much uncertainty in the world today, you may find yourself wondering, is now even the right time to retire? And so many people are waiting, and those folks are going to be waiting a really long time, I hate to say, because there's no perfect time. The market is always unpredictable and volatile. Fortunately, Jim Cipriati has been helping get people to, through, and beyond retirement for over 25 years. And each week, he wants to help give you that freedom to retire. Listen to Freedom to Retire with Jim Cipriati, Saturday mornings at 9 and Sunday afternoons at 5 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hi, this is Howard Eskin. And one of the best things about Tasty Cake Snacks is you can enjoy them anytime, anywhere. Like in the morning, dipping sticks with a cup of coffee is a quick, tasty way to kickstart the day. And for work or school, it just makes sense. Now, what kid wouldn't be all smiles after having pecan swirls as a lunchtime pick-me-up? Even in the car, Philly traffic isn't so bad when you have crippets for the road. Tasty Cake, delicious anytime, anywhere. Grab your favorite Tasty Cake treat today. Tasty Cake, except no substitutes. I am a waitress, so I know the difference between regular shoes and Skechers slip-resistant work shoes. Skechers slip-resistant work shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. Thanks. While regular shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Prima... Whoa! whoa! And that difference is why I wear Skechers slip-resistant work shoes to keep me safe on my feet. Plus, they're easy to clean and have Skechers exclusive air-cooled memory foam for comfort throughout my shift. Get America's number one selling work shoe at Skechers.com, a Skechers store near you, or wherever work shoes are sold. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at USPS.com slash advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. Are you still holding on to that winter weight? Time to shed that fat and get ready for the warmer weather of spring with NJ Diet. For over a decade, they've helped thousands of people lose a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days. That's nearly twice as fast as weight loss injections and without any of those nasty side effects. NJ Diet uses your hair and saliva along with scans to personalize natural solutions and supplements to get you to shed that fat quickly. Then NJ Diet uses your DNA info to help you keep the weight off. You are fully supervised the entire time to make sure you are burning fat and not just losing water. And you even get the doctor's personal email and phone number. Locations in King of Prussia, Cherry Hill and Newark, Delaware, or available from home with live online consultations. Call 855-5-NJ-DIET. 855-5-NJ-DIET. Or schedule your consult today at njdiet.com. Get slimmer before this summer with njdiet.com. Hi, this is Joe Medercheck, PNC Bank Regional President. At PNC Bank, we're committed to making a difference in the communities we call home. Since 2004, our employees have volunteered over 1 million hours through our Grow Up Great initiative aiming to help young children cultivate a love for learning. We believe everyone deserves the chance to have a strong foundation. We're proud to be part of the Philadelphia, Delaware, and Southern New Jersey communities. PNC Bank, see how we can make a difference for you at pnc.com slash grow up great. PNC Bank, National Association, member FDIC. Calling up Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. All right, Kelly Company, 922, as we continue. Tony Bruno with us for all four hours this morning, live from Florida. Dawn continues her trip through Italy. She'll be back next week. 
Very busy day coming up at 10 o'clock this morning. Alejandro Mayorkas will be on Capitol Hill uh, as he will be uh, before House Republicans testifying yet again. Uh, Also, another story to keep an eye on uh, in the next day or so is the Catherine Herridge story, uh, who the the famed reporter that left uh, Fox News for CBS and then her she had her laptop stolen uh, by uh, not stolen, but taken by CBS executives upon her dismissal. Uh, She. She's apparently going to be breaking her silence as she's in a battle for free speech. Uh, So that's a story that's going to be probably front and center coming up either tomorrow or on Friday. And as Tony Bruno mentioned earlier this morning, uh, economy numbers are in U.S. inflation back on the uptick again, hotter than expected as inflation rises to 3.5 percent. I don't know, Tony, that Bidenomics thing, it's uh, really kicking ass and taking names. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, anybody that goes out and is not uh, sequestered in their basement, and we don't have basements here in Florida, just like they do in you know, a lot of places in Jersey, don't have basements. <laughs> you have to go, you go outside, and yeah. you know that the economy is still bad. Mm-hmm. It's a lot I mean, like there's a lot of people down here in Florida because they're coming down here for the sunshine before right. it gets too hot. Yep. But the bottom line is, it's expensive to do anything. I don't care where you go to eat, where you go to shop, even in Florida. You still look at the beef prices. You still look at the milk and the eggs and everything else. Some egg prices have come down, but for the most part, everything is twice as much as it was four years ago. Yeah, Every- and they'll, they'll tout the economy doing well based off of the stock market. But again, you know, you look at the cost of uh, goods on a daily basis, kitchen table issues, still plaguing millions and millions of Americans, and the economy is a lot like crime. Even if it is better than what the numbers are showing, if you know, if if humanity's not feeling it and they're not really like getting that vibe that they're doing well and they're safe, then that is actual reality, and that's what we're seeing right now. So uh, we'll see how all of that plays out. By the way, speaking of, uh, you, you mentioned the cost of eggs. What are you paying down there, by the way, for steak? Because I, I, I always talk about my my uh, my dreadful grocery store experiences every Friday. I mean, at, at my local yeah, giant. Robert and I go into the supermarket all the time, and you look you look at a roast. Now, some some have them on sale for like six dollars a pound, but you can't get a you can't get a nice two pack of uh, of ribeyes yeah. for less than thirty dollars. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, my yeah. local my local giant for a strip steak or a ribeye is twenty four ninety nine a pound, and yeah, I'm like, my exactly. God, I used to be able to get two of those. You know, five years ago for for twenty five thirty bucks. Now I'm paying twenty four yeah, we... twenty five bucks a shot. At the at the butcher section, they'll also they always have those really nice tomahawks. Yeah, yeah. and two tomahawks. Really, oh. I mean they're nice size. Yeah, but I love two tomahawks. tomahawks. I think the last time we saw it was ninety six dollars. Oh, wow! <laughs> it's like you take out a loan for that. Insane? I know. I love a good tomahawk ribeye, by the way, but I'm not dropping 100 bucks for two of them. Sorry. We'll go elsewhere. All right, 926. I almost blew right through it. It's you time did. for... I did blow through it. Yeah. It's time for the morning mystery movie clip. And now, the morning mystery movie clip on Kale & Company. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Perry, I will give you $1,000 if you say it right now. $1,000? Barry, your friend is a high ruler. You are hiding something. Wait a minute. No, wait. Um, uh, can we just stick to the issue at hand? Oh, you almost had me. But you cannot declare offshore investment losses against future capital gains. Any child knows that. I'll have to ask my accountant about that. <laughs> uh, You know what it is? Be call it 12 at 855-839-1210, and you could win this great prize. <laughs> Caller 12, 855-839-1210. You will win a pair of tickets to see Jeff Lynn's ELO over oh. an out tour on September 21st at the Wells Love Fargo Jeff Center. Lynn. Saw him, uh, we saw, Robin and I saw him a couple years ago at the Wells Fargo Center. Yeah. I mean, he is ELO. He is. Absolutely He's the original is. guy. Yep. And he, I, I, we were hearing now that this is going to be his last tour. Yeah, yeah. Cut it down. Oh. yeah, that's what they're saying. Okay. That's what they're saying. That's Which, why, yeah, you should get your tickets now. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it is seriously the best concert 
Tony and I have ever been to. Wow. Is that right? Well, how about that? Amazing. Yeah. Wow. And that There's says a lot. Because, yeah. 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 All right. Well, you can Phenomenal. get a pair of tickets right now. It's coming up September 21st at the Wells Fargo Center. Call our 12 855 1210 Tickets on sale at Ticketmaster.com. Best of luck. The 9 o'clock hour brought to you by Budget Blinds. Spring is here, and mm-hmm. now is the time to budget. Budget Blinds is your one-stop shop for blind shades, shutters, custom drapery, and motorization. Visit BudgetBlinds.com for a free in-home consultation and the only no-questions-asked warranty in the business budgetblinds.com as somebody who uses budget blinds trust me they are totally worth it they i, I have some motorization on my uh on oh my, yeah on my front blinds look yeah, at you very nice. motorization motorization wow. you wow. press a button and they close and they open yeah. is awesome. that an actual term motorization sure sure that thing got a hemi on it <laughs> I, it doesn't have a hemi like in like tony's truck does but, exactly yeah all right it gets now, the well, stock you know, you know, motor in remember that song motor in that the, kind of motorization? Exactly. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. Okay. You can checking. tell it's a 9 o'clock hour here on Kale & Company. <laughs> it's like a Friday, but we got Bruno, so it's a Wednesday, uh, so it still feels like a Friday. What a joy. <laughs> can I just suck up to you for one second? What a joy it is to do radio with you, my friend. Like, you're such a legend in this business. Well, Not- thanks. I just have fun. You know, this is what we do. We're talking. We're talking about things that everybody can relate yep. to for the most part, except some of the fringe stuff. When you yep. got to get to the fringe. Yep. Because the fringe, life on the fringe is what makes other people function. You know That's what I'm right. Saying? And as Tony Bruno once said on Thank this you. show, we don't care about the climate. Exactly. Just give me the <laughs> damn five day forecast and try to be accurate. That's all I want. Exactly. Coming up next, what's on the cut sheet part do, including women in their 50s and 60s in Pennsylvania dancing to oh. line, oh, you have saying to see this. vote for Joe Biden. Yeah. Oh, good God almighty. Back after this, Kale and Company. <laughs> For more expert appliance shopping advice, here's National Appliance Warehouse's own appliance guru. Hello, let's talk premium. These are top-of-the-line appliances that dream kitchens are made of. If you're planning an investment like this in your home, where you buy is as important as what you buy. At National Appliance Warehouse, we're committed to delivering the superior buying experience you deserve. Our showroom features beautifully displayed premium appliances of every major brand, including highly sought-after Sub-Zero, Wolf & Cove. Our team of gurus is well-versed at guiding you as you navigate the same appliances you'd find in the most magnificent homes and kitchens of cooking enthusiasts. And the National Appliance Warehouse team has the expertise to properly deliver and install your stunning new appliances. Spring into savings at National Appliance Warehouse. Purchase a qualifying Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove appliance package and choose three years of additional warranty or a rebate up to $2,500. Click NationalAppliancewarehouse.com or visit their showroom in tax-free Wilmington today. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. Do you want clean, healthy water for your home? Martin Water Conditioning's non-electric systems provide whole house solutions for softening, filtering, and sterilizing your water. And with a customer appreciation sale, receive up to five. $500 off when purchasing a Kinetico water system, 18 and 48 month special financing, or 10% off the spot free car rent system and more. Call Martin Water, 1 800 853 1093 before April 22nd. Offers cannot be combined or applied to prior sales. At Odyssey, we help protect this planet we all share through our One Thing Sustainability Initiatives. We donate $1 million of media every year to local environmental nonprofit organizations. And this month, our Odyssey team will be out in our local communities cleaning up, planting trees, and more. When we each do one thing, it becomes a hundred, a thousand, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? For more, download the free Odyssey app or go to odyssey.com slash one thing. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, himscom slash J-O-Y. 
Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. If you want jazz music, go to New Orleans. Bagels, New York. And for psychics, think California Psychics. You want the best, you go to the best. At California Psychics, home of free spirits and open minds, we know better than anyone what makes a good psychic. That's why we guarantee, if your reading is life-changing, it's free. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. There's nothing quite like local. Local is your weekly farmer's market or homemade strawberry ice cream. It's live music on the corner, yoga in the park, and a chance to try something new. That's why AARP is local, right here in our community, offering free events and enriching experiences that can help with finances, family, and fun. Join AARP Philadelphia and Longwood Gardens for a free virtual tour of the garden's history on April 23rd. Register at aarp.org slash local. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Follow Talk Radio 1210 on Instagram and Facebook at 1210 WPHD. Kale and Company, it's a Wednesday morning. Hopefully all of you having a great start to your work day. Kale, Bruno, Stalker, Miss Robin, Anthony and Phil. Coming up top of the hour of the Dawn Show, Kathy Barnett in for Dawn again. As Dawn continues her trip throughout Italy. Have we heard from Dawn in Italy yet? Has she posted any pictures? Is she? Uh... I, yes, I have a picture that I'm going to put up on the uh, 1210 WPHT uh uh, Twitter page. Uh, I just haven't done it yet. It's her and her. She the Positano Coast yet? <laughs> Beautiful family. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure she's having a great time with a bunch of listeners. There you go. ConservativeTours.com, ConservativeTours.com. Exactly. Yeah. Coming up so uh, in about yeah, 50. Me too. Oh, it's, me too. It's the best. I'm, I'm the one who approves all of these for all of these hosts, and yet I never get to go on any right. of them. It's amazing. Do we do? You know, if you ever want Tony and I to host something I, like that, I was just yeah. going to say that. Put us was, on the list. I was just going to say that. Go back to Italy. I haven't yeah. been to Italy in a long time. Sorry. Took my honeymoon there, Bruno. Twelve days. Beautiful. Two thousand eight. Man, relatives there. I have more living relatives in Italy than I do in the United States. Yeah. Tony and I have not been to Italy together. It's an what? It's an outrage. I know. Yeah. Have you been to Greece? Uh, no. Okay. I have not. Because mm -hmm. Joe Biden's big over there. He's, they refer to him as Joe Bidenopolis. I've heard that, yeah. Well, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You could be yeah. Tony and By the way, he Tony also Bruno said Anopolis. in another interview yesterday, I don't know if you saw this, the president said in another interview that he was teaching uh, when he was in uh, law school. Uh, I was I was just going to play that. Oh, yes, oh you have that card? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, 937. Nothing goes, nothing goes unnoticed here. Yeah, that's right. right. It's time for What's on the Cut Sheet Part 2. <laughs> What's on 
The Cut Sheet! Part 2. Kale, what's the Cut Sheet Bar do? Sponsored by Budget Blinds. Do you still have Budget Blinds over there? Because I don't have any. Uh, yeah, I just read it last segment. Let me read it again. Budget Blinds. Hold on, let me get the trash can here. Budgetblinds.com. If you ever wanted to see a radio host dig through a garbage can, what's on the Cut Sheet Bar? Look at me. <laughs> here we go. Uh, by the way, I have breaking news, though. Uh-oh. Yeah, you do breaking that. News. Go ahead. You yeah. filibuster we while get to I. The cut sheet. Yeah. yeah. The, it's official from Adam Schefter. The Eagles will play the Green Bay Packers in Sao Paulo, Brazil on Friday, September 6th. Wow. The day after the NFL season kicks off on Thursday night. Isn't uh, Elon Musk involved in a big thing with Brazil right now? Uh, yeah, actually, I've got Elon. On over there? Yeah, Elon's on line one. He wants to comment on that story. Uh, Elon, <laughs> go ahead. Your thoughts. Go yourself <laughs> exactly all right so adam schefter in the eagles the eagles and the packers there you go nice work so budget blinds thank you spring is here yes. and now is the time to budget budget blinds your one-stop shop for blind shade shutters custom drapery and motorization for the best uh no questions asked warranty in the business visit budgetblinds.com uh yes tony bruno you just referenced joe biden saying that he used to teach the second amendment in law school yes he was on with Univision yesterday oh. when he made this these dubious claims. Hard hitting interview um, about the Second Univision. Amendment, gun control, Come on. and all of that nonsense. Uh, this is cut fourteen. Phil, go. I, along with Dan Feinstein, passed the first limitation on assault weapons mm-hmm. and the number of bullets that could be in a in a in a, in a rifle. The idea anybody needs a hundred rounds in a rifle. And an AR-15. Uh, sorry, they cut off there. Yeah. So he was teaching this in law school, huh? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's amazing how many times this guy's in an interview setting where he embellishes, uh, exaggerates, or flat out lies, lies about yeah. his his career resume. I, it's just it's par, it's par for the course with this. And nobody dude. fact checks. No. Nobody, nobody fact checks it. No. Nope. Nobody. No. Nope. 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 You think and Univision has no intention to do it. It's nothing nope. more than a soft landing for Joe. Softball questions. No pushback. No follow ups. And he probably had those questions four days in advance. Uh, he also told Univision uh, that you know the way Trump degrades the minority population and Hispanics. Um, once again, pandering, cut three, Phil, go. I mean, it's just, uh, and think of the things he says. Look at the way he way he talks about minority populations, uh, Hispanics, you know, we're talking about them being, anyway, it's just, yeah, anyway. It's, uh, I can't think of any other time in my lifetime, in history has occurred, that you've had somebody who's had this kind of attitude. So when you have people coming across the border illegally with sinister intentions or a track record and a rap sheet of criminal history, it's wrong to call them a thug or a criminal or an animal. Now, that shouldn't be applied to every single person. The genuine people that are coming here to seek refuge or whatever, even though I don't want them doing it illegally, those people shouldn't be classified that way. But God forbid Trump share the truth about the bad people that are coming across the border. And it's odd coming from that guy right there who didn't he say, if you're black and you don't vote for me, you're yeah. not black. You ain't black. You ain't black. Yeah. Okay. Well, you see what he did. He went to he went to Univision because he's trying to pander for the Hispanic vote because right. he knows Hispanics are very religious and that he he's leaking uh, the support there. So he goes on there and lies. And again, I hate calling people liars. Yep. But there's there is and there was is there an interview or a press conference? Well, he doesn't get press conferences. Is there an interview or a statement that Biden makes that does not have? multiple lies in it every single time he opens his mouth no same thing over and over biden has had a history of making stuff up however um i don't know if you guys have talked about this on the show before but um people with either alzheimer's or dementia there is actually something called confabulation um, that is that like motorization <laughs> on this blind? For a, kind of exactly, but not. Blinds? But Budget confabulation. Blinds, confabulation. I love that song. Is is it? It's a cli- clinical term where people with dementia or Alzheimer's replace their lost memories with false or made up memories. It is a coping mechanism, and in, and it's it's a brain's natural way of coming up with rational thoughts to make sense of what is happening. So this is something that is common in those two um, diseases. But Robin, we were told by the White House physician that Joe is, he's in tip-top shape. Tip-top. He's as sharp as a tack. Yep. 
another confabulation, apparently. That's right. Can you get a Hemi with the confabulation? That's what I want to know. Uh, that was an option. I couldn't afford it. I just tried to keep it as, you know, Same it's here. not basic. I mean, it's got all the tricks. It's got all the bells and whistles. You, you know go. what I'm saying? I hear you. Another throwback to the uh, to the top of the 9 o'clock hour. Uh, th these, these women and men dancing around... Uh, oh yeah, from Pennsylvania, talking about voting for Joe Biden. And no, this is not my mother-in-law. I have confirmed. Uh, if you want to see, <laughs> like we said, we put out a clip yesterday of the CNN anchors dressed up as the sun, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I, and my then, caption on that was was cringe, so is. cringe. This yeah. is so cringe. So go oh. over, go over to YouTube, <laughs> youtubecom slash at twelve ten wphc YouTube. Night of the Living Dead wasn't as scary as this. <laughs> slash at twelve ten wphd where you see a bunch of um, uh, hip white people uh, mm -hmm. dancing around yep. talking about voting for Joe Biden. Yep. Uh, yep. Phil, hep cats more. I mean, they're like hep cats hep from cats. back in the day. <laughs> Philip, if you have this, my friend, please roll it in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh yeah, God. everybody, Pennsylvania! <laughs> Look at this. Keep them bouncing. Look at the yeah. Pennsylvania, oh, you have to get out. All and my mother's friends. Yeah, who's just? You have to vote <laughs> for Biden Harris. <laughs> yeah. The dudes in the back. Because that other guy, yeah. the orange man, the orange man, like this. <laughs> He is going to take away your social security and a lot of you. Yeah. Are... Yeah. Pass me the pot stickers. I was just going to say. And he's going to take away your health care. Is this. Because where's is my this egg right rolls? Now? Is this New Hope? <laughs> this is definitely New Hope. Parents, healthcare, and the orange man wants to stop that. Yep. She's got yeah. TD. You know she has TDS. Oh, and there's definitely there are edibles on that oh, table. Oh, definitely, I guarantee you. And the dudes. Yeah. Yep. How about all the dudes? Man? I know. Oh yeah. Yeah, bro. Just yeah, the, these around. are that right there is the lady who's got the BLM sign in yard. Yep. She's oh, got yeah. the Ukraine flag. She, if she's yep. on Twitter, she has her vaccination status in her profile. <laughs> what about the coexist? Uh, oh, yeah, definitely coexist. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely hate, coexist. Hate definitely. has no home here. <laughs> yep. But if, if somebody showed up on her doorstep, she would be panicked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that right there, folks, that is what you are up yep. against on November yep. 5th. Is that Bucks County? Have we determined where that? It just says they Pennsylvania are? voters. I am almost guaranteeing. It says Pennsylvania voters. I am almost guaranteeing you guys that that is like New Hope or uh, what's that other Buckingham? Mm -hmm. One of those areas out there where yep. where rich elitist white people live. Maybe the main yeah. line, Montgomery County. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, they look a little too hippie-ish for okay. the yeah, main line. Yeah. All right. The main line is. I, I can smell the. I can smell the. Uh, the patchouli in the back <laughs> you room. Can definitely, coming out. You can definitely. The patchouli. <laughs> uh, we discussed this uh, a lot in the six o'clock hour. This is the NPR editor, uh, Yori. Uh, what's his name here? Yori Silverman. No. Emmerman. No. It's yeah. Yuri Berliner. Yeah. Uh, Berliner. He, yeah, that he, dude. He he basically came out and said that like there's too much groupthink and. NPR is a, is a liberal wasteland. Uh, he was on with uh, Chris Cuomo last night discussing the editorial that he wrote about NPR. By mm. the way, your tax dollars hard at work. Mm -hmm. uh, this is yep. just a little bit of that interview. Cut 11, Phil, uh, go. I want to bring in Brother Berliner because that was a brave thing he did, man. Your man. competition is your critic base uh, in this business. And you knew when you wrote this. You weren't going to get a chorus of amens. You were going to get people probably digging through your garbage uh, and saying it's not true. And sure enough, colleagues came forward to do what you had to expect they were going to do, which is say, we disagree. Uh, Yuri's entitled to his, his opinion, but we disagree about the nature and quality of our reporting. What do you make of their response? What do you make of the attention? I'm not surprised by the response that, you know, came from management and the same managers that I've been making a lot of these points about. Um, and, and they're certainly entitled to that perspective. I will say I've had a lot of support from colleagues, and many of them unexpected, who say they agree with me. Some of them say this confidentially, but um, I think there's been a lot of uh, response saying, look, these are things that need to be addressed. We haven't. We've been too reluctant, too frightened, too, too timid to deal with these things. And I think that uh, this is this is the right opportunity to bring it all out in the open. So for those who are sitting there saying, I knew it, NPR, those laconic lefties, you know, with that <laughs> slow delivery and just feeding us all of this 
Are you saying that's the truth or are you saying it's something that has evolved? What do you want people to feel about NPR and what you feel about the media in general? I think it's evolved. You know, I've been at NPR a long time, 25 years. You could say I'm a lifer. Um, and it's a place I've always loved working. But when I started, there was a liberal orientation, but I think it, we were more guided by curiosity, open-mindedness. You know, you said, talked about policy. Um, we were kind of nerdy and really d- like to dig into things and understand the complexity of things. That I think that's evolved over the years into a much narrower kind of niche thinking, a group think that's really clustered around a very s- selective progressive views that don't en- uh, they don't allow enough air enough enough spaciousness to consider all kinds of perspectives and as soon as Uri got off doing his hit with Cuomo before an audience of 17 total people, the suits at NPR crafted up the email saying, we would like to thank Uri for his participation, and we wish him well in his future endeavors. I give him credit for coming out and saying it. That takes some guts. Yep. By, by the way, Jonathan Tarley nails it again, as always. Yeah. He says, of course, there remains the question of why the public should give huge amounts of money to yep. a media outlet that is so politically biased. Yep. Mm-hmm. Roughly half of the country that supports NPR with tax dollars embraces the viewpoints that are routinely blocked from its airwaves. Yep. And that would be Robin's mom. I hate to throw her under the bus yeah, here. God love yeah. my mom. I mean, she's an amazing woman, but her her political leanings are definitely one-sided. It's not even about leanings. It's about basically agreeing with everything they say, even though there's no other context or, or no other voice allowed. Yep. As it turns out, 87 people who work there, all Democrats, zero Republicans. And it's, it's only getting worse. I mean, two weeks ago, we were talking about the story about Ronna McDaniel. She leaves the RNC. MSNBC hires her. And then Maddow and Joy Reid and Ari Melber and all these hosts basically boycott management and make them pretty much bully them into reversing ship and reversing course. And then they fire her because, God forbid, you bring somebody on that's got a different viewpoint and let's be honest, Ronald McDaniel's not some super conservative, okay? Can we also get the taxpayers out of funding? If, if, exactly. If NPR is such a uh, powerhouse and so many people like it and so many people agree with it, then let it stand on its own. Mm-hmm. Let advertisers, like Budget yeah. Blinds, like yes. Jerry Hill Volvo. Oh, like, and they're like advertiser-friendly yeah, anyway. All the all, all these uh, sponsors that support this radio station, let them go out and find sponsors. Mm-hmm. Like, why Why is it on the uh, the American people to fund this the, this network i agree it's it's just it's 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 crap it's totally outrageous I, and I think, right. I think the two things that uh, are paid for by taxpayers that would make everybody happy um would be npr and, yep. planned, parenthood. and planned parenthood, and planned parenthood. <laughs> it's true. i mean those two things yep. if you don't agree with it you're still having to pay and i think that it would make it would make a lot of things a lot easier if defund just... npr defund planned parenthood exactly uh, and fund this show and fund the Tony Bruno yes. and, and Nick Kale and, of course, Greg Stocker. Yes. And even the boys in the back there, Anthony. And, yes. Uh, yeah, thank you. And, and, uh, I appreciate and, that. Yes, and definitely fund Bill my personal back. bank account. I'll give you the uh, credit card number later. Kama uh, Harris was on the I've Had It podcast. Oh, <laughs> Is that hosted by Harry Mays? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the Get Out. That's the Get, Get Out, Out podcast. podcast. Yeah, you're right. I've never heard what of this. What's going we... on back there, podcast? <laughs> we played a clip from this the other day. Right. Um, Who are these two? Women I have no there? idea, just guys. Absolutely, dregs of society. <laughs> I apologize. Bad job out of me. I should have done a little more research on the I've Had It podcast, but truth, truthfully, I don't care that much. <laughs> uh, sh- this is her delivering a word salad, explaining the nature of democracy to okay. these two yeah. ladies. Uh, this is cut 12, Philip, go. It's important to, to, to see that, you know, the nature of democracy, there's a duality to it. It has two sides to yeah. it. Yeah. On the one hand, there's incredible strength, yeah. right, that when a democracy is intact, what it does for its people mm in terms of the strength it gives its people and protects in terms of individual freedoms and rights, right? And liberties. There's an incredible strength in that, what it does for its people when it is intact. On the other hand, democracy, extraordinarily fragile. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. Or to take it away by your president. That's by nature what a democracy Mm -hmm. is. Yeah. It is about the people. 
There we go. You know, it's one thing to disagree with somebody or to be turned off by somebody's politics. But I don't know. Maybe this is what it's like to be a Trump hater where the moment you bring up Trump, lefties shut their ears and brains off. The second I hear her start talking, she could be saying the most important thing of all time and the most accurate thing of all time. And I automatically just assume she has no idea what the hell she's talking about. Because for three and a half years, she has proven she has no idea what the hell she's talking about. Can I, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to cast aspersions here because I don't know these two, uh, these two hosts of this podcast. Um, to me, this is just my opinion, but these two look like men. I didn't notice that. Is that? Can we go back to a still shot, a freeze frame? No, nah, the one chick on the right, the the one up f- closer to the front, she's got like a really bad beak nose. And okay, again, it's not okay. my style to criticize or make yeah. observations. I thought these were the the real housewives of Marcus Hook. Oh, I get <laughs> you. But I, I don't think the, so. They, I, so. I don't know who they are. So but if there are a couple of uh, far left broads uh, who have a podcast <laughs> with a just, clever name. It, if you go to frame thirteen, there, Phil, like, like How from dare they? from the side, the one kind of looks like a dude, but that's just that's just my opinion. No, uh, I think they're real women. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not seeing any dudeish. Uh, well, there's the free there's they're the freeze ugly. frame right they're there. Just ugly yeah, women. I get you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more. That's why I had to clarify. That's why because I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. You never know these days. You never know these days. Uh, <laughs> this and Kamala Harris wanted to scare the living you know what out of everybody by saying this could be the last Democratic election. This is the last election, yeah. folks. We ever have. Yeah. Uh, this is cut thirteen. Yeah. Phil, go. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this genuinely could be the last democratic election we ever have you're right are you sure listen to what he said sure, he's telling you dictators aren't a dictator for one day and then it's you sure let about the that, people Tony? decide no and i'm going to tell you as vice president i've now met with over 150 world leaders presidents prime ministers chancellors and kings and in the last three international trips i've taken yeah um which are you know going back to the end of last year through this year yeah. um World leaders have come up to me expressing their real concern. You know, we we lived we lived the Trump presidency for four years. So uh, the last time I checked, democracy is still here. Elections are still being had. You know, it'd be one thing if uh, Trump had never served and never uh, run for office or anything. Exactly. But yeah. we we have four years to go off of. So you know, the, to me, the threat to democracy is the states that are trying to take the Republican front runner. Oh, I don't know, off of ballots for the people yeah. to select. But that's just me. All right. That'll do it. Nice uh, rendition of what's on the cut sheet part do. We'll wrap up this Wednesday with Today in Music History. What happened on this day in music history? Music history. history. On Kale and Company. Today, April 10th, we celebrate the birthdays of Brian <laughs> Setzer, Katrina Leskinich of Katrina and the Waves, and Mike Bushock of Stained. We also lost Sam Kinison on this day in 92, wow. who appeared in multiple videos. Love that guy. Albums include Sonic Temple by the Colt from 89, Blackout by the Scorpions in 84, and Dude. Hell Yeah released their debut album in 2007. One notable single, Huey Lewis released The Hard Rock and Roll in 84. Also, Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy was certified gold in 73. In 67, Marvin Gaye recorded his version of I Heard It Through the Grapevine, and Maiden topped the British chart at 82 with the number of the beast. And lastly, on this day in 65, a British school in Wrexham, North Wales, asked parents to keep children in school uniform and not to send them to school in corduroy trousers like the ones worn by the greatest rock and roll band of all time, the Rolling Stones. Ah, mm-hmm. Or Kale cool, and yes. Company. I'm Phil Omquist. And don't wow. forget, Sam Kennison made a great cameo in Married with Children. Of course. Never forget that, of folks. Course. Great. One of the greatest. His, great, his greatest line is, uh, say it. Say, say it. it. Say it. <laughs> Back to school. Back, Back to, to school. Is an all exactly right. Yes. One of the greatest comedians of all time, yes. in my, in my opinion. All right. Yeah, let's absolutely. wrap it up with uh, who won Twitter today. <laughs> Who won Twitter? Ornery Hounds wins Twitter. Uh, throwing Ornery, this back to yeah. uh, 745. He says, I've been told the gaseous moon is caused by cheap liquor. Oh, That's true. Yeah, yeah. Can sure. confirm. Bank, bankers Club will do that I saw that them you. opening up for uh, 
for the Zioli Army. The Zioli Army, day. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go. All right, Tony Bruno, it was a <laughs> blast, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you, Miss Robin. You guys were both Thank great. Thank you, guys. It was a lot of fun. They'll Four be... hours. That went really fast. Yes. They'll be back with us next Wednesday. That's correct. Yes. Next Wednesday? Yes. You're damn right. Yeah. All right, Mary Walter will be in tomorrow. Sean Farish on Friday. Stay tuned. The Dawn Show is next. Kathy Barnett in the saddle. And as John Fetterman would say, Good night, everybody. Do you have shoeboxes full of photos? Today only, radio listeners get VIP access to the new Photo Legacy Box. Get your family's photos professionally scanned for as low as $0.07, cents, which is 76% less than what other brands charge. As the world's largest digitizer, you know you can trust Legacy Box to digitize your entire collection of 4x6 photos. Everything from the embarrassing haircut you had in the 90s to photos of your great-grandma's wedding. Visit LegacyBox.com slash value to get 200 photos scanned starting at just $19.95. Oh, and don't forget, Legacy Box also digitizes over 15 other types of analog media. So you can get your favorite memories on VHS or grandpa's film reels from the 40s digitized too. Take advantage of this exclusive offer on the new Photo Legacy Box today and preserve your past for as low as 7 cents. Go to LegacyBox.com slash value. That's LegacyVox.com slash value. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. If you're dealing with inflammation or stiff joints, then Glyco Plus from Rescue Natural Supplements can be your ticket to a healthier spring. Glyco Plus features a unique blend of green-lipped muscle complex and UC2 collagen, specifically designed to support joint health. Collagen, a vital component of joint cartilage, plays a crucial role in maintaining strength and flexibility. And right now, Rescue Glyco Plus is buy one, get one free for anyone with our exclusive radio code. Just use the code RELIEF to double up your order for free. Again, that's R-E-L-I-E-F. Call them today at 800-26-ALIVE, 800-262-5483. Speak to a knowledgeable rescue product consultant. You can also use the code online when you visit res-q.com, res-q.com. Get back into action with less pain and more comfort. Again, use the code RELIEF. Buy one, get one free on Rescue Glyco Plus. At Cherry Hovava, we have absolutely incredible offers, incredible offers, and a plethora of both new and certified Volvos from which to choose. We are eager to offer amazingly competitive prices because we need the room for all of our construction vehicles. When leasing or purchasing a new or certified Cherry Hovava, you become part of our team. Join Cherry Hovava for the pricing and attention you deserve. I am Judith Krupnik, president of Cherry Hovava. Texting privacy policy in terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting enrolls for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop, opt out. Go to nomoredraftywindows.com for full offer details. Attention all homeowners. Do you know when to replace your windows? Feeling too hot or cold? It's time to replace. Fog between the glass. Time to replace. Spending too much on expensive energy that literally goes out the window? It's definitely time to replace. If you've put off replacing windows in your home because it's too expensive, here's great news. You can now get a free in-home window consultation and free price quote from Renewal by Anderson, the company with the most five-star reviews among leading full-service window replacement companies. And right now, you can save $359 off every window and $887 off every door. Just text DOOR to 200-300 for your free consultation on top-quality affordable windows or patio doors for no dollars down, no payments, and no interest for a year. That's right. You don't pay a dime for an entire year. Plus, save $359 off every window and $887 off every door. But hurry, these big dollar savings end this month. Text DOOR to 200-300 right now. Text the word DOOR to 200-300. Don't wait. Text DOOR to 200-300. Hi, it's John DeMassey, host of Health Watch, Sunday mornings at 8 and again at 4 here on Talk Radio 1210. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with cancer or undergoing treatments that cause severe fatigue or brain fog, medical hydration may be right for you. Dr. Molly Fantasia of Innovative Medical Associates has more than 30 years experience in helping cancer patients to improve their quality of life. We believe in medical hydration. We've improved it so much that we are able to help people across the board with challenges before they become chronic. Nutrients delivered right to the cells support your immune system through surgery, chemotherapy, or wherever you may be on your cancer journey. Visit InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com to schedule a free consultation with Dr. Molly in their Marlton, New Jersey office. And join us on Sunday mornings at 8 and again at 4 for Health Watch to learn more about the benefits of medical hydration for cancer, autoimmune diseases, and more. The IRS is the 
the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes, and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Get slimmer for the summer by losing a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days with NJ Diet. Call 855-5NJ-DIET or go to NJDiet.com. Get ready for spring with NJDiet.com. Don't miss Good News in Real Estate with Deanne Katsaros and Mark Cumberland, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Find out all you need to know about home buying and selling. Considering a career in real estate? Visit PhiladelphiaRealEstateClasses.com. Good News in Real Estate, Saturdays 1 p.m. on WPHT. Hi, folks. This is Norman the Floorman. It was my wife's birthday. She told me she wanted a fur coat, so I gave her a mouse trap. I told her, honey, this is a starter kit. Whether you need carpet, LVT, hardwood, tile, or area rugs for your residential or commercial project, we've got you covered. Savings up to 50%, and that ain't chop liver. Visit us in Bryn Mawr, Conchahokan, or call us at 800-220-RUGS for your home or business, and we'll bring the store to your door. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things for our planet. Earth Day is April 22nd. During the spring and summer, make use of the warmer outdoor weather. Hang your clothes outside to dry instead of using the dryer. Not only will you save electricity and money, but your clothes will get that fresh outdoor scent. When we each share our one thing, it becomes a hundred things, a thousand things, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? Hi, Stephanie from Emmons. Are you not loving your bathroom? Is the King's Throne looking a little outdated and run down? Let Emmons Design Specials design a bathroom that you will love and one that Emmons will redo in as little as one day. An affordable, maintenance-free bathroom with little to no inconvenience to you and your family. With finance options available, there's really only one problem. Your bathroom will be so nice, your king may never want to come out. Call Emmons today at 856-885-6677 or visit us on our website at callemmons.com. Talk Radio 1210. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Live and local from Philadelphia. The Don Stenzling Show on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Yeah, if you don't like me, that's your problem. Hey, hey. <laughs> Good morning, Pennsylvania. How are you? This is Kathy Barnett. I am standing in for the great Don on the Don Stensland show. She and her family are traveling, I believe, the southern part of Italy. Thank you so much for being here. Is this hump day? Hump day? Yes, already. <laughs> so excited. I know time just flies. Okay, to kick it off, I have Joshua Phillip on the line. Hey, Josh, how are you? Doing well. How about yourself? I am doing well. I know you don't know me that well, but let me tell you, I i mean, you are just one of my go-to people to find out what's really going on. Guys, let me introduce you to Joshua Phillips. He is an author, award-winning investigative reporter with Epic Times, host of Epic's Crossroads program. He is a recognized expert on unrestricted warfare, uh, asymmetrical hybrid warfare, and subversion. Maybe if we have time, Joshua, maybe you can explain to us what is unrestricted warfare and asymmetrical <laughs> hybrid warfare, because I feel like I'm living through a little bit of that right now. Uh, I No, no problem. Yeah, I texted you as soon as I finished watching uh, uh, your um, late one of your latest episodes, 
uh, regarding uh, illegal I um, immigration and you making the claim that illegals are voting in our elections. Now, that sounds like a conspiracy theory, Joshua. I don't know. What's your evidence for that? Okay, so let, let's put it this way. Whenever it's raised in Congress, and you have one congressman being like, illegal aliens, they're voting in the elections. My you know, comrades across the aisle are trying to get them to vote in the elections. The immediate rebuttal is this. They say, you're crazy. They're not voting in federal elections. And what they're doing when they say that is they're using a very clever play on words to hide what's really going on. Because when they say they're not voting in federal elections, you know, oh, you're all a bunch of crazy conspiracy theorists. Yep. They're not voting in federal elections. They're hiding the fact that they're voting at the municipal level. They're voting at the local level. And there's a lot of states across the U.S. that have legalized this. And so what is happening is that a few different areas, one, again, they can vote again for, you know, the head of your school board. They can vote for your local representatives. Um, this is changing the basic nature of representative, representative government, which is the basis of our, you know, we, have, we're, we live in a, you know, of course, a constitutional republic based on a representative democracy system. We elect representatives to represent us in the government, which is what Congress is. And so when you change the nature of who is of, of the issues that our politicians are representing us on by having them instead, you know, stand for people who are non-American citizens who are living off handouts oftentimes, uh, you know, whose interests and policies are fundamentally different from American citizens, mm. you begin to change the country. And then the other side, of course, is the census. Uh, they're, being, they're being counted in the census and every single Democrat in Congress voted to keep illegal immigrants on the census. That changes, of course, the amount of money every state gets. That changes, of course, the number of house seats they get. And that you guys also did changes a really notably good, electoral you, college votes. Yeah, and you guys did a really good job in breaking that down. I want you to break that down a little bit further, but I'm going to have Anthony to play a portion of uh, of what you presented in that episode because you know because you have you know we have a lot of people from the left democrats who listen to this show as well it's the number one talk show out of philadelphia uh and, and i know they're listening because they're always on my twitter trying to critique trying to critique something so <laughs> so that so that they don't think you and i who tend to be more on the you know we tend to lean more right libertarian even uh, but so that they don't think we're making this up, I just want to play a little bit of the dialogue that was in your episode. Can you start, Anthony? Can I ask, Mr. Chairman, you're from New York. Thanks to New York City's council, um, beginning January 9th, 2023, more than 800,000 non-citizens will be eligible to vote in municipal elections in New York. Is that? Do you agree with that policy? No, nor uh, non-citizens will not be eligible to, to vote in New York. They never have been. Well, they, they were prior in the 19th century eligible to vote in New York. Well, no, this is and a recent action. It was no, just passed in no, December. No, that, that, that is not correct. Uh, Non-citizens uh, have not been eligible to vote in New York or, for, as far as I know, in any other state uh, since the 19th century. That's not true. The New York City Council voted in December to allow this. It begins January 9, 2023. Cities in Vermont and Maryland already allow this, and similar measures are under consideration in Illinois, Maine, and, and uh, Massachusetts right now. If the gentleman will yield? Yes. Uh, I believe those are um, considerations of allowing votes in municipal elections only. Right, but, but th th thank you. That's the point. <laughs> Everybody wants to know at home, why would they allow this? Guys, they're allowing it because they're going to turn them into voters. Okay. Anthony, they already are so doing this. Yes. Okay. Now, I played, now that's kind of a long play of that, but I wanted it to be in context. This is you showing a clip in your video. You guys, please, if you haven't signed up for Epic Times, you really need to. I, I just love the way that you guys, I mean, it's just, it, it's just the facts, please. The facts, ma'am. That's all I want. And what you're showing there is, you know, um, um, uh, n now current House Speaker uh, Johnson posing a question to uh, Nadler about uh, illegals being allowed to vote in uh, over 800,000 of them being allowed to vote. Democrats passing a bill that would allow roughly 800,000 illegals in New York to vote. And then Natler kind of, you know, doing the word salad game and then eventually conceding the point that, yes, 
we are allowing them to vote, but only at the local level. So don't get your panty in a wad. Just relax, people. <laughs> it's not at the federal level. Help us understand a couple of things. Why would Democrats? Oh, oh, and, and then the end of that clip is Johnson saying this is the reason why Democrats have opened up the gates of our country and are allowing our nation to be invaded by all of these illegals because they want them to vote. So help us understand why would Democrats want to dilute because they're always talking about saving the democracy why would they want to dilute the democracy by allowing these illegals to vote and then secondly help us understand why should we care i mean it's not like according to natler they're going to vote at the federal level so why should we care yeah well so again you know this is changing the nature of what the voter wants Because, you know, I mean, like if if I go to cast my vote on Election Day, typically I'm voting for like, you know, I'm voting for public safety. I'm voting for maybe some security measures. Maybe, you know, I think funny enough, Americans are kind of divided now between whether we give money to Israel or give money to Ukraine. You know, we're we're casting our votes for the issues like this. Uh, We're deciding where our tax money is going. We're deciding, you know, what is necessary for the country or not. We're deciding things for the future of our children and such. When you have people who are coming in who are being promised, you know, because they're they're put on the amnesty system and they're given parole when they come here, uh, they're being given free housing, they're being given given free food, uh, you know, free cars in some cases. Uh, In New York, they're given uh, free prepaid debit cards. Uh, In some cases, some cases like in Chicago and, you know, some other areas, they're getting they're getting even, uh, you know, vouchers where they can go buy they can rent a house and buy furniture. You can't even make this up. You can't make this up, can you? (laughs) And so, you know, what are you going to vote for? Are you going to vote to keep that or are you going to vote to support it? And, And it's as simple as that, because that's what they're voting for. Donald Trump is saying day one he's going to deport them. Who, who do you think they're going to vote for? So do you for? think they're going to vote for um, a party that is saying day one we're going to get you up out of here? Or are they going to vote for the party that is giving well, them free exactly, shoes, exactly. free and, dental, free health care? And so in a certain in a certain way, they're kind of solidifying a voting base through the nature of the handouts and through the nature of how they're running this crisis. But now why and should so we if care? They give why should we care? The right to vote. So why should we care well, because, at the low? I mean, because they're only doing it at the local level, Joshua. You seem a little tight, you know, a little a little tightly wound. Yeah. It's only at the the local level. It's not like they're going to participate in the federal election. Yeah. So the issue is the local level. Again, this is changing the nature of what America is. This can this can fundamentally change our political system How? if we're not careful. How? Because again. Uh, the American system is based on representative democracy. We elect people to represent our interests in the halls of Congress. And when you fundamentally change what the people want by bringing in voters who want something different from what the American citizen wants, you alter the government. Well, you do a really good job also uh, uh, in this episode on two things. One, you walk us through how our census, for example, is based on population size. And so if you are now counting, as the Supreme Court said we must, illegals now, if you have more illegals in a particular, I mean, in New York or in California, then those places get more congressional seats. You also talked about, I mean, we know that here in Pennsylvania prior to Uh, A couple of years ago, we had 20 electoral college votes, but because young people can't get jobs and it's so expensive to live here in Pennsylvania, young people are fleeing Pennsylvania. And now we drop down to 19 electoral college votes. But these illegals, if they're being counted, well, they get to increase the number of electoral college votes, which may help a particular presidential candidate actually solidify a win. That's true. Uh, One of the arguments about that would be, oh, most of the illegal immigrants are being brought into Texas and Florida and so on. But the other side of it is that they arrive there, but then they are shipped elsewhere. Uh, (laughs) The way the whole system works is that the DHS and Department of Home, sorry, Department of Homeland Security and Border Patrol, they run processing facilities, the, the areas where they register them for, you know, amnesty. During that process, they give them free airplane tickets and they give them free bus tickets. And so they they can ship them anywhere in the country they want. The initial port of entry would be Texas or Florida or wherever else. But that's not where they stay. 
And so there's a system to send them elsewhere. And it's not just Governor Greg Abbott doing it. This is the Department of Homeland Security doing it. Right. right, exactly. Right. So now the government can pick and choose where they want to shore up some votes. But now the other thing that I thought you did a brilliant job of, of kind of walking people through is that let's say that these illegals that they that they are running or, or that they're voting at the local level but then their local person that they want in office you know maybe they go from a local council member to the mayor to the governor and now who knows or to congress right so now they're at the federal level so they can impact that too something else you said because i know you have to go so I'm, I'm talking fast trying to squeeze it all in but you introduced the con uh um uh uh, I, I, I want to say concept, but I think it's more than a concept because they're actually, they've implemented it. It's called the Global Compact for Migration. And I went and looked it up. Right. I printed it off. They have a Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. And it goes to something that I say often is that what we're seeing, the flooding of our of our nation, the invasion of our nation, this is not organic. This is very intentional and everything that comes with it. Our our government is taking part of a global pro, a global compact of a safe and orderly and regular migration. So this migration, they intend for it to be regular. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so I, I've done on the ground investigations into this, including in Panama, including in Mexico, including California and Texas along the border on both sides. And basically what is happening right now is that when Barack Obama was president, he brought the United States into what is called the Global Compact for Migration. It's, it's a United Nations agreement. He bypassed Congress by calling it a compact okay. rather than a treaty, mm -hmm. because normally you need the two-thirds vote from Congress to pass that. Mm -hmm. But what this did was establish an international agreement to facilitate mass migration. And that's why we're giving money to the United Nations, you know, International Organization for Migration to run a lot of the operations. That's why the U.N. is so heavily involved all throughout Latin America, facilitating the movement of people north. That's why our taxpayer dollars are going to NGOs uh, running the whole show, not just here in the U.S., but even in Europe and their uh, migrant crisis. This is an organized program that our own elected officials brought us into. Trump got us out of it. One of the first things Biden did when he came back into office and brought us back into it. And so this is not some random thing. It is being financed by the American taxpayer, and it's being run through a government program through an agreement with the U.N. And we, the American taxpayers, are paying for it. Now, it's one thing for the rest of the world to want our demise, right? Because this invasion into our country, it is changing us culturally, politically, economically, demographically, and it's overwhelming our systems. We're already looking at our prison system. We're looking at the number of rapes and murders. And now we have a, a Satanist with just fat, some, some, some leader of a group called Satan's uh, from some other part of the world was just um, reported on in Texas. We're looking at our, our, our hospital systems are being overwhelmed, being left with millions of dollars of unpaid bills. So it's one thing for the rest of the world to want to overwhelm us and to, and to, um, and to weaponize our open borders against us and get bad people into our country. But why, oh why, would Americans vote to undermine themselves? I, I don't think the average American is even aware this is going on. In fact, I even think that it's not even necessarily a partisan issue. I think most Democrat voters probably wouldn't support it technically either if they knew the full details. But what's happening is there's a small subset of politicians who understand the kind of global game at play, and they understand the global agendas, they understand they can get a, they can get a permanent voting base that is, has a radically different set of interests than the American citizen. And there's levels at this at the you know, local U.S. political level where it's, again, solidifying a voting base. There's the U.N. level of the Agenda 2030 and the 17th sustainable. Uh, sustainability goals, uh, which include, for example, global equity. And then there's also U.S. adversaries, China, Russia, Iran, others uh, that are talking about weaponized migration, ways of weakening the United States, making us chaotic internally, uh, you know, bankrupting the hospital system and so on, uh, that are doing this intentionally all for their own different reasons. 
don't we want to just be nice and help people? I mean, we have so much here in our country. Why not? I mean, aren't we all just humans and we want good for everyone? Well, I think I think it's an argue. So I can tell you when I was talking to people, I mean, honestly, some of the stories brought me to tears. Like I was crying at some points. The, yeah. the people I, I met a lot of people who are dealing with really terrible things. Um, countries like Ecuador, where gangs basically control the whole country. Um, I talked to people from China who are legitimately fleeing religious persecution and other, and other things under the Chinese Communist Party. But the other side of it is, you know, there's always going to be poverty. There's always going to be problems in the world. And should it be on the American taxpayer, basically, to become like, you know, the big daddy of like the entire world's population, um, especially when the nature of migration these days is not necessarily like, you know, we, we can't support all these people. A better solution would be that maybe we could help fight crime or maybe help get rid of the gangs in some of these countries. But, you know, in, in, in El Salvador, where the, you know, the president now is trying to get rid of the gangs, we're criticizing him for it rather than helping him do it. And so we're not really fixing the problems. We're, we're more like subsidizing the problems by allowing people to leave the country rather than demand change when things reach a breaking point. Uh, we're allowing these problems to subsist by opening the, you know, the pressure valve, so to speak, to let people just simply leave and seek a better life, you know, mostly off the American taxpayers and our welfare system, rather than helping them fix the problems where they're at. Yeah, because so we certainly we're not, give them a lot of money. We're not helping anybody. Yeah. And, we're not helping the world with this. And last question, because I know you have to go. Thank you so much for being so generous with your time. Last question. Okay. At, towards the end of that episode, you talk about walking on the other side of the southern border in Mexico and literally walking on top of, it's, it's, the way you described it, it, sound, it sounded like an inch deep, thick of IDs that before people come into America, they discard their identification so that they can adopt new identification once they cross over into our country. Is that, did, I mean, am I, did I hear that correctly? And why would they want to adopt different ID and uh, assume a different identification? Yeah, so yeah, so during uh, some of my previous reporting, I actually went to the Mexico side of the Rio Grande. And basically what happens is people discard their identities, they cross over, and then they just turn themselves into Border Patrol or, you know, National Guard or whoever's on the other side of the border. And then they process them and then release them into the U.S. That, that's how the system works. Uh, when they say their the arrests are up, that means they're processing them. They're not deporting them. And so that, that's just how it works. But as part of that process, People take their passports, bus tickets, airplane tickets, IDs, driver's licenses, and they just throw them on the ground on the Mexico side. And it's not exaggerating. They're literally covering the ground, maybe not an inch thick, but covering the ground without more than an inch between each one is, is, a, is a pretty accurate description. And they do that to defraud the amnesty system because a lot of them are coming from countries that would not be eligible for amnesty. A lot of them have been residing in countries long enough where they would not be eligible for amnesty. And so just in massive numbers, they know that if they lie about their identity, which they can do because there's nothing on the books and no way to. I mean, no like, how would them. we know who they are? We don't. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's literally whatever they say, whatever name they give is their name, whatever date of birth they give is their age. And so you can have a 30-year-old guy being like, you know, I'm Maria and I'm 12 years old. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> and they have to take it. There's nothing they can do about oh, it. Oh, Lord, Jesus, help us. Joshua, thank you so much for your time. I tr again, I truly appreciate all that you, all that you, all that all of you do over there um, at Epic Times. Uh, this is Joshua Phillips, guys, Crossroads program on Epic Times. Joshua, have a wonderful day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, guys, listen, call in. And in fact, I would love for a Democrat. I would love for a Democrat who is sympathetic towards the illegals who are coming in and who agree that we should keep our borders open even. I would love for you to call in. This will not this is not a gotcha moment. I'm not going to talk over you. I want I want I mean, if you have heard what Joshua just said um, at the top of the hour, I would love and you still hold your beliefs. I would love to have a dialogue. Let me tell you, this is what I do. 
I walk into Black Lives Matter rallies and I take the stage. Even when I'm not invited, I did it. I got the video footage to prove it. I would literally, they wouldn't invite me. I'm running in the 2020 uh, uh, race at that time. I'm in the general election. I need to be in front of as many potential voters as possible. Black Lives Matter were hosting all these rallies, if you guys remember back in the day. And I mean, you don't get a bunch of black people, hundreds and hundreds of black people coming to a political rally and they would not invite me. I know. Go figure, Anthony. I'm black. You would think and and I'm black and I was the first black person to ever run for this particular for congressional seat. You would think Democrats would love that. Right. But they would not invite me. You don't bend the knee to their narrative. I don't you know, I don't think the way these white liberals tell me I should think, right? Because I have the crazy belief of I'm not a slave and you don't get to tell me what I should, how I should and should not think. And so they would not invite me. So I just started showing up at Black Lives Matter rally. I take the stage, take the mic and say, what are you going to do? I'm black. (laughs) And my life matters. And let me tell you, black people loved it every single time I got an ovation. Why? Because black people are not special little unicorns. We want what everybody else wants. White people, do you want safe streets? Guess what? Black people do too. White people, do you want good schools for your kids? Guess what? Black people do too. Shocking. Yeah. I know, right? Like we don't want our, our streets riddled with bullets and ducking and dodging just to go get the mail. And so white people we want it too so again (laughs) i will not blast you democrat liberal even communist if you call and act like you got some sense i would love for you to call in and let's have a dialogue the the number is 855-839-1210 855-839-1210 i would love it okay see y'all on the other side Listen to Joe Yakovich on The Heart of Your Money, Sunday mornings at 9 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Learn about investing, tax strategies, and more. Joe Yakovich on The Heart of Your Money, Sunday mornings at 9. For a complete list of Talk Radio 1210 WPHT's contest rules, go to 1210WPHT.com slash rules. Chronic pain, cancer, fatigue? Find out about the benefits of medical hydration therapy on Health Watch with Dr. Molly Fantasia every Sunday morning at 8 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost monthly to month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out of pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800 403 5569 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-403-5569. That's 800-403-5569. What do you have to lose? Call 800-403-5569. Again, 800-403-5569. Do you have a life insurance policy of $100,000 or more that you don't need? Well, don't lapse or surrender your policy. You might be sitting on a gold mine. That's right. You may be able to sell all or part of your life insurance policy to Coventry for cash or a combination of cash and coverage with no future premiums, even a term policy. Call Coventry Direct at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. For over 25 years, we've helped thousands of people sell their policies. And we can probably help you, too. Call us today at 800-411-8300 or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. Call now. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel, in partnership with Valley Forge Casino, is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers, you get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. 
That's 200 bucks you can use to bet the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash DOM. FanDuel.com slash D-O-M. Make that first bet a big win. FanDuel Sportsbook is the official partner of 1210 WPHT. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And again, FanDuel.com slash DOM is the way to go for that big win. You have to be 21 plus, present in Pennsylvania, first online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required, bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem, 1-800-GAMBLER. One in five. That's how many people in our region are supported in some way by the Catholic Charities Appeal of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. With your gift, the Catholic Charities Appeal provides hope for women and children through pregnancy programs and family support centers. The fact is, nearly one million times per year, our programs provide assistance to people in need. But we can't do this vital work without you. Your gift matters. Go to catholiccharitiesappeal.org to donate today. Spring is the time to bring a breath of fresh air into your home with a bouquet of irresistible deals on home renovations at Colonial Marble and Granite. Right now, get $500 off the cost of cabinetry accessories when you put in an all-in kitchen for as little as $6,999. So get renovating and watch your beautiful home blossom. Sale ends April 22nd. Restrictions apply. See colonialmarble.net for details. Hey, it's Rich Zioli, and if you want to make lifetime memories with your family and friends, you should book a getaway at my happy place, the beautiful oceanfront Grand Hotel of Cape May, New Jersey. Right now, book a June midweek stay and save. Stay three nights, you're going to get $60 a night in resort credit. Five nights, $70 a night in resort credit. Stay seven nights, you're going to get $80 a night in resort credits, and you can use those resort credits to eat and drink at Hemingway's Restaurant, the outdoor pool bar, beach concession stand, or in the gift shop. Get passes to take your family on a whale watching boat cruise book direct with them for the best rates the grand is also the perfect place to host a wedding corporate events baby and bridal showers and more with four ballrooms they have the perfect space to make your event perfect just call them ask for my friend caitlin and she will help you have your dream event to book your stay today at the oceanfront grand hotel of cape may call 800-257-8550 or visit them at grandhotelcapemay.com Win a 2024 BMW 740i X-Drive sedan during the Race to the Finish promotion at Borgata Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Now through April 27th, earn entries on slots and table games for your chance at being one of 1,575 lucky winners. Plus, two players will win a 2024 BMW. Drawings every Saturday with grand prize drawings on March 30th and April 27th. $1,575,000 Race to the Finish, only at Borgata. Must be 21 or over. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Aioli. We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Hey! <laughs> Hello! Hello, Pennsylvania. This is Kathy Barnett. I get the wonderful opportunity of subbing in for the Don Stensland Show. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming on. If you are a Democrat especially, I want you to call in 855-839-1210. I'll take it easy on you, I promise. Uh, I will leave you intact, which is better than what most of you have done to me. <laughs> so I will not be dragging you. So, But please, call in. I know you're listening because you're all over my Twitter file right about now. <laughs> Calling me all kind of names. So I know you're listening. So uh, have some courage. It'll be good. It'll be fine. 855-839-1210. We do have John on the line. John, are you a Democrat? Oh, I'm so far. No, I I, I was an independent. <laughs> and, I love independence. I, I love independence. <laughs> I, thank you. And I am a Republican now. Okay. And I've only caught a little bit. I'm driving and I caught a little bit of what you say. And I do believe uh, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party are anti-Semitic 21st century slave owners. Because they <laughs> promise people things and then they forget about them. Yeah. And 
when they let that, the best word I can think of, that barbarian say death to America, death to Israel, I'm all for what he says, and I believe he should say it in a Middle East country, everywhere but Israel. (laughs) Yes, right, and we certainly shouldn't be subsidizing and bringing more of them here. John, thank you so much for listening, and thank you so much for calling. Anthony, I saw you bobbing your head. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think something I always try to emphasize is we are all the useful idiots. And I mean, you were even alluding to it um, earlier saying all these families, like every family wants the same thing, whether you're in the African American community, you know, the white Italian, it doesn't matter what community you're in. We all want the same things and they all use us every four years to be their useful idiots to vote for them or not even vote for vote at all. If you're not engaged and just, they want to find a way to keep, control and keep power and you know yeah. like uh, our old mayor especially was the perfect example of oh, this yeah. mayor kenny he'll sit there and brag about how he's going to help every poor and, and underprivileged neighborhood you know they win and they live as like kings in the castle go in their freaking bulletproof suvs with security details and you know but they'll promote septa and act like it's safe yeah. like it, it's a joke it is a joke but let me tell you one group, I know y'all call them African, American, black, black people, <laughs> black people. Let me tell you who's waking up, black people. They are waking up. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Well, that's why the Republicans need to get up oh, and, and appeal. Republicans they need are, to they need to appeal to people. That's, that's you know, the problem. Republicans and specifically Republican leadership uh, here in Pennsylvania. I mean, these are some of the most feckless, useless people. <laughs> It's like it's like the only thing they're good for is to lose, is to mess up a good idea. <laughs> you bring a good idea, they're like, no, 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 ma'am. Mm-mm, well, no. I said to, I said to you in the break, they're like that guy that gets fired at work to prove a point. Like oh, that's that's the epitome of the yeah, party right yeah. now. Yeah, now we have now. Let me just say, I mean, I spend so much time working with all people, right? I mean, I work with all of them. I don't care who you are, uh, but let me tell you, we have some of the best people. Uh, voters uh, in our party, grassroots. These are good people who love their country, love their family. I would walk into a room. I would literally be the only black person in the room. And let me tell you, I felt loved. I felt appreciated. I felt like I was I was their sister in the fight is how I felt. I love them. You mentioned a county to me. I literally see faces. I mean, the, I mean, I sat down. I mean, it was like one on one having dinner at their home. These are amazing people and they deserve the best. And then you have our leadership and we have some some diamonds in the rough. I talked to Congressman uh, Scott Perry yesterday, an amazing man. We have some we have some very few really good um, county chairs and they have they built really great teams. But let me tell you, there's a reason why in Pennsylvania we have lost almost everything. (laughs) And we just concede the ground more and more and more. It is not by osmosis. It is a hot mess. But let me pivot a little bit because I want to talk about the black folks. I woke up this morning to an article from the Wall Street Journal entitled Trump, RFK Jr. and the Disillusioned Black Voters. I'm going to just skim through this real quick with you here. It says, uh, the the author of this uh, article, it says, it's understood that Mr. Kennedy isn't going to become the next president, but he remains the most likely third party candidate to influence the outcome of the race. Right now, he's polling at roughly just under 10 percent. Historically, third party candidacies begin to fade out right now as we move as we approach the election day. But Mr. Kennedy, they say. His familiar name could make him an exception. They talk about the very thin margin between what Donald Trump beat Hillary by 80,000, what they say Biden beat Trump by. Y'all know that's out for consideration. We should have like a lot of uh, like a lot of, of those little asterisks when we say Biden beat Donald Trump. But nonetheless, on the record, 44,000 vote was, was a very narrow margin and they fear that Mr. Kennedy's support drop, even if it drops to half of what it is today, right now it's roughly 10%. Even if it drops to half of its current um, level, they say uh, Biden is in danger. Let me just go on. They say the most Democratic group is for the white, for, for the um, Democrat Party, their most loyal group are white college educated women. The most for a Republican, they say, is men without college degrees. 
However, for the first time, significant percentages of black and Latino working class men are moving away from the Democratic Party. We saw it start in 2020. They say that they are continuing to see the drift of some of the most loyal voting bloc for the Democrat Party, black people, Hispanics. I, my neighbor is Jewish, uh, a staunch Democrat, but the other day she told me I am not voting Democrat because of the whole Israel thing. The hell with that. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, every they, they're seeing a continuous drift, and I... I'm telling you, it is true. Black men in particular, black women, I mean, maybe we'll get them later on down the road, but black men, they are waking up to the reality of this and they are saying no more on their watch. This continues on. It is so, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think Democrats should have to work for people's votes. I think Republicans need to work for their base vote. I do. I'm Public not servants. Slave. I'm not a slave. Exactly. Come and woo me. Come and woo me. I see y'all on the other side. If you put the words retirement savings crisis into Google, you'll get about 81 million references to explore. Jim Cipriati at Retire Ready Financial Group doesn't need Google to know you're worried about retirement. Between inflation, rising taxes, crazy markets, and the uncertainty about Social Security, he understands. That's why he offers a complimentary retirement second opinion. It's a no-obligation meeting for you to talk about your concerns about retirement. You want to know if you're going to be okay? Let's find out. Don't trade the stress of work for a new kind of stress in retirement. Call Jim Cipriati today. 610-894-7415. That's 610-894-7415 to schedule your complimentary retirement second opinion or go online, retirereadyfg.com. Investment advisory services offered through Retire Ready Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through James V. Cipriati, Retire Ready Financial Group, LLC, NPN number 2083768. Hey, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about Chapman Windows Doors and Siding, how much I love my new patio doors. You know by now, if I needed windows, doors, or siding, I'd only trust the Chapman team. If you're thinking of updating your current siding or removing your current stucco and replacing it with siding, think Chapman. With the new updated siding choices available, the curb appeal of your home will pop. If you currently have stucco, updating it with James Hardy plank or vinyl siding will truly add value to your home. Home. If you're looking to sell, you can bet buyers will value updated new siding. And right now would be a good time to get ahead of the ball and plan your siding project for 2024. The certified Chapman installers are the folks you want on the job. If you or someone you know are looking for windows, doors, siding, stucco remediation, shutters, or hardware, give them a call or text them 610-431-8898, chapmanwindowsdoors.com. Chapman, the name I trust. Tell them Dawn sent you. Dawn Stensland here for a greener, healthier lawn. Call my lawn care company today, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs, reducing the need for chemicals and creating a safer lawn for your family and pets. Time's running out on Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. 800 free seed, naturallawn.com. Greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. At Cherry Ovava, we have absolutely incredible offers, incredible offers, and a plethora of both new and certified Volvos from which to choose. We are eager to offer amazingly competitive prices because we need the room for all of our construction vehicles. When leasing or purchasing a new or certified Cherry Volvo, you become part of our team. Join Cherry Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. I am Judith Krepnick, president of Cherry Volvo. Free speech lives here. With Don Giordano, weekdays noon till 3. Talk Radio 1210. WPHD. I am forgiven. Hello, we are back. I have Batia Unger Sargon. Uh, Batia, you're there. I am here, Kathy. I'm so glad to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. You're one of my absolute 
favorite. No, you are. And I saw your book come out and I, I texted you. I was like, you got to come on. We got to talk about it. Uh, for the rest of you who don't know Batya, she is the deputy opinion editor at Newsweek and the author of her latest book, Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. Right before you came on, Bhatia, I don't know if you were listening, when I was talking about this latest article put out by the Washington um, Journal, I'm, I'm sorry, Washington Journal, Wall Street Journal, Trump, RFK Jr., and the disillusioned black voter. And they talk about the working class. The working class is breaking away from the Democrat Party. They're sounding the alarm. I don't know if you saw out on Twitter this morning. I also woke uh, woke up to, um, to um, I can't pronounce her last name right now. What is it? Uh, oh. Uh, Nicole uh, Shanahan, who is um, uh, RFK Jr.'s running mate, she is being asked by prominent members of the Democrat Party to drop out because, again, they believe that she is going to shift votes, the women vote as well as the working class people vote. And then your book comes out talking about these exact people. Talk to us about your book a little bit and what it is you found. Absolutely. Um, you failed to mention my real claim to fame, which is number one supporter of Kathy Barnett for president. <laughs> so you could just put that down somewhere as well. You know, can I tell you something? I was listening to you a few minutes ago, and you're talking about black voters defecting for Trump. And when I was reporting my book, Second Class, I flew around the country interviewing working class Americans of all races and religions and creeds and po political persuasions um, to get a sense of who is the American working class and do they still have a fair shot at the American dream. Right. And the most important thing I found is that so much more unites us as Americans than yes. divides us. There's very little daylight between working class Democrats and working class Republicans in terms of the policies they want. But I did find something that I thought must have been a mistake, because at the time that I was reporting the book, I don't know, 20, uh, two years ago, let's say a year ago, so it took me a year to write it. Um, I was I didn't meet a single black man who was planning to vote for Joe Biden. And I thought to myself, I must be doing something wrong here because. Obviously, there's I'm, I'm missing something. You know, I mean, I know no, that 18 percent voted for Biden. Exactly. It turns out now I'm looking at the polling and I'm like, that's what I was seeing. And I thought that there was something wrong with my like selection bias or something. But it's totally true. It is Work more unites working class people based on their class and their need for a strong economy like the yeah. one Donald Trump built than any kind of divisions over race or even ideology. I mean, absolutely. And I've been saying this when I was the National Grassroots Director for the Vivek Ramaswamy campaign. I mean, but I saw it actually when I ran for U.S. Senate here in Pennsylvania in 2022. Uh, you know, I, I knew, I mean, when I was traveling, if I had like 30 minutes of open time, I depending upon where I was, I would have my team to bring in as many black men as they possibly could. And I saw it. I saw it. They want better. They are at the bottom. You pick a poll. Black men are at the bottom of every single poll that measures something positive, and they are over it. They have had it. They don't want it anymore. They want something different. And I saw this pivot in 2020 a little bit, but certainly in 2022 and on. Now, define for us, what is the working class? It's a great question, and the whole first chapter is about how to define the working class. Um, it's very hard to define because there's lots of different ways you could define it, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a dividing line, right? Whether you have a college credential or not, I don't even want to say education because God knows they're not really teaching very much at universities <laughs> anymore, it's but it's become like this gatekeeper, right? Like mm -hmm. you're not learning anything, but you still have to have that piece of paper in order to achieve the American dream. So the way that I defined working class is anybody who works in an industry or a job that does not require a skill that they learned in a college and is not part of the top 20 percent has been locked out of the top 20 percent so i'm not talking about like you know very rich contractors right i wanted to make sure to you know that we were talking about the people who are really who work really 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 hard and yet still are you know struggling to achieve the most basic humble version of the american dream and i think something else about black men is you know the democratic party and the college credentialed elites they really believe in like paternalism. They believe in the power of the government mm -hmm. to like make things better for people. Working class people do not believe in that. They believe in autonomy. They want 
like the fruit of their labor. They want their hard work to pay in a dignified manner. They get dignity from working. And it's so funny because the Democratic Party basically wants to pay people off not to work, to be poor, because they like that dependency. Working class people don't want that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You know, I was talking to uh, yesterday I had Dr. Ben Carlson on and, you know, he grew up in dire poverty as well. And we were just kind of exchanging some war wounds <laughs> of growing up and trying to navigate all of those obstacles of when you're, you know, literally, it feels like anyway, literally, but figuratively coming from underneath a rock to build a life for yourself. And I always would say to these white Democrats when I was running for office is that I don't need you. The only thing I need from you is to get out of my way. Don't stop trying to help me. And I was saying to Dr. Ben Carson yesterday is that I honestly believe that if if I was back on that pig farm growing up in the manner in which I was, I think it would be harder today for me to build a life for myself than it was 20, 30 plus years ago. A hundred percent. I mean, it's definitely. I will say, though, Kathy, like as your number one fan, um, you are exceptional. And I think that there are still avenues for exceptional people Mm -hmm. to sort of come from poverty and make it make it, you know, in, in, in significant ways. The problem is, is that our society relies on average people, right? Like we all rely on the average person to do an average job just good enough. Like that is the backbone of our society, right? right? Not everybody is going to be exceptional just by definition. And so while I do think there is still opportunity, although not enough, I mean, God knows if you're like a black kid growing up in a, in a Democrat, you know, inner city with a bunch of competing gangs, you don't really have, you know, equal opportunity. But for a lot of people, You know, if you're some brilliant person with 180 IQ or a very talented, you know, person in in music or in sports or, you know, have some sort of exceptional talent, a lot of people like that, they can really take advantage of, you know, upward mobility. It's everybody else who does jobs that we totally rely on to survive, people who clean the diapers of the elderly, people who drive trucks, right, people who um, are are, are working as janitors. People who are working in hospitality, right? Like, why do they not get, like, the American dream? Why can't they become home? It's for them who work so hard that everything has become totally unaffordable and life has become almost unbearable. Yeah, listen, guys, we have a couple of minutes with Batya. If you want to jump in, especially if you're a Democrat and especially if you disagree with what she's saying, I would love to hear your 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 voice on this. Give us a call at 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210. Batya, let me ask you, I mean, because we, we toss the term American dream out so often. Uh, you know, I would assume that w- in your travel, the American dream meant something different to different people, were you able to come up with a consensus of what the American dream is for the average person? Honestly, most people I interviewed, I interviewed about 100 people, they defined it in a very similar way. Mm. Um, People would define the American dream as owning your own home, um, being able to cover your bills without worrying, and being able to retire in dignity, and then, you know, adequate health care, and your children have the same number of opportunities that you did. But I'll tell you something even more surprising, Kathy, which you probably know from being such a good politician. Um, It's not just that people agreed on the American dream. It's that um, working class Americans, whether they're white or black or Jewish or Hispanic, whether they vote for Democrats or Republicans, they have a very similar set of policy proposals that they would like to see oh implemented. My goodness. So you you, you oh. are literally reading my mind. I was getting ready to ask <laughs> you, what do they want from their government? I'll tell you what they want because there's so much consensus. I was shocked. Like if you, hmm. if you would take people from my book and just look at what they want from government, you okay. wouldn't be able to tell if they were Democrat or Republican. Okay. It was really, really astonishing. So here's kind of like what they wanted something close to a total moratorium on immigration for the foreseeable future. Really? But also, yeah, like they really feel that both their jobs and better jobs and and opportunities are being given to 
migrants, both illegal and legal, and why shouldn't they be getting that? So let me and just that pause. Was whether they were Democrat or Republican. So let me pause right there because when we had that horrific bridge collapse a couple of um, weeks ago now in New York City, one one of the main talking points was the people who were on the bridge who were doing the the labor were all illegal. And they would say, we need more immigration because it, immigrants will do, or, you know, like specifically illegal immigrants will do what the working class poor in America will not do. So you're not buying that? They're not buying that? I don't buy that at all. I mean, there's no such thing as a job that is inherently undignified, right? I mean, that's there's there's godliness mm-hmm. in work. That's what Americans believe. They believe that work itself is spiritual and inheritance they got from their parents. What makes a job undignified is if it doesn't pay a living wage, if the conditions are unsafe, mm. you know, if you cannot buy the hallmarks of a, the most basic secure life after having worked for 12 hours a day, right? I mean, the work itself is not, no job is inherently undignified. It is only the conditions. And why are we allowing employers and corporations to get away with making conditions for work that would make Americans not be able to do them and have a secure lifestyle. That's, I love that's kind it. kind of what I would say. I yeah. love it. Now, continue on, though, with your list of what, what, what they would want from their government. A moratorium on um, illegal immigration. Yes. Um, also, something like... Um, uh, you, uh, government-backed catastrophic health care. They didn't like welfare. They don't want to see more welfare. They know a lot of welfare scammers, and they don't like that, but they didn't see health care as welfare. They didn't understand why people who work with their bodies, who, who work so hard, can't get adequate health care, and politicians have amazing health care. Like, that really bothered them. Mm-hmm. So that combination of things, right, like, I, I Whichever party gets to that combination first is going to have a permanent majority. The problem is one party talks about health care and one party talks about immigration. And, you know, the party that talks about health care actively is opening the border. Right. So so that this is, by the way, why working class people are not polarized. It's such a crapshoot, which neither party is really representing them. I mean, I think Trump did a really good job. But in terms of the parties themselves. Like, they would never hold it against, you know, let's say they choose to vote on immigration, the immigration piece. They would never hold it against another working class person who chose to vote on the health care piece. Um, you know, they, they were extremely, extremely moderate. So, Kathy, for example, on abortion, mm-hmm. okay, the vast majority of women I interviewed said, I would never get an abortion. It's against my beliefs. But they were also against an abortion ban because they didn't feel they had the right to judge somebody who had to make a different decision than they did. That That is who the American working class is. They are very conservative and very tolerant. So they were, mm-hmm. you know, much more pro-gay than I was expecting, but they were very, very upset about the trans issue, yeah. especially trans people in schools, in bathrooms, in sports just like an extreme moderation on all issues that you really don't hear from politicians. They hated the political squabbling. They hated all of that. They hated the polarization in the elites because they themselves are not polarized. Right. I love it. Thank you so much, Badia, for (laughs) stopping by. I just appreciate you, your spirit, what you're doing over there at Newsweek. I just, I, I truly appreciate you, my friend. Thank you so much. God bless you, Kathy. God bless you. (laughs) we'll see y'all on the other side prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply see website for details and important safety information subscription required price varies based on product and subscription plan hey guys did you know there's a generic form of viagra that works just the same but is 95 percent cheaper and you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, 
and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. This is Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. It's Temple Owls coach Adam Fisher. Join me and the rest of the Big Five coaches as we honor Fran and Reed Dunphy and Phil and Judy Martelli at the American Cancer Society's 20th Anniversary Coaches vs. Cancer Basketball Gala, Saturday, April 13th at the Bellevue. Join the who's who of the Philly basketball community to celebrate. It's the 20th Anniversary of Coaches vs. Cancer Basketball Gala presented by Independence Blue Cross, Saturday, April 13th. Go to phillycvc.org. That's phillycvc.org. I'm Bill, and I'm living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that causes scarring of the lungs and makes it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose. So if you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. My wife, Bev, and I have walked every step of this journey together I couldn't have traveled this road alone, and neither should you. Get help. Find hope. Go to lungsandyou.com. This is a test of the emergency alert system. This has been a test of the emergency alert system. So many financial firms claim to be fiduciaries, but do any of them provide legally binding documentation to put your best interests first? Crash Proof Retirement is the only firm in the nation that records all financial meetings, making your meeting legally binding. Lou Marinucci and I started with Crash Proof Retirement in 2011. When the market goes down and then Wall Street still makes money, they're looking out for themselves more than they're looking out for you as the client. It's not a fiduciary responsibility. I don't have that problem here with Crash Proof Retirement. Crash Proof Retirement can assure their customers that they will come out on the positive side because by recording their meetings, it makes them legally bound to do exactly what they say. And that's what a fiduciary is supposed to do. Guarantee a fiduciary responsibility for your retirement future at our next event at Springfield Country Club, April 16th, 800-722-9728 or crashproofretirement.com. It's a Joe Conklin Comedy Show fundraiser at the Church of the Incarnation in Mantua, New Jersey. We're raising money to send altar server Christina McNasby to the shrine at Lourdes in France. 24 years old, she's been going through a lot. Her faith is steadfast. She's an unbelievable parishioner. Christina is in pain quite often. All she has to say is she's offering up that pain to the Lord. Him get her to Lourdes, and we're going to do that with your help. The Benefit Comedy Show for Christina McNasby, Saturday, April 20th. Get tickets at JoeConklin.com. JoeConklin.com! Homeowners, improve your family's comfort with a Bradford White water heater and enjoy all the hot water your household needs. All day, every day. With Bradford White, you get more than just a water heater. You get our commitment to quality and reliability that you can trust. How you heat your water matters, so don't compromise when it comes to your home or your hot water. Bradford White water heaters are built to be the best because your home deserves it. Visit BradfordWhite.com to learn more and find an installation pro near you. Hey, it's Greg with Kalen Company. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel in partnership with Valley Forge Casino is making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tournament, MLB, NBA, the NHL, and so much more. Looking ahead to Saturday, NC State at Purdue. I like Purdue minus nine and a half and Alabama at UConn. I like Alabama plus 11 and a half. You can bet on the Phillies, the Sixers, whatever you want. It's all right there on FanDuel Sports. But go to FanDuel.com slash Greg. FanDuel.com slash Greg and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel Sportsbook, the official partner of 1210 WPHT. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. 21 and over. President PA, first online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Do you have shoeboxes full of photos? Today only, radio listeners get VIP access to the new Photo Legacy Box. 
Get your family's photos professionally scanned for as low as seven cents, which is 76% less than what other brands charge. As the world's largest digitizer, you know you can trust Legacy Box to digitize your entire collection of 4x6 photos. Everything from the embarrassing haircut you had in the 90s to photos of your great grandma's wedding. Visit LegacyVox.com slash value to get 200 photos scanned starting at just $19.95. Oh, and don't forget, Legacy Box also digitizes over 15 other types of analog media. So you can get your favorite memories on VHS or grandpa's film reels from the 40s digitized too. Take advantage of this exclusive offer on the new Photo Legacy Box today and preserve your past for as low as 7 cents. Go to LegacyVox.com slash value. That's LegacyVox.com slash value. Join the Delaware County link to Aging and Disability Resources for a wills and end-of-life planning information session featuring guest elder law estate planning and real estate specialist Dana Breslin of Breslin Murphy & Roberts and other legal professionals to present and assist with the first steps of creating wills and estate planning and for Q&A sessions. The event will take place at Redwood Community Center on April 29th from 1.30 p.m. till 3 p.m. Call 610-499-1978 to register today. Talk Radio 1210, WPHD, WPHD, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Live and local from Philadelphia. The Don Stenzel Show on Talk Radio 1210, WPHD. Yeah, if you don't like me. That's your problem. Hey, hey. When I let it bother me, that's my problem. Hey, and I got enough problems. I got enough. <laughs> I think we all have enough problems, right? You look at the inflation. You look at what's going on uh, with your family, with security, the violence. If you look at the one of the uh, latest polls that just came out from uh, Gallup, one of the Gallup polls, I mean, we got enough problems. <laughs> we got enough problems. Uh, welcome back to the Dawn Stenzelin Show. I'm your host filling in for the great Dawn at uh, Kathy Barnett. And at, at the top right now, let me just go to Charles. Charles, you're on hold. You've been holding for a while. Thank you so much. How you doing, Kathy? Charlie Strange here. Gold star father, Michael Strange. <gasps> Charles, hello. How are you, sir? Good. Better now that I'm talking to you. Oh, wow. I remember you, your story, your fight for your son. Thank you so much for all that you and your family have done. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for your service to our country. And uh, like the lady said, I hope you run for president someday. We'd <laughs> love to have you up there. Need some more veterans in, in down there in D.C. And and what I love about you, Kathy, you're real. I was listening to you yesterday mentioning Kensington, and uh, I I'll tell you, you know, my last drink or drug was October fifteenth, nineteen eighty nine. I'm in the program, still in the program. I owned a halfway house in Kensington in Ontario, right at the Seven Eleven for nine years in the nineties. I have never, ever seen it like this. Yeah. It's misery. I'm telling you, that's why I have Andy Minio. I got enough problems. We all have enough problems, what we're facing right now. And we have these legislators who keep telling us our number one threat or right wing MAGA Republicans <laughs> or that my number one threat as a black woman is a white man. That's a lie. Though These are lies. These are not truths. We have a lot of other issues and it has nothing to do with the color of anyone's skin or any of that. Uh, it is literally the Democrat Party. But unfortunately, like I often say, that Democrats cannot do half of what they're doing if Republicans weren't complicit. So I use generic terms like Democrat and Republican just because that's how most of us have been trained to separate people. But make no mistake, I believe there is a uniparty of people, uh, a, a cabal of elites who sit high, look low, down at the rest of us. And it really has nothing to do with political affiliations. Amen to that. Amen to that, Kathy. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll make it real short. We got about 
680 gold stars and some veterans in a lawsuit against the contractors that were in Afghanistan for 20 years, American contractors using your money, his money, all our tax dollars, and they were giving money and guns to the Taliban. You yeah. still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. I oh, mean, it, I don't have that, the evidence not, to that, but you wouldn't have to wring my arm to make me believe it. Charles, keep up the fight. I hope we connect again real soon. I appreciate everything about you and your family and your fight. Thank you for sharing that information because I believe it is our job to hold our elected officials accountable. I want to pick back up on uh, that end of the conversation with Batia. She is just amazing. I love the work that she does over at Newsweek, um, you know, trying to bring some balance. I know a lot of reporters over there at Newsweek, and I can appreciate um, you know, let me just tell you something. I don't want to live in a society where there's only one type of thinking that is the dominant thinking. That is dangerous. I don't care if it's all Republicans in a room or all Democrats in a room. We have to have people who think different, look different, come from different backgrounds, different eco, eco, uh, economical and social backgrounds. Those things are important for us to have diversity of thought, diversity, not just diversity in skin color. That's where Democrats go wrong. I mean, they go wrong on a, on a whole host of issues, but specifically on getting all of us to focus on skin deep level of diversity. That's not the kind of diversity we need in our country today. What we need is diversity of thought. That is how we're going to pull our country off. So I love talk. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm the only one in my family who's not a Democrat. I mean, of course, my husband's not a Democrat. I would have never married him. <laughs> Never. <laughs> and I strongly advocate for young people who are about to get married. Don't marry someone who's opposed, especially in today's culture, because it's just I mean, you could be dealing with a communist. How did that work? Um, but in my family, I'm the my family, my husband, my children and I, we're the only ones who aren't Democrats. And I love my family. We have the best times. <laughs> I talk to them all the time. We disagree. I, I don't walk on eggshells. I walk in talking about whatever it is that we want to talk about and vice versa. They do the exact same. And then we, we battle it out and then we get up and we go eat, right? Because we're family and we're going to have some bruised feelings maybe, but then, you know, we dust each other off and we keep moving. We have to have conversation and so when i see people who want to immediately start attacking on the ad homonyms you this you're that you're phobic you're this you know what i shut it down i have zero tolerance for that for that level of conversation and foolishness yeah box you in put you into some little i refuse uh, it yeah, it's ridiculous I refuse it. <laughs> yeah let's not have a conversation let me hear one thing you say and I then put you it. in this little box and exactly is, right yeah. like people are trying to figure out oh you're black you must be a democrat no and in fact the wall street journal uh uh, uh reporter who wrote this is also seeing the exact same thing he said as i was coming out of that first break that there's a significant drift that drift is continuing in the direction away from the working class, whites and blacks, Hispanics as well, are shifting away from uh, the Democrat Party and are shifting, you know, whether they're going to shift to Donald Trump or to um, to uh, RFK Jr., who knows. But Democrats are alarmed. A morning consult survey this week showed that the share of the black vote with a favorable view of Mr. Kennedy has climbed from to 51% from 38%. Uh, they're also showing that the working class blacks and Hispanics who are abandoning Democrats don't otherwise resemble the typical MAGA voter. Instead, the rift has been opened by a deep disaffection with the state of the economy, it's about the economy, stupid, right? And right after the economy is violence, crime, illegal immigration. The same thing Batya has found traveling the, the nation, uh, talking to the working class people. But what, they're all, what I thought was interesting, they said that for college educated white voters, inflation is an annoyance. Oh, my gosh. You mean my Carmen Macchiato is going to cost me $10 instead of 8 
Yes, it's an annoyance to them. <laughs> but for the working class people, it's a much bigger issue. <laughs> we actually care about that chi-chi salsa that I was talking about the <laughs> other day. <laughs> that it went from $6 to $10. That matters. Well, this is this is the perfect example of if you actually believe these people that are leaders of your party or, you know, just in general, people in politics, like you're fooling yourself. Why, why do you believe they will take advantage of any community for their own benefit Absolutely. on every side of it? It doesn't matter. Right. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican. The unfortunate part about the Republican Party is that. I mean, oh, my goodness. I love the Republican. I mean, you know, listen, I, I, I don't know. I think love may be too strong of a word. But, you know, listen, we are, for the most part, a two party political system. And as such, you know, you have to pick one or the other. And I would never.